reborn into an abusive man's body. As I opened my eyes, I found my wife holding a knife, stabbing towards me. Without much thought, I quickly rolled off the ground and shouted, Stop! The woman nearby trembled violently and retreated to the sofa, shielding the little girl on it with her body. I stared blankly at the scene before me. The room was in chaos, with food and alcohol spilled across the yellowing table, and dozens of empty bottles scattered underneath. Another woman and a little girl looked at me with fear written all over their faces. Where am I? Wasn't I dead? Suddenly, a piercing pain shot through my head, reminding me of my brain cancer. What's going on? At that moment, a strange warmth rushed into my mind, easing the pain. I involuntarily closed my eyes, and unfamiliar memories flooded my mind. When I opened my eyes again, I couldn't help but smile bitterly. Yes, I, Lin Yuni, was reborn. The unfamiliar memories also included a scene of my death, where the system exchanged its own demise for my continued existence and engraved my acquired skills into my memory. Seeing the winged little girl standing in front of my grave, I couldn't help but feel a tug at my heartstrings, tears streaming down my face. After a while, I regained my composure and looked at the mother and daughter before me. The original owner of this body was also named Lin Yuni. After graduating from an art school, he was selected by an entertainment company due to his handsome looks, successfully debuting as an idol and gaining increasing popularity. However, he was later caught in a scandal with the then-popular actress Xia Meng, leading to their withdrawal from the entertainment industry. They had a sweet time together and gave birth to a lovely daughter named Lin Xiaoxi, nicknamed Cici. They got married as a matter of course, but their marriage gradually deteriorated. The man became abusive, blaming the woman for ruining his career, and vented his frustrations on this mother and daughter duo, even resorting to domestic violence. Beast, I couldn't help but curse under my breath, then took a few deep breaths to calm the anger in my chest. Xia Meng, once a promising young singer, garnered numerous fans with her beauty and talent and was on the path to stardom. Yet, she chose to leave the industry with him. If one were to talk about dragging each other down, it was the original who dragged her down. However, she never blamed this man. With a complicated expression, I looked at the terrified mother and daughter on the sofa. In my previous life, I didn't have the chance to fall in love because of cancer. Is this system fulfilling my regret? Did I come here this time to save this mother and daughter? When Xia Meng, holding the child, saw me staring at them, she couldn't help but tense up, her body trembling uncontrollably. She stared at the demon before her, gritting her teeth, holding back tears. She had considered leaving with Cece, but being an orphan with no resources, all her savings were squandered by this demon. She had thought of ending her life, but she couldn't bear to leave her child, so she endured each beating silently. This unexpected event of me fainting would surely lead to terrifying retaliation. After a long time, I sighed deeply. Since I'm here, I might as well accept it. Maybe I came here to save this mother and daughter. Then, I touched my nose, stood up slowly, feeling weak, and started cleaning up the empty bottles in the room. Xia Meng's eyes showed a hint of confusion. Was she dreaming? But she remained tense, unable to gauge the demon's intentions. After a while, she heard her daughter's hungry voice. Mommy, I'm hungry. Xia Meng, with tears in her eyes, replied softly, Cece, mommy will make you some food when the demon falls asleep. Don't worry, mommy won't cry. She had wanted to cry, but hearing her daughter's words made her tears flow even more. Eventually, with a trembling voice, she whispered, Be good, Cece. Let mommy put you to bed. Mommy will make delicious food for you tomorrow morning. After Cece nodded obediently, Xia Meng, with great difficulty, got up, her injuries throbbing faintly. She couldn't help but feel heartbroken as she looked at her daughter. After a while, she made up her mind. Tomorrow, she would leave this hellish home. Just then, a sound of the door opening came from the living room. Xia Meng's heart tightened, and she instinctively covered Cece's ears, listening quietly to the noise outside. As you entered the house, you subconsciously glanced behind the sofa and couldn't help but be surprised. Did they both go back to the bedroom? After pondering for a moment, you placed the food on the table and then knocked lightly on the bedroom door. Um, I bought food for you both. If you're hungry, come out and eat. I'll sleep in the guest room tonight. Hearing the familiar voice, Xia Meng widened her eyes. Did he go out to buy more alcohol? Hasn't he had enough? She and Cece would go hungry again tonight. Xia Meng felt a lump in her throat as she saw the food on the table. Could it be true, as he said? She looked at her daughter with hopeful eyes and summoned up the courage to approach the door quietly. She peeked through the crack in the door and saw several dishes on the table and two steaming bowls of rice. The aroma wafted into her nose, and she hesitated. Then, she closed her eyes helplessly, took a deep breath, and smiled weakly. Cece, let's go eat. But we have to be quiet, okay? Cece's eyes lit up, nodding eagerly. Two figures cautiously approached the dining table and began to eat. Watching his daughter wolf down her food with a smile, Xia Meng's eyes became moist again. How long had it been since she had seen this scene? Then, she thought of something and turned to look at the tightly closed door of the guest room, a hint of complexity flashing in her eyes. 
Of course, you in the room heard the sounds outside, you sighed deeply, the original owner of this body was truly infuriating, after sighing, you began to think, you had just realized, after returning from getting a haircut and buying groceries, that there was only a little over 1800 yuan left in the house, if you hadn't crossed over when you did, this family would probably have been in serious trouble, money had to be made, indeed, sitting quietly in a chair, you stared at the snow white ceiling, lost in thought, after a moment, you suddenly sat up straight, a gleam in your eyes. Why hadn't you thought of this sooner? This was a parallel world. You reached for your phone and began browsing. After a while, a smile appeared on your face. The entertainment level in this world was quite poor, and Blue Star's songs didn't even exist here. You quickly pondered how to use songs to make money. There were no song competitions or similar events to participate in. As you thought, you gradually couldn't hold on and slowly drifted into sleep. The next morning at 6 o'clock sharp, your internal clock woke you up on time. Gazing at the unfamiliar surroundings, it took you a moment to remember that you had crossed over. You got out of bed, opened the window, and looked out at the unfamiliar city. Taking a deep breath of the fresh morning air, you decided to let go of everything from your previous life and adapt to the present. Stretching lazily, you turned and quietly opened the bedroom door, stepping into the bathroom to freshen up. In fact, Xia Meng in the room was already awake. She vaguely heard the movement coming from the bathroom outside but dared not go out. She didn't know why this demon had suddenly woken up so early. It seemed abnormal since being knocked unconscious by her yesterday. The sounds of washing up from outside disappeared, and the door clicked shut again. Xia Meng pursed her lips, her eyes fixed on the bedroom door, feeling somewhat curious about where you had gone. After waiting for a while without any movement outside, Xia Meng, still feeling a bit apprehensive, quietly got out of bed. Opening the bedroom door, she walked out. The smell of alcohol in the room had become faint, and fresh air blew in through the window. This situation made Xia Meng feel unreal. It had been a long time since she had smelled such a fresh scent. Standing by the window, she looked out at the world outside, feeling somewhat dazed. It wasn't until this moment that she suddenly remembered she was only 24 years old. The sound of the door opening startled Xia Meng, and she instinctively tensed up, mechanically turning her body. You also stood awkwardly in place, not expecting Xia Meng to already be awake. After washing up, you realized there was no food in the house, so you went out to buy some groceries. You finally got a clear look at the appearance of your wife in front of you. She was very beautiful, even more so than the internet celebrities in the original world, especially those almond-shaped eyes, as if they could speak. However, now those almond-shaped eyes were filled with fear and unease, and she was too thin, with an overly pale face, probably due to lack of sunlight and malnutrition. Seeing this, you felt a mixture of pain, hatred, and embarrassment. It was truly beastly. Such a beautiful wife, yet she was treated so poorly. The original owner was truly despicable. Um. Good morning, I'll go cook first. You broke the awkward silence and quickly walked into the kitchen with the groceries. Xia Meng remained still, watching you go, feeling a bit shocked. He wasn't drinking anymore? And he even invited us to have breakfast together? What should she do? You originally had some expectations, but seeing the cautious demeanor of the two, your expectations sank. You sighed again, you two go ahead and eat. With that, you got up and walked into the guest room. Xia Meng didn't move, she watched the closed door of the side room then looked at her daughter's expectant eyes. She sighed inwardly. Cece, let's wash our hands and eat. You sat at the desk in the side room. You were actually quite hungry, but you knew that the two outside wouldn't be able to sit at the same table with you to eat just yet. You shook your head, trying to clear these thoughts from your mind. Then, you took out your phone and opened the Douyin platform in this world. You logged out of the original account, which still had thousands of followers, and registered a new one. Finally, you decided to name it Xiaoshi, after your daughter. This was a new beginning for them. You didn't have many ambitions for yourself. Having experienced much in your multiple lifetimes, now that you had returned to the age of 24, you were quite open-minded. You just wanted to settle this mother and daughter well, provide them with a comfortable life, and then go on your own way. Thinking of this, you finally smiled. Then, you took out some long-forgotten music manuscript paper from the closet. These were all left behind by Xia Meng. The original owner couldn't write songs, but his voice was very pleasant. You spread the manuscript paper on the desk and hummed a familiar tune. Your hand swiftly wrote on the staff paper. In just a short time, a complete score appeared before you. Satisfied, you picked up the score and spread out another piece of paper. The lyrics of this song also appeared on the paper. Success! You eagerly grabbed a guitar from the closet, tuned it, and then sat down at the desk with the guitar in your arms, letting your emotions brew for a moment. Then, you closed your eyes, and your fingers gently brushed the strings. The melodious sound of the guitar rang out in the quiet room, and Gu Xingyi's gentle voice followed. I woke up from crying because I dreamed you left. See if you can feel my love when the night wind blows across the windowsill. 
The song slowly drifted, Gu Xingyi immersed himself in it, this song was one of his favorites when he first went to school, and he really liked the concept of love within the lyrics. Unfortunately, he didn't meet such a love until he was 30 years old. As the sound of the guitar came out from inside the room, Xia Shiryao, who was silently eating her meal, suddenly froze, and she turned her head again to look at the tightly closed door of the room with surprise in her eyes. And he plays the guitar? How is that possible? That guitar was his own, Xia Shiryao knew it very well, he couldn't play the guitar, at least not before, and Xia Shiryao knew it very well. But what's going on now? Accompanied by the sound of the guitar, Gu Xingyi's song also came slowly, and Xia Shiryao froze even more, her eyes filled with disbelief. Even Nana, who was merrily eating her meal, was captivated by the song and stopped her spoon in her hand to look at the closed door of the side bedroom. Wide-eyed and fluttering, Nina cocked her head and looked there, and Nina knew that it was the voice of her father, who was cooking for her for the first time. So gentle, it was the first time she had ever heard such a gentle dad. When the day comes to grow old, will you still be there for me? See the lies of those vows drift away with the past. Even if Xia Shiryao hadn't heard this song before, she could still feel how awesome it was, such a beautiful melody, such moving lyrics. She had a hard time imagining it coming from the mouth of a demon. The sound of the guitar was still gentle, Gu Xingyi's singing voice was still floating in the ears, only that the big and small beauties sitting at the table had all froze. Until the next line of the song. How many people have adored your youthful looks, but know who is willing to bear the relentless change of the years? How many people have come and gone in your life, and know that I have been by your side all your life? Hearing this, Xia Shiryao couldn't stand it any longer, her shoulders began to gently tremble, and her tears were falling down one by one. Two years. Two whole years. She hadn't listened to music in two years and hadn't left the house in two years of daily fear. Every day, she is confronted with a house full of woes and a man who is slowly turning into a demon. What did he mean by singing this now that he had managed to muster up the courage to try to escape? What's the meaning of his sudden change? Xia Shiryao broke down a bit, she was once again confused, the fear of the road ahead, as well as the fear of the transformation of this person now, she was afraid that this was a Shakti dream. Once the dream is shattered, everything is going back to square one. The singing also stopped at this moment, little Nai Nai also noticed her mother's crying, she climbed onto Xia Shiryao's lap in some panic, and reached out her little hand to try to wipe her mother's tears. Mommy, don't cry, don't cry, Nai Nai hoo hoo for you. Little Nai Nai thought that her mother's body was hurting again, she helped Xia Shiryao wipe her tears while raising her little face to peel off Xia Shiryao's collar and blow on it, only to see that underneath the collar, Xia Shiryao's back was strewn with scars. Gu Xingyi naturally didn't know what was happening between the mother and daughter outside because of one of his songs, he was currently opening Douyin and clicking on record video. In the video he doesn't show his face, but just below his nose. He cradled his guitar and cleared his throat. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. This time, Gu Xingyi was obviously much more formal, and he played and sang the song in its entirety again until the end of the song, when Gu Xingyi saved the recording and cut out the idle time between the beginning and the end. In the end, Gu Xingyi pulled out the audio, set the lyrics to it, and submitted the copyright ownership online. Once everything was done, he then edited a headline. A lifetime with you, a song composed by me, an original song, dedicated to you all, I hope you can enjoy it and support it with more likes. Click, upload. Video uploaded successfully. Who? Gu Xingyi gently exhaled a mouthful of cloudy air, finally finished. Let's just wait for the crowd reaction next. This song is a king bomb in this day and age. Gu Xingyi didn't have the slightest doubt that the song could actually catch fire, he had confidence in the song. The existence of the song that won the song chart golden melody award back then, it would be hard for the heavens not to catch fire. The original singer, Mizuki Ninja, had won the best newcomer award for the song in the first place, and now as a newcomer himself, not to mention the best newcomer award, emerging as a newcomer should still be able to do it. He put the guitar back in the closet, then rubbed his hungry, deflated stomach and scratched his hair. I wonder if the twins are done eating? Alas, so hungry. What a sin. Kushingi, who was rubbing his stomach, finally couldn't wait any longer. People are iron and rice is steel, a meal is not hungry. He gently pushed open the door of the room, revealing a crack, and looked out as if he were a thief, just in time to see Xia Shiryao leaving the dining table with little Nai Nai in her arms. Her eyes were red as if she had just cried. She obviously saw herself as well, and after freezing in place for a moment, she quickly returned to the master bedroom with the baby in her arms. Gu Xingyi sighed in relief and pushed open the door to the room and walked to the dining table. Finally, we can eat. Gu Xingyi looked at some of the meals that had obviously been left for him on the table and was a little happy, then he picked up the millet porridge and swirled it in one big gulp. Perfect. Not bad for your own handiwork. It feels great when you're full. Clearing all the meals on the table, Gu Xingyi patted his bulging stomach and burped in satisfaction. After packing up the dishes, Gu Xingyi, who had nothing to do, turned around the room and looked at the layout of the home. It was a two-room house, only 70 square meters, which the two of them had paid for together when they were married before, 
and the house was furnished then. In the past two years, no new things have been added to the house, and these things are already looking a little worn out. The house was already small and quiet, with only Gu Xingyi's footsteps ringing out from time to time, so it seemed a bit depressing. Gu Xingyi shook his head and went back to the sofa and sat down on his butt. It's hard to imagine how Xia Shuya with a child lived in this atmosphere for two years without going out much. This feeling, it's like being in jail. Even Gu Xingyi, who had just crossed over, could not stand it a bit. It's mostly the atmosphere. Where's the little bit of home here? Gu Xingyi also knew that he couldn't change anything for a while, so he can only nestle on the small sofa and fiddle with his cell phone. He was inquiring about how to keep a home, how to make a child happy, how to be a good father. There were all kinds of answers on the internet, and Gu Xingyi was scratching his head, but Gu Xingyi insisted on reading it, after all, it was his first time to be a father, and he was very afraid that he would not be able to do it right. At this time, the door to the master bedroom was suddenly opened again, and Gu Xingyi followed the sound and saw a small head peeking out from there, the two crochets on its head swaying. It was little Nina, who cocked her head and stared at her with the same almond eyes as her mother, and was looking at herself curiously. The ignorance and clarity in these bright eyes made Gu Xingyi's heart melt away. It's just that little Nana's little face is too skinny, just like her mom's, and it would definitely look better if it was a little more rounded. It is also, before this mother and daughter can only eat leftovers a day, and mixed with wine dishes little one cannot eat, the original master and do not give this mother and daughter money, they can only starve a full meal. When Gu Xingyi saw little Nai Nai, his face subconsciously wanted to show a smile, but before the corners of his mouth could be pulled away, he saw little Nai Nai was so frightened that he hurriedly closed the door again and scurried back. Xia Shuriao's crisp voice also resounded within the room as she coaxed her child. The smile froze on his face, and Gu Xingyi innocently touched his nose. Looks like you have a lot of worrying to do in the future. Time quietly passed, the swipe of the phone is four hours past, during this period from time to time can hear Xia Shuriao coaxing the child's voice. Until noon, Gu Xingyi's head had been bristling with faintness and swelling, filled with a jumble of parenting knowledge. He put the phone down, rubbed his temples, and stood up. Time to make lunch. Just at this moment, the bedroom door was opened, and the expressionless Xia Shuriya walked out of the bedroom holding a pile of clothes, as if she didn't see Gu Xingyi standing in front of the sofa, she walked straight to the bathroom. Gu Xingyi clearly saw her body stiffen as she came out. Is this her going to do the laundry? Gu Xingyi suddenly remembered that the clothes he changed out of yesterday were still in the washing machine and hadn't been taken out. Thinking of this, Gu Xingyi also quickly walked towards the bathroom. Xia Shuriya was nervous in her heart. She didn't expect Gu Xingyi to still be at home, usually at this time, he would have gone out to drink with his fox friends. She heard Gu Xingyi's footsteps approaching her, and suddenly her heart became even more nervous, and her heartbeat began to accelerate, her body trembling slightly. So, that, my clothes are still in the washing machine, can I take them out to dry first? Gu Xingyi's familiar voice sounded from behind, Xia Shuriao, who was bending over to open the door of the washing machine, was startled, and her body even stumbled a bit, shrinking towards the inside of the bathroom. Be careful. Gu Xingyi couldn't stop himself from saying another sentence. Xia Shuriao then reacted, he was asking for his opinion? Her eyes dodged, not daring to look at him, but she said, okay, you, you take it first. Ah, uh, thanks. Gu Xingyi clenched his fists, his hands were also a little trembling, and it was even harder to hide the anger and heartache in his eyes. He had just clearly seen, underneath Xia Shuriao's neck, the trail of blood that glowed purple and red. Although he had the memories of this beast, when he actually witnessed it with his own eyes, it was really hard for him to imagine why there would be such beastly people in this world. It made him, who had never bullied a female, feel an overwhelming sense of anger and sadness in his heart. Gu Xingyi gathered the clothes in the washing machine, he didn't continue to look at her, at the moment his mind was racing with thoughts. I'll make lunch later, remember to call Nana out for dinner. Ha, huh? ah, uh, little. Nana-chan's asleep, wait. I'll wake her up later. Xia Shuriya shrank inward a bit more, her entire body looking unusually flustered, even her speech was a bit incoherent. Gu Xingyi knew that he would only stress her out here, he helplessly rubbed his nose, picked up the clothes in the washing machine and quickly went to the balcony to hang them up then walked into the kitchen. Xia Shuriya, who was holding her clothes inside the bathroom, was still frozen in place, and she didn't come back to her senses until the sound of smoke and fire rose from the kitchen. She shakily put the clothes in the washing machine, but her gaze drifted unconsciously toward the kitchen. What's wrong with him? Started cooking for himself and the kids again? Xia Shuriao subconsciously touched her nose, then suddenly froze again. When did he get this habit? Xia Shuriao stayed in front of the washing machine like this, listening to the sound of the drum turning, her heart unusually complicated. Until the clothes were all washed and she took them out and walked out onto the balcony to start drying them up, the man had been hot and busy in the kitchen. Little Nai Nai didn't wait for Xia Shuriao to call her. She woke up on her own, still pushing the door open with her little bare feet both little hands still rubbing her big sleepy eyes. 
The next moment, when she saw the busy Gu Xingyi in the kitchen, there was an obvious light in her big, beautiful eyes, and then she curiously plopped down by the kitchen doorframe and looked at Gu Xingyi's back. Xia Shuriao saw this scene when she turned back after drying her clothes. Tiny Nai Nai was full of anticipation as Gu Xingyi was busy in the kitchen. Xia Shuriao's spirit collapsed a bit at once, she turned around quickly and leaned her back against the wall, covering her face with both hands, slowly squatting her body, tears falling silently. It was a scene she had only dreamed of long, long ago. Gu Xingyi still didn't eat at the same table as the two of their mothers, and after he served the meal on the table, he hurriedly walked out of the house. Hearing the sound of the room door slamming, Xia Shuriao haphazardly wiped the tear tracks on her face dry, bit her lip, and stood up to hug little Nai Nai to the dining table. There were still two meat and two veggies on the table, as well as two bowls of rice and a bowl of steamed eggs that had already been served. Xia Shuriao looked at the colorful and fragrant meals on the table for a long time before slowly sitting down. No one knew what mixed feelings she was feeling right now, even she didn't know what she was thinking. The food is still as good as it was for breakfast. The little one has long since had a beautiful egg custard. But this peaceful lunch for the two mothers was soon broken by the sound of the door opening. They subconsciously raised their heads and saw Gu Xingyi carrying a large bag of things, pushing open the door and walking in. Little Nai Nai's body moved closer to Xia Shuriao, the little spoon she was digging into the steamed egg in her hand still in her mouth, stilled, her pair of big eyes following Gu Xingyi's movements. Gu Xingyi's eyelids were lowered and he didn't dare to look at the frightened mother and daughter, he just walked to the sofa and put the bag in his hand down, then opened his mouth, his voice a bit muffled. I got you some ointment, remember to use it, and I got a toy for the baby, I don't know if she likes it or not, I see that the other little girls have it, she should have it too. Xia Shuriao didn't respond, Gu Xingyi was silent for a moment after he finished speaking, he intertwined his two hands and secretly pinched his tiger's mouth. I know you won't believe me, but there's something I still have to say, I won't drink anymore and I won't hit you guys anymore, you and Nana are usually at home, you don't have to be so scared, the kid is still young and this atmosphere at home is not good for her. Gu Xingyi finished in one breath, only to feel the depression in his heart relieved. He also didn't wait for Xia Shuriao to respond and silently walked back into the side bedroom. Xia Shuriao watched his figure disappear, and seeing the door of that room being tightly closed, she was even more at a loss as to what to say. In just one day, she had never been able to let go of her defenses in the face of this man's sudden transformation. Gu Xingyi in the bedroom was in an even worse mood at this time, his eyes were red and he had obviously cried when he was outside. If he could, he'd rather he hadn't traveled over here and didn't know what was going on. But now it's already like this, crossing this kind of thing he can't make the decision, for himself to cross into the scum he also very hard, even have the idea of wanting to self-harm. Especially when he saw the bruises on Xia Shuriao's body, Gu Xingyi's suppressed heart became even heavier. Who says a man can't shed tears, just before he gets to the sad place. After just one short day in this home, his heart was crushed to the point of near collapse, and it was hard for him to understand how anyone could harbor so much malice towards his loved ones. Xia Shuriao ate her meal and still left some for Gu Xingyi. She scrubbed her and Nikina's dishes and looked at the bags on the table for a moment to think but eventually led Nikina towards the master bedroom. It was hard for her to accept this sudden goodness. Who knew if it could be a trap he had set to paralyze himself, and she was long used to the pain in her body. I just don't know, what else does he have here that he's gone to great lengths to get? She was afraid that after accepting his favors, he would reveal his original horrible face. After a brief day of tenderness, she was incredibly afraid of the previous day coming again, even as she had so much as a hint of anticipation in her heart. Could it be that as long as he doesn't accept his goodness, he will remain as he is today? I just hope he stays like this today for one more day, one more day. Gu Xingyi heard the sound of the door closing in the bedroom next to him, and he knew that it was the pair of mothers who had finished their meal, so he got up and walked out of the room. Then he saw that the bag on the coffee table remained unopened and silent in its place. Gu Xingyi pursed his lips and let out a sigh, not knowing what to do, he could only sit down and stuff his face to eat. At that moment the door to the master bedroom was unexpectedly opened again, and little Nai Nai poked out another little head that was staring curiously at her eating self. Gu Xingyi once again tried to grin at her. This time it finally worked out as expected, the little guy wasn't scared off and was still curiously surveying himself as he was eating. Gu Xingyi's heart slightly relaxed, a suppressed heart was also healed a lot by this soft little munchkin, he put down the chopsticks in his hand and shouted at little Nai Nai with the gentlest voice of his life. Nana-chan? Gu Xingyi's sudden opening of his mouth caused the little one's body to tremble gently in fear, but she still didn't shrink back, instead turning her head to look into the master bedroom, and then, as if she was encouraged by something, she looked at Gu Xingyi again. A childish yet soft child's voice came from her mouth. Dad? Hearing this voice, Gu Xingyi was shaken, his eyes instantly moist, and the smile on his face as bright as a chrysanthemum. It was the most beautiful melody he had heard since he crossed over. Little Nana cocked her little head and looked quizzically at the crying and laughing daddy, as if wondering why anyone could still laugh and shed tears. 
Gu Xingyi gave a soft mmm in response to the little one. Then he stood up and went to the couch and took out the doll he had just bought from the bag, holding it in his hand and shaking it gently at Nana. Little Nai Nai blinked her big eyes, seemingly a little intent, she looked at the doll in Gu Xingyi's hands, and then twisted her head to look into the master bedroom, and it was only after a long time that she wheedled her way towards Gu Xingyi's place. At this moment Gu Xingyi's heart was beating like a drum, as he watched this little girl, who was like a little angel, stepping on her little bare feet, approaching herself step by step. He even stopped breathing for fear of scaring the little guy who was so easily taking steps toward him. All little Nai Nai knew was that her daddy would make her good food now, and now that she had her favorite toy in her hand, he didn't seem to be mean to her and her mother anymore. She walked over to Gu Xingyi's side, lifted her little face, and sniffled hard before revealing a happy smile. Dad doesn't stink anymore. Happy. Little Nai Nai, look at the doll in daddy's hand, does it look good? Look at her two pigtails, they look like Nai Nai's, and her little dress, does Nai Nai like it? Looking at this tiny munchkin, Gu Xingyi's mind frantically searched for the parenting knowledge he had read from his cell phone, and he spoke to little Nai Nai extremely gently and seriously. Little Nai Nai's small hand moved as if she wanted to take this doll from Gu Xingyi's hands, but she still didn't muster up the courage to reach out her hand, and just looked at Gu Xingyi closely with a pair of big black glowing eyes. Gu Xingyi's gaze had been on little Nai Nai, so he naturally saw this action of hers, so he slowly crouched down until he was level with little Nai Nai. Placing the toy gently in little Nai Nai's hand again, Gu Xingyi felt his entire body crumble as his fingers touched little Nai Nai's small hand. The munchkins are killing it. Gu Xingyi, who was a father for the first time, was quite satisfied with his performance. Little Nai Nai finally received her favorite toy, her gaze moved from Gu Xingyi to the doll, her little fingers ran over the doll's long, light skirt, and her eyes immediately curved into crescent moons. Following the first meal her dad cooked for her, she got her first gift. Gu Xingyi looked at the delighted look of the little one holding the toy in front of her, and her heart was full of mixed feelings. Especially when she saw little Nana's dry, yellowish hair and thin little face up close, as well as this dress on her that had been washed and whitened and was obviously much smaller. Gu Xingyi's heart seemed to ache like pins and needles for a moment. She's only three years old, an age when she should be held in the palm of her hand, and now she's happy as can be over a tiny toy. Gu Xingyi gritted his teeth and wiped his eyes quickly, squeezing out a smile and just quietly watching little Nai Nai play by his side. The sunlight sprinkled through the curtains on little Nai Nai's face, her two round almond eyes were glowing under the fine bangs in front of her forehead, her long eyelashes fluttered like a small fan, and her little pretty nose was slightly wrinkled from time to time because of the smile at the corner of her mouth. At this moment, there was nothing else in Gu Xingyi's eyes. Xiao Shiryao inside the master bedroom, was even more nervous at this time, she didn't know if this was right or wrong. But she agreed with what Gu Xingyi had said before, the child was still young, she shouldn't grow up in this atmosphere, and letting the child get close to Gu Xingyi was the best she could do right now. Outside, little Nai Nai let out a silver bell-like laughter from time to time, Xia Shiryao couldn't help but shed tears when she heard it, she just sat quietly on the bed and wiped her tears silently. It wasn't long before little Nana seemed to get sleepy from playing, and she clutched the doll tightly, glancing at her dad, who was still giggling at her, and the look on her little face was tangled for a moment before she turned and thumped her way back to her bedroom. Gu Xingyi just stared blankly at the little one's figure disappearing, touched his nose, and laughed silently. I guess I'll have to buy the little guy a pair of proper slippers, it's not a good habit to be barefoot all the time. Time passed slowly, dinner was still made by Gu Xingyi, three dishes in one soup, as usual, let the mother and daughter finish their meal first, before Gu Xingyi went to carry out the CD-ROM action. Today's Gu Xingyi slept very early, he decided to start running in the morning from tomorrow, otherwise this body really can't take it, and he was tired enough to go out to buy something in the afternoon. So it was only 8 o'clock in the evening when Gu Xingyi entered dreamland. At 8 o'clock, which was the time when most people were relaxing, in a technology university in Jiangcheng, Xiao Ming was lying on his bed, brushing Douyin in a bored manner. Without brushing for a while, Ming yawned, it was really because all the videos pushed to him on Douyin were unpleasant to listen to. Ugh. Boring, back and forth nothing new at all. He continued to run his fingers over his phone, deciding to swipe two more and go play the game. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Suddenly a gentle guitar sound rang out from the cell phone, and Ming unconsciously stopped his scratching fingers and looked at the view screen, only to see that it was a slim boy with no face showing, holding a guitar and sweeping the strings. That's a nice melody. Ming nodded and continued to listen. I woke up from crying because I dreamed you left. Look at the night wind blowing across the windowsill, can you feel my love? Hmm. What the hell is an unexpectedly good sound? Ming rolled over and sat up, turning the volume up again. Gu Xingyi's clean and gentle singing voice echoed in his ears causing Xiao Ming's eyes to light up. How many people have adored your youthful looks, but know who is willing to bear the relentless change of the years? How many people have come and gone in your life, and know that I have been by your side all your life? Wow! Treasure Song! What was the name of this song? Ming gulped, sure that he had never heard the song before, so he clicked on the author's personal page. It's a newcomer. 
Her name is Xing Yao. The song is still his original. A lifetime of you. What a life with you. Xiaoming flew back to the video interface again and listened to the whole song again. He once again immersed in the song, as if the girl beside him, from the youthful years to accompany his own slowly grow old, and she no matter how to change, he adored her. From young to old, from one to the other. Xiaoming's entire being was infected by the song. He quickly clicked like and wrote a whole bunch of comments, then forwarded them to the girl he liked. The next moment, as if he thought of something, he clicked forward again and forwarded it to the class group. Such a great song. How can it be buried? What Ming doesn't realize is that there are many others who repeat this action of his. Wang Gang is a white collar company, he is currently nestled in his car brushing Douyin, upstairs is his home, but he does not want to go home. Since getting married and having children, his wife has become particularly nagging. Whenever he worked hard all day outside and still couldn't get some leisure when he came back home, he could always hear his wife counting herself out while cooking. Something about how much money that man makes and how obedient that child is. It's true what they say, after a woman becomes a yellow face, how to look at how enough panic, so he would nestle in the car for a while every day after work, enjoying this moment of peace and quiet. Swiping through the various beauties on Duin, he often thought how nice it would be if his wife turned out to be like this. Wang Gang thought like this, his fingers gently stroked again, suddenly a gentle guitar sound broke into his ears, he looked at the video, it was a boy holding a guitar and playing. He was going to just cross it over, but the next moment the boy spoke. I woke up from crying because I dreamed you left. The voice entered Wang Gang's mind from his ears, and he froze for a moment, his fingers unconsciously stopping. Until the song was finished, Wang Gang was silent. The guitar sounded again and the song was sung all over again, but Wang Gang's thoughts drifted far away. That was when he first met his wife, when her face gradually became clear in his mind, she had also been a being pursued by many people, but she finally chose herself. He remembered his wife's knitted brows and smile, her brightness like a flower, and his own vows when he first got married. For richer or for poorer, in health or in sickness, in beauty or in loss of color, in good times or in bad, henceforth he would love her, comfort her, honor her, and protect her. One life, till death do us part. He remembered again the cheerful expression, the encouraging look on his wife's face when she prepared little surprises for him from time to time when his work was not as good as he would have liked. And when did one start to get bored? From when he was so engrossed in his work every day that he didn't care about her? Or from when she gave her a couple words every time she came home drunk? Thinking about it, Wang Gang suddenly burst into tears. Since when on earth had I neglected the person I once loved the most? As the song continued, Wang Gang quickly tapped a like, then turned off his phone, started his car and left the parking lot, and when he came back again, he hurried up the stairs, opened the door, closed it, and see the familiar figure in the kitchen. Why are you back so late today you didn't know to give me a call? The food is getting cold. Hearing this familiar nagging voice, Wang Gang smiled as he quickly walked into the kitchen, wrapped one hand around his wife's waist, and rested his face on her shoulder. Nasty. What are you doing? The kids are still at home. Wang Gang looked at the wrinkles at the corners of his wife's eyes, looked at her rough hands from doing housework for a long time, and suddenly smiled. Then he pulled out a bouquet of fiery red roses from behind him, a bouquet as dainty as she had been back then. Honey, I love you. It's so good to have you. In just one night, the song A Lifetime of You Killed Madness on doo -wop. Gu Xingyi's gentle voice with the gentle melody of the guitar captured one fan after another, and the number of likes and comments rose at a rocket-like rate. More and more people either because they received a forward from a friend, or because of the recommendation of people around them, when they clicked on the video one by one with curiosity, they were instantly attracted to the song, and in turn became part of the recommendation army themselves. The heat continues to fester. By the end of the day it wasn't just the fighting sounds, but even the perimeter blogs were starting to be talked about. At 10 o'clock that night, this video managed to kill the fifth on the Dujang hot search list. At this point in time, the Douyin headquarters, the door to the room of operations director Yang Chenglin's office was knocked on, and she, who had just finished her day's work, frowned at the visitor with a serious expression. Pushing the door in, the technician Lee took the tablet in his hand and wiped the fine sweat on his forehead as he looked at the usually thunderous boss in front of him. Director Yang, I have a special situation to report, just now there was a video on the platform that took only two hours to make it to the hot search list, and it's now at the fifth of the hot searches. Yang Chenglin was not impressed, she still frowned and waved her hand to take the tablet handed by Xiao Li. What's the point of panicking? It's not the first time this has happened, tell me, which big internet star has posted a new video again? It's not a big internet star. It's a new number that just signed up today. And this video didn't go through our push stream. The video content is just a song. Xiao Li said carefully, while observing director Yang's face, but he knew that director Yang hated people disturbing her during her break time. He was also betting on the value of this video now, because he's just heard the song, and honestly, he's suckered by the video. Hearing Xiao Li's words, Yang Chenglin's face really became surprised. A new number? One song? 
Unpushed streams and it kills it at number 5 on the Hot 100? As she said that, she resumed her seat on the office chair and clicked on the Douyin Hot Search, and then the look of surprise in her eyes became even more intense. For on the Hot 100? I'd like to see what kind of song this is. After the song, Yang Changlin fell silent, this was the first time she had heard such a good song on here in all the time she had worked at Douyin. Yang Changlin tapped on the author's homepage and looked at his name. Starry Yao. A very nice name. Little Lee, you've done a great job, give me a hand in pushing the stream of this video, so that more people can brush up to it, and make sure that this video is number one on the hot search list tomorrow. Also, you're responsible for keeping an eye on this account, if there's a similar song next time, there's no need to report to me, just push it out. Lee nodded vigorously and happily took the tablet and left the office. He knew. He had gambled right. After Xiao Li left, Yang Changlin once again listened to the song in its entirety. Still sounding so good, Yang Chenglin's fingers gently tapped on the table a few times, as if he was thinking about something. A moment later, she picked up her phone, edited the private message, and sent it. 6 o'clock the next morning. The number of likes on this video in Douyin has come to a horrifying half a million, and the number of comments is up to more than 200,000. You know that some of the big online bloggers, when they receive hundreds of thousands of likes, it's already awesome to have tens of thousands of comments. So this review conversion rate is really ridiculously high. The number of Gu Xingyi's fans, moreover, broke a million in one night. Become a millionaire blogger and overnight sensation with just one song and one video. Of course, most of these fans were fans of this video, and if Gu Xingyi didn't follow up with a song of the same quality as this video, he would be quickly forgotten by most people. Gu Xingyi got up at 5 o'clock, he didn't know that his song had caught fire out of the sky, he hurriedly washed up and then walked out of the house for today's morning exercise. This body was even worse than he had imagined, and after just a short while of running, he was already panting with exhaustion, so much so that he could only run for every 20 minutes before he had to stop and rest. After an hour of running and stopping like that, he finally ran 5 kilometers, which was the plan he had set for himself for the day. After resting a little in place and doing a few sets of push-ups, Gu Xingyi slowly moved towards home. By the time I got home, the time had come to 7.40 in the morning. Gu Xingyi just pushed open the door of his house and Xia Shuria who was washing out from the bathroom, Xia Shuria's hair in front of her forehead was stained with water droplets and was wiping it with a towel, she was startled when she saw Gu Xingyi and looked a bit panicked. She looked at the sweaty Gu Xingyi a bit at a loss, but was still a bit panicked, I, I didn't know you went out, I'll go make dinner now. Gu Xingyi froze for a moment, a little embarrassed in the face of this situation, but still answered quickly. Is Nana still asleep? Ah. Uh. Xia Shuriya pursed her lips, lowered her head and hummed, her heart beating faster, the sunshine sent on Gu Xingyi's body after the exercise made her uncomfortable. Used to seeing his disheveled and ugly appearance, suddenly this sunny Gu Xingyi made her heart panic. She subconsciously avoided Gu Xingyi and quickly walked towards the kitchen. You go keep an eye on Nanachan, I'll cook after I've had my bath, do you have any dishes you want to eat? Gu Xingyi's slightly ingratiating voice rang out from behind her, and Xia Shuriya's footsteps stuttered, a long time later with a soft trill ringing out from her mouth. No. No, feel free to do whatever you want, I'm going to go watch the kids. After saying that Xia Shuriya's footsteps accelerated, escaping, and drilling into the bedroom. Gu Xingyi looked at the bedroom door that was closed, shrugged helplessly, and hummed a comfortable hot bath. This morning's physical exertion was a bit big, after taking a bath Gu Xingyi felt like he was starving to the point of panic, and the original body's alcohol addiction had kicked in, Gu Xingyi was having a hard time, his mouth kept secreting saliva, and he could only relieve himself by frantically drinking hot water while he cooked his meal. Little Nai Nai also got up at this time, and after Xia Shuriya washed her up, she peeled herself against the kitchen doorframe and watched Gu Xingyi cook, still holding the doll Gu Xingyi gave her yesterday in her arms. Gu Xingyi turned around and saw the little guy, he grinned an ant like smile at Little Nai Nai and softly asked, What does Little Nai Nai want to eat this morning? Daddy will make it for you. The two braids on Little Nai Nai's head wiggled slightly, tilting her little head in serious thought for half a day before her large eyes curved up. Steamed eggs. Nana loves steamed eggs. Good. Steamed eggs then. Gu Xingyi replied dotingly, he reached out his hand to rub little Nai Nai's little brain, and then quietly retracted it, he was afraid of scaring this little angel in front of him. Take your time, there's no rush, Gu Xingyi thought in his mind. Little Nai Nai was obviously slowly accepting himself, which made Gu Xingyi see hope, he couldn't help but be in a good mood, at the moment even his alcohol addiction and hunger seemed to be far away from him. Breakfast was still plentiful, white porridge, rolls, one meat and two veggies, and of course the steamed eggs that Nana herself had ordered. Gu Xingyi returned to his small bedroom as usual, letting the mother and daughter eat first, but better than ever, there was clearly more laughter from the two outside as they ate. Side lying in. Gu Xingyi lay on the bed and picked up his cell phone, which he had set to mute, to see how effective the video had been. Just after unlocking the phone, Gu Xingyi was shocked. Crap. That's how many notices. 
only to see that in the notification bar of the cell phone screen, the notification messages of video likes, retweets and comments had all reached 99+. plus. Gushingi crossed out all these notifications with some trembling, he had a feeling that his song would be fire, but he genuinely didn't expect it to be this hot. It's simply horrible as hell. Luckily, I turned on the mute last night, or else the notification beep alone would have kept me awake all night. Gushingi gulped and clicked on Douyin to open his homepage. The number of more than a million fans on the page almost blinded him, even though he had seen a lot of wind and waves, he could not help but want to exclaim at this moment. You have to know that this world's Douyin platform is not compared to the original world, even if the original world that has been developed and matured Douyin one night more than a million bloggers are not a few. With an excited heart, Gushingi continued to click on the video, more than 2 million likes and close to 1 million comments also made Gushingi unable to stop raising a smile on his face. A song that became famous. It seemed that no one in this world had ever reached this achievement except for himself. And Gushingi read it, the comments section was clear of favorable comments, all praises, and more people were calling for two more such good songs for themselves. Sure enough, a good song knows no time and place. The original world's good songs, not buried in this world, blossomed into its own luster, and managed to kill the Douyin hot search list one. Gushingi also saw that there were already quite a few big internet celebrities covering their own version of this song, and there were even a few cover videos that had killed the hot search list. However, they both specified that the original was themselves, so Gushingi didn't pay much attention to it. Returning to his personal homepage, Gushingi took another look at his account's private chat interface, which was basically full of advertisers seeking cooperation as well as all sorts of guild recruitment. Gushingi ignored them, it was impossible to bring goods, not in this lifetime. He was a man with a world in his head, how could he possibly carry goods just to make money, he couldn't do such a stupid thing as drying up the fish. The next moment is to witness the gains. Gushingi clicked on Douyin's backstage wallet, and the earnings that came into view made him grin. Without picking up any advertisements or pushing the stream of the video, in just one day, this video generated a horrifying $320,000 from traffic alone. That's still the proceeds after taxes have already been paid, and it's just nice. Gushingi, who saw the proceeds, sighed in relief. There's money to be had, and days don't have to be so tight at last. Before, when he was holding all his family's belongings of more than a thousand dollars, he was careful even to buy a grocery, and he couldn't even dare to imagine what would happen if something happened to a family with only this much money left. Now with this first bucket of money, he was naturally in a much lighter mood. After transferring the proceeds to the bank card, Gushingi waited until the two people outside had finished eating and the sound of the room door rang out before he hurriedly pushed the door out for breakfast. After his morning exercise, his appetite was obviously much larger, and he didn't feel much full even after finishing all the meals on the table. But fortunately it's an early breakfast and you shouldn't eat too much. After brushing the dishes, Gushingi copied his cell phone and hurried out of the house. The neighborhood where he now lives is located within the old part of the city of Jiangchang. This neighborhood is now on the older side, the reason why I would buy a house here, all because it is cheap, he and Xia Shiryao two people did not work for a long time to get married in the first place, the two hands do not have a lot of money. When they got married, they also envisioned that they would be able to get a better house later, but unfortunately, two years after the marriage, the original Gushingi not only didn't look for another job but also lost all the savings of the two of them. Even Xia Shiryao's cell phone was taken out and sold for booze, and all the money in the house was controlled by him. Coming out of the dilapidated neighborhood and merging into the flow of people, Gu Xingyi walked straight towards the mall she remembered. The mall is not far from the neighborhood, only two blocks away, the name is Blue Sky Mall, very cheesy, but the goods inside are everything. It was also Gu Xingyi's first time here, and as soon as he entered the door, he saw a large domestic branded cell phone franchise called Somewhere 4. Probably because most people were at work right now, there weren't many customers in the store, and a young female clerk was boredly applying nail polish at the counter. Her eyes clearly lit up when she saw Gu Xingyi come in, and she quickly greeted her. She was even a little happier to see such a handsome little brother visit her early in the morning. Handsome guy want to buy a cell phone? Aha! Uh -huh. Gu Xingyi nodded in response and cruised around the counter before selecting an azure-colored phone. The shop girl was busy picking up the cell phone Gu Xingyi had chosen, and the smile on her face grew even wider. Handsome good eye, you choose this as our store's latest products, not only the appearance of the beautiful, and this phone has a hundred times the zoom, but also the world's first cell phone to support satellite calls oh. Gushingi nodded and thought for a moment before adding, there are cell phone cards for sale here, right? Sure. Are you using it yourself? If you use it yourself, just run a card here. We are now running a card to recharge 100 not only have $100 of phone bill, but also send you 600 minutes of free talk time, 100 free text messages, as well as 50G of exclusive traffic. The female clerk more enthusiastic introduction up, straight to say the mouth dry, she did not expect this handsome man not only want to buy a cell phone worth more than 6,000, but also to run a card here. This makes you happy when your own commission is going up again. 
Gu Xingyi didn't have the heart to interrupt her introduction until she finished, then he spoke, it's not that I'm getting a card, it's for my wife, eh? The shop girl was stunned for a moment, then looked at Gu Xingyi, and was inexplicably a little disappointed in her heart. Alas, how can such a young guy step into the grave of marriage so early? It's true that all good men are from other families and buy their wives thousands of dollars in cell phones without batting an eye. The shop girl thought so, but her mouth was not ambiguous, and continued, handsome man's wife is really lucky, I think this cell phone your wife will like it. But to get a cell phone card, you still need your wife herself to come in person with her ID. Okay, then please just help me put this cell phone together. Gu Xingyi scratched his head, he didn't realize that this world also required real name authentication to purchase a cell phone card, so he could only let the clerk wrap the phone first. Not long after, the phone was wrapped, Gu Xingyi swept the code to pay the money, and then hurriedly left the cell phone store under the warm cheer of the female clerk. He still had a lot of shopping to do and had already wasted quite a bit of time here. Has been busy until 10 and a half at noon, full of Gu Xingyi before following the shopping mall specializing in the delivery of goods in a large truck, joyfully back home. Sure enough, a rich man's day is all about buying. That feeling, it's just awesome. After Gu Xingyi left the house, Xia Shiryao took little Nai Nai out of the bedroom. After Xia Shiryao cleaned up her home up and down, she sat on the sofa and looked at the turquoise blue sky outside the window. After two days of ventilation, the house had long since lost the smell of alcohol, and the fresh air that blew in from time to time along the windows made her feel unusually comfortable. Little Nai Nai lying beside Xia Shiryao, was fiddling with her newly obtained doll, a pair of big eyes had long been bent into a crescent moon, her smile over the past two days became more visible to the naked eye, and the person was also a lot more cheerful. This is placed in the past as Xia Shiryao do not even dare to think about, looking at the playful little Nai Nai, Xia Shiryao's mouth unconsciously curved up a small arc. This kind of day, it's so nice. Immediately after that, Xia Shiryao suddenly froze, she touched the corner of her mouth incredulously, then she saw the ointment that was still quietly staying on the coffee table. Is that a laugh on its own? So, one can still laugh? Xia Shiryao fell into deep thought, and the living room was suddenly left with the sound of little Nai Nai playing alone. ka -ching. The sudden sound of the door lock turning woke Xia Shiryao from her contemplation, and little Nai Nai flew up, hugging the doll and burrowing into Xia Shiryao's arms. Noises came from outside, and Gu Xingyi's familiar voice rang out. Hey! Slowly, slowly, don't scrape it, it needs to be erected and moved inside. Xia Shiryao was a little flustered, she quickly picked up little Nai Nai and wanted to go back into the bedroom, but her gaze couldn't help but curiously look towards the door. The figures of Gu Xingyi and an unfamiliar man were the first to appear in her field of vision, and they were carrying a cream-colored cloud-style sofa towards the inside of the room. Gu Xingyi's eyes clearly lit up when he saw Xia Shiryao, and his face carried a cheerful and joyful expression. That. Please can you pour me a few cups of hot water? Let the masters rest their feet after the rush later. Ha? Huh? Oh, okay, I'll pour. Xia Shiryao, who hadn't been in contact with outsiders for a long time, was a bit overwhelmed, but she also quickly reacted, holding little Nai Nai and quickly walking into the kitchen. The smile on Gu Xingyi's face intensified, and although he was now covered in sweat, he was still energized. He and his masters moved the new sofas they had procured into the house, and then the old original sofas, and then the TV, the refrigerator, the greenery. One by one, as if he was tireless, he did the work himself and carried it with the masters. Home in this piece of new furniture after the entrance, instantly changed, the original old look suddenly new, re emitting a picture of vitality. Xia Shiryao was like a ghost standing in the kitchen looking at all of a sudden, the look in her eyes from shock to unbelievable, to bewilderment, her hands holding little Nai Nai unconsciously harder. Little Nai Nai was originally dripping with big eyes looking at the furniture in front of her, after being hugged more and more tightly by Xia Shiryao, her big eyes turned to look at her own mother, her face appeared aggrieved, and her little mouth also deflated. Mommy bad. Hugging hurts. Fortunately, Xia Shiryao quickly reacted and reset to a comfortable hugging position, and kissed little Nai Nai's cheeks with an apologetic face. Then she coaxed little Nai Nai while looking at Gu Xingyi who had just finished working in the living room, he was haggling with the masters and the old furniture that had been eliminated ended up being sold by him for all of $800. Xia Shiryao has some meat pains, those furniture is a little old but they are all in good condition, 800 is really too much of a loss. But what she was more curious about now was where Gu Xingyi had gotten so much money. According to the calculations in her mind, the family should be almost unable to uncover the money by now. Sending the masters away, Gu Xingyi once again returned to the living room with a large bag, surveying the fruits of his labor with satisfaction. Cream-colored sofa, pure white coffee table, 75-inch UHD LCD TV, 1. 8-meter stand-up air conditioner, 550L cross-door refrigerator, double-potted greenery in front of the balcony. The originally small living room was suddenly filled with what can only be described in one word, in contrast to the previous humble living room with only a sofa and coffee table. Sky's the limit. That's what home tastes like. 
Gu Xingyi picked up a towel and wiped the sweat from his face, placed the bag in his hand on the new coffee table, and sat his butt down on the fluffy sofa. The two mothers in the kitchen were still standing over there stupidly, at this time, little Lai Nai had already been put down by Xia Shi Yao, she hugged her mother's thighs, like a curious baby, looking left and right, obviously exploring all these new things in the house. Seeing the little guy like this, Gu Xingyi had a smile on his face and his eyes narrowed into slits, suddenly feeling very accomplished. He held out a large pink toy from the large bag on the coffee table and placed it on the coffee table while his eyes kept looking at little Nina. As expected, after seeing the toy, Nana's eyes were instantly attracted to it and she couldn't take her eyes off of it anymore. One of her little hands was still gripping the doll tightly, while her other little hand grasped the hem of Xia Shuria's coat, her head slightly stretched forward, trying to get a good look at what kind of toy was in Gu Xingyi's hands. A small look of wanting to come over but not daring to do so caused Gu Xingyi's nose to be sore. Other people's three-year-olds would be jumping into their dad's arms with joy at this point, right? The original sense of accomplishment instantly disappeared, Gu Xingyi secretly clenched his own fists and then loosened them, he reached out his hand and beckoned to little Nai Nai, looking at little Nai Nai dotingly. Nai Nai, come over here and see what daddy got you. Little Nai Nai didn't run over immediately, she first raised her little face to look at her mother, seeing Xia Yao's lips move without saying anything, then she walked over with the same steps. Gu Xingyi had already unpacked the toys at this time, revealing the real face inside, he looked at the little Nai Nai stopped in front of the coffee table and did not move, followed by, wow, it's a princess house hey, what should I do? The princess house is so messy, little Nai Nai want to decorate her home for the little princess together with dad? Little Nai Nai heard Gu Xingyi's words, a pair of eyes shining brightly, eyes obviously with longing, her small body again to the front of the sofa, until it came to the side of Gu Xingyi's legs, holding onto the fluffy sofa to look at the pink princess house on the coffee table. Gu Xingyi at this time a gentle smile, picked up the princess house within the small princess, in the small Nai Nai's eyes shake, petulant sigh, the small princess has not been dressed up, dad will not, small Nai Nai to help dad will be the small princess dressed up beautifully, okay ah? Gu Xingyi said while handing the little princess to little Nai Nai, little Nai Nai blinked her big eyes, looked at Gu Xingyi, and then tentatively raised her little hand slowly until it touched the little princess in Gu Xingyi's hand. Not far away, Xia Shiryao stood there, unable to help but hold her breath, her gaze fixed on little Nai Nai's outstretched little hand. Gu Xingyi kept his smile as he placed the little princess into little Nai Nai's hand and tried to hold little Nai Nai's little hand with his own big hand. Until the warm and soft little hand was held in his own, the corners of Gu Xingyi's lips rose slightly. Only then did he pick up the little princess's long pink dress once more, holding little Nai Nai's tiny hand in one hand and handing over the little dress with the other, gentleness ringing once more from his mouth. Dressing the little princess is on little Nai Nai, daddy is so stupid, Nai Nai teach daddy okay? Daddy's hand is so warm, even warmer than mommy's, little Nai Nai looked at the little princess in front of her, and then looked at the aggrieved Gu Xingyi, and suddenly smiled. Cluck 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 daddy's so stupid. Nana will teach daddy. The little one smiled with her little white teeth showing, her almond eyes even turned into two curved crescent moons, she leaned on Gu Xingyi's thighs and took the little dress that Gu Xingyi handed her. Moving awkwardly, she slipped it on the little princess. Gu Xingyi laughed along with him as he humbly accepted the little guy's teachings, learning how to dress the little princess. At this moment, the modest room suddenly brightened. The sound of father-daughter laughter echoed through the living room, and for the first time since she was three years old, little Nana scrunched into her daddy's arms to play and feel his unique warmth. This was also Gu Xingyi's first time bringing up a baby and enjoying the fun of having a cute baby at home, and for the 10,000-year-old single dog, this was definitely a good start. On one side, Xia Shiryao leaned on the doorframe, quietly watching this beautiful scene in front of her, her eyes moist. She didn't even dare to gasp aloud for fear of interrupting the dreamlike scene, and for the first time, that heart that had been so firmly set down appeared to falter. It would be nice, perhaps, if it could stay like this? The father-daughter duo didn't have long to play, little Nai Nai was still decorating the princess house under Gu Xingyi's guidance, when Gu Xingyi looked up and saw Xia Shiryao, who was leaning against the kitchen doorframe in a daze. The sunlight outside happened to spill down the gap in the curtains onto her slim body, and her whitewashed light blue shirt was unusually blinding at this moment, making Gu Xingyi unable to stop squinting. Mother and daughter really do look alike, not only in their eyes, but also in the obviously one size smaller clothes they're wearing. This looks like a parent-child outfit? Gu Xingyi was in a trance and suddenly remembered that this was indeed a parent-child outfit, which was secretly bought by Xia Shiryu behind his back on little Nai Nai's second birthday, and then discovered by the original owner. Xia Shiryu was beaten and her cell phone was sold by the original owner. The original owner also had one but it had long since been used as a rag for him to throw in some trash heap. Gu Xingyi who remembered this was silent, the next second Gu Xingyi staggered to his feet, covered his mouth and ran to the bathroom and started to vomit madly. Gu Xingyi now realized what kind of disgusting sense of anger would arise when a person with a conscience, reviewing such behavior from a first viewpoint. 
How can we know the pain of others without their suffering? This sudden turn of events scared the two mothers outside, Xia Shurya was even more frightened and shivered, quickly walking to the front of the sofa to take little Nai Nai into her arms. Little Nai Nai vigorously burrowed into Xia Shurya's arms, fearing that if he was a step late that father who had finished vomiting would suddenly come out and scold himself and his mother like before. Dad used to be as scary as a man-eating tiger after every time he made that kind of noise. Half a day later, Gu Xingyi walked out of the bathroom in a sorry state, his eyes were bloodshot and red, looking at the frightened Xia Shuryo and little Nai Nai, his heart was even harder to bear, and his stomach couldn't stop churning. But he still held back his discomfort and spoke weakly to them, I'm sorry for scaring you guys, I'm just a little uncomfortable. He was uncomfortable, unusually uncomfortable, the memories in his mind, what the original owner did made him unable to stop flooding with nausea, especially when he thought of himself now occupying his body, Gu Xingyi's whole body was as if there were millions of ants crawling on his body. Looking at Xia Shuryao and little Nai Nai still looking at themselves warily, Gu Xingyi sighed heavily, bypassing Xia Shuryao who was holding the child and silently walking into the kitchen, he picked up the dishes and washed them. Nina probably hasn't had enough, so why don't you take her and play a little longer, and I'll make lunch. The sound of the water flowing was small, and Gu Xingyi was very serious. Xia Shuryao took a close look at Gu Xingyi's side face, which was so familiar and yet so strange. Eventually she nodded and sat down where he had been sitting before with little Nana in her arms. Little Nana sneaked her little head out of her mom's arms, and after realizing that her dad was still the same gentle dad, a smile finally lifted up on her little face again. The unexpected end of a father-daughter bonding session turned into leisure time for mother and daughter. Smoke and fire in the kitchen, soft voices outside the kitchen. Until lunch was ready and the smell of the meal wafted through the living room. When Xia Shuryao saw him silently return to the side bedroom after serving the meal on the table, the corner of her mouth moved slightly, but she was unable to utter a single word. As she ate her meal, little Nina, with her little spoon in her mouth, suddenly turned her head to look at her mom, her little brow furrowed and a puzzled expression on her face. Mommy, why doesn't daddy eat with us anymore? Xia Shuryao was chewing on a piece of small fried meat in small bites, this was her favorite dish, no matter before or after marriage, she rarely ate it anymore because Gu Xingyi couldn't eat spicy food. Hearing her daughter's question, Xia Shuryao unconsciously turned her head to look in the direction of the side sleeper, and then turned back to look at her daughter with a puzzled face, she suddenly smiled a little. This smile was as beautiful as a spring flower in bloom. That's because, well, mom and dad aren't ready, are they? The little one didn't get it, her little brow furrowing even more as her tiny little brain didn't understand her mom's words at all. Gu Xingyi in the bedroom was fuming, he knew that his sudden vomiting was due to a heart problem, but he couldn't change anything. Even though he kept reassuring himself subconsciously that it wasn't his fault, it still didn't change the fact that he was who he was. The helpless Gu Xingyi could only take out his cell phone and flip through the doing videos to divert his attention, his own video was still high on the hot search list, and many of the comments below were urging him to come up with another new song. But he had no thoughts on that now, making money was a means to an end, not an end in itself. The video is still slowly generating revenue right now, although that revenue will dwindle by the day, and within a few days there should even be no revenue at all. But now that he had exactly enough money for his family's daily life, he didn't need to release a new video just for the sake of money. At this time the movement of washing dishes outside came, Gu Xingyi put down his cell phone, pushed open the bedroom door and walked out. There was still food left for him on the dining table, Xia Shuryao was in the kitchen washing the dishes, while little Nai Nai ran to the sofa again, fiddling with her new toys. The doll that Gu Xingyi had given her earlier had also been placed inside the princess house, lying side by side with the little princess on the small sofa inside the princess house. Seeing her father come out, little Nai Nai wasn't as scared as she was before, she just tripped big eyes and looked at Gu Xingyi, the anticipation in her eyes clear as day. The little guy is trying to continue to get his daddy to play with his toys. Gu Xingyi laughed a little and walked up to tenderly touch her little head, but he didn't play with the little one, instead he sat on the sofa and turned his head in the direction of the kitchen. Seeing that her father had no intention of playing with her, little Nai Nai pouted her little lips in disappointment as she propped herself up on the edge of the sofa and sat on her butt, leaning against Gu Xingyi's side to play with herself. Xia Shuryao had just come out of the kitchen when she saw Gu Xingyi staring at her, her heart couldn't help but feel a pang of nervousness, and she didn't know where to put her hands, so she could only pinch the corners of her clothes helplessly. Seeing Xia Shuryao in such a lowbrow and submissive manner, Gu Xingyi couldn't help but frown, and in his heart he silently sighed, it was because of this gentle and introverted nature of hers that she had emboldened the demon to bully her so much in the past. Thinking of this Gu Xingyi's slightly furrowed brows loosened, took out the cell phone he had just bought from the coffee table and placed it on the table, still looking at Xia Shuryao with a soft tone. I bought you a cell phone, see if you like it, and there's something else I want to discuss with you, can you sit over here? Xia Shuryao was originally keeping her head down, and it was only after she heard Gu Xingyi's words that she raised her head to look at Gu Xingyi. The first thing she met was Gu Xingyi's clean and clear eyes, 
Then she saw the brand new cell phone case on the table. Xia Shiryao hesitated for a moment, and only after a few moments did she let out a soft hum and slowly walked over to the sofa and sat down. There's something to discuss? The voice was so soft that Gu Xingyi had to strain his ears to hear it. Gu Xingyi didn't answer, but picked up the cell phone case on the table and unwrapped it for himself. The new azure-colored cell phone was taken out by him, removing the protective cover and turning it on, the pleasant startup ringtone sounded, Gu Xingyi simply set it up and handed it over to Xia Shiryao's face. This cell phone is for you, you need to get your own cell phone card, I saved my number in it, so if I'm not at home in the future, you can call me if anything happens. Gu Xingyi said while pulling out another pile of money from his pocket and placing it in front of her. This is the cash I just withdrew, it's okay to take the child out for a walk in the afternoon, it's not good to stay at home all the time, if there's anything you want to buy, buy some, especially clothes, I see that both of you have much smaller clothes, and also, do a bank card, it's not safe or convenient to carry cash. Gu Xingyi shattered his words and said what was on his mind in one breath. Xia Shiryao raised her head, staring tightly at the man in front of her, listening to his broken chatter, her eyes slowly reddening. Gu Xingyi saw that Xia Shiryao was hesitant to take over her cell phone, he helplessly touched his nose. Is it because you don't like the phone? I bought it because I looked at the color and it was the newest model, so if you don't like it, you can go buy another one you like. Xia Shiryao shook her head and took another deep look at Gu Xingyi. No, I quite like it, thank you. Her voice was still soft, a little choked with a slight trill. The two men's eyes suddenly locked together, and Gu Xingyi glanced away unnaturally, but in his heart, he was relieved. If you like it, you're welcome. Well, I'm going to eat first. After saying that, Gu Xingyi stood up and quickly walked to the table to feast. In fact, Xia Shiryao was still wondering where Gu Xingyi got so much money to buy these things, but Gu Xingyi didn't say anything, so she naturally wouldn't take the initiative to ask. She picked up the new phone on the table and took a look at it, the azure-colored phone shell was very textured, and there was a special charger in the box, even Gu Xingyi had bought the earphones and put them aside, a pure white in-ear headset. Little Nai Nai on one side also put down the toys in her hands at this time, and her little head came over to look curiously at the new cell phone in her mother's hand. Xia Shiryao obediently raised her hand and touched the little one's head, and the big one and the little one stared at the cell phone and started to study it. Because he had sweated a lot all morning, after Gu Xingyi had eaten and brushed the dishes, he wanted to take a hot bath, but the two of them had actually stayed in the living room today, causing him to be embarrassed to take a bath at this time, so he could only go back to the side bedroom in a somewhat depressed manner. 5 o'clock in the afternoon. The sky outside was finally no longer so hot, Xia Shiryao sat on the sofa and hesitated for a while, but still picked up the money on the table and led little Nai Nai out of the house. Nana hadn't been out for a long, long time, she loved to go out and play outside, but her mom never took her out before and her dad didn't allow them to go out, so she seemed unusually happy to go out this time. The little one held a doll in one hand and held his mom in the other, bouncing all the way, with a pair of big round eyes looking around. Everything out there was new to her. Just Xia Shiryao was a little bit formal. Her walking steps did not feel faster, looking at the pedestrians coming and going on the road, she inexplicably had some inferiority complex, especially with this ill-fitting clothes on her and Nikina, she always felt that other people's eyes would always look at her twice more without realizing it. The mall wasn't far, she vaguely remembered crossing two streets to get there. The place had changed a bit from the mall she remembered, in only two years, it seemed to be more elaborately decorated. As soon as she entered the door she saw a cell phone store with a counter for cell phone cards, Xia Shiryao hesitated for a moment before leading the child inside. There were quite a lot of people in the store, and the clerks all looked busy, Xia Shiryao, who hadn't interacted with anyone for a long time, stood in place somewhat bewildered. Luckily, there was a female sales clerk who spotted her in Little Nai Nai and took the initiative to walk up and touch Little Nai Nai's head first, then said with a smile on her face, the little guy is so good, is the pretty girl going to buy a cell phone? Hearing someone praise Little Nai Nai, Xia Shiryao's face also raised a smile as she shook her head. No, I have a cell phone, I want a cell phone card, can I get one now? The female clerk still had a smile on her face and guided Xia Shiryao to the counter as she spoke. Yes, this way please, we have several packages for you to choose from here, but can I ask what brand of cell phone you have? If it is our store brand cell phone for cell phone card is a discount oh. Hearing the offer, Xia Shiryao's eyes lit up for a moment as she quickly took out her cell phone from her pocket and handed it to the female clerk, softly inquiring, is this okay? It seems like it's your brand, and it was just bought in the morning. The shop girl's expression froze as she once again took a closer look at Xia Shiryao. There hadn't been two of the newest cell phones sold today, and they were here to apply for a cell phone card, so the female clerk naturally thought of Gu Xingyi in the morning. So this mother and daughter are the wife and child of that handsome guy in the morning? Just how come both of them are so skinny? And the clothes were obviously ill-fitting. That handsome guy doesn't look like he's bad to his wife and daughter, right? And the pair is so pretty, it shouldn't be. The shop girl couldn't figure it out, but she didn't ask more questions and exclaimed with a smile on her face, Wow, 
So the handsome man who came over to buy a cell phone this morning is your husband? You are really happy, this is our newest cell phone here. With this cell phone you can apply for this package, recharge 100 get 100 free, free to send 600 minutes of free talk time. It was still a passionate service, only this time the object of service changed from Gushingi to Xiaoshuriao. Xiaoshuriao was talked to in a daze and paid the money to successfully run the card until she walked out of the cell phone store, her mind still echoed with the enthusiastic voice of the female clerk. It's horrible. However, she actually said that Gu Xingyi was a good man. Xiao Shiryao really wanted to tell him, why don't you take such a good man home? After buying a cell phone card, Xiao Shiryao did a bank card to deposit all the money in her hand, in addition to the money left to do a cell phone card 4009, Gu Xingyi this time to give her a whole 5000. Walking out of the bank with her cell phone and bank card, Xiao Shiryao looked at the surrounding skyscrapers and suddenly felt alive. Now she can leave with her child, get a job to support herself and her child with this money in her hand, and even go back to pursuing her dreams. The sudden freedom made Xia Shiryao stand still for a long time in a daze. Until a tender childish voice rang in her ears. Mommy, mommy, can Nana have an ice cream? She instantly snapped back to her senses, and beside her, Nana was still holding her hand, her round eyes staring straight at the ice cream parlor not far away, her mouth watering from the corners of her mouth. Xia Shiryao smiled, smiling so brightly and brilliantly. Yes, but only one is allowed. Or your belly will hurt. Good. Nana loves mommy the most. The pair finally went out. Gu Xingyi took a beautiful shower. He didn't have the slightest idea that there was a possibility that Xia Shiryao outside might not come back. After taking a bath Gu Xingyi began to prepare up today's dinner. Two meat and two veggies on a daily basis, and for the main course he was going to make some soup noodles tonight. But since he didn't know when they would be back, Gu Xingyi was afraid that the noodles would be lumpy and not tasty, so he didn't make them now. After bringing the dishes to the table and cutting the noodles and placing them on the counter, Gu Xingyi returned to the living room, collapsed on the sofa, and picked up his cell phone to brush up on his parenting scriptures. What if the child doesn't eat? Just give them a beating. This can't be good. Cross out cross out. Little Nai Nai was so good, how could she not eat? Besides such a cute little one, he couldn't afford to touch a single finger of her. Until Gu Xingyi was a little sleepy from all the brushing, he yawned and looked at the time in the upper right corner. It's 7 p.m. M. Why aren't they back yet? Gu Xingyi suddenly sat up straight, no way? Something could have happened to these two, right? Gu Xingyi was a little nervous, dizzy standing up and putting on his shoes ready to go out to look for the two of them, but he had just opened the door to his room when he happened to run into them coming back from outside. A fragrant breeze blew in through the doorway. Gu Xingyi completely froze. At this moment, Xia Shiryao's mouth was humming an unknown ditty, her gait relaxed, the corners of her mouth curled up to indicate that she was in a good mood right now. She was holding a couple of handbags in her hand, and Nana was holding her by the corner of her coat in one hand, and in the other hand was still the doll he had given her. The reason that made Gu Xingyi freeze the most was that the two of them had already changed into new clothes that fit, the pleated long skirt under the same white shirt printed with small flowers dancing gently in the wind. It's true that a man is only as good as his clothes. A small group of people went out as if they had suddenly changed their appearance, and Gu Xingyi didn't dare to look at them directly, although he didn't dare to look at her directly in the first place. The two pairs of agile and lovely almond eyes obviously froze for a moment when they saw Gu Xingyi, and the next moment, little Nai Nai sweetly leaned up and called out to her father. Obviously little Nai Nai who went out to play today and changed into new clothes was in an extremely pleasant mood. This cry of daddy almost made Gu Xingyi's soul fly, and he even answered with a tremor in his voice before squatting down and rubbing little Nai Nai's hair. Munchkins are so foul. Key at the moment, Nana was cute in her adorableness, and cute with the quirkiness of a small child. This made Gu Xingyi instantly defeated, and his original nervousness instantly relaxed. He took the cute little guy in his arms and led the way into the house. Daddy's going to make you noodles for dinner today, okay? With two eggs. Good. Nina likes eggs. Nina loves daddy the most. Outside the door Xia Shiryao in the wind messy, the little guy just said that he loves his mom the most, turn this on mutiny? Nana didn't have to wait long, the noodles with eggs were soon ready. Gu Xingyi brought the noodles to her and scratched her little nose before habitually turning around and walking towards the bedroom. Gu Xingyi had just turned around, but he didn't want to be suddenly tugged by the little guy on his coat. Daddy, can you eat with Nana? The soft voice sounded again, Gu Xingyi turned his head back to meet little Nai Nai's expectant gaze, he hesitated a little and stole a glance at Xia Shiryao who was sitting next to him. Xia Shiryao didn't speak or look at him, as if she didn't hear little Nai Nai's words, shivering the noodles in front of her. Gu Xingyi is somewhat speechless, in front of this situation is really difficult to deal with, to kill to death to give a quick word ah, this is not speak is a few meanings? Gu Xingyi, who was a single dog for 10,000 years, really couldn't figure out what the woman in front of him meant, so he could only try and test the waters, then I'll stay and eat with little Nai Nai. Yay! Daddy, sit. Sit next to Nina. 
He was answered by Nana happily patting the chair on the other side of the room. Gu Xingyi rubbed his nose, and with an unnatural expression, he brought another bowl of noodles from the kitchen and sat down next to little Nai Nai. Mom sat on the left-hand side, Dad sat on the right-hand side, in the middle of the little Nai Nai for the first time being surrounded by Mom and Dad, the smile on his face has not been broken, even eating her extra hard to get up, directly will be full of a bowl of noodles eaten clean. In the end, Xia Shiryao was afraid that the little one would not be allowed to eat any more for fear that she would eat too much, and only then did the little one give up. Just after the meal, Xia Nai Nai's wish for her mom and dad to play princess house with her was defeated, and in the end, only Gu Xingyi was left to play with Xiao Nai Nai alone, and Xiao Shiryao returned to the master bedroom alone after having dinner. Gu Xingyi could understand this, to be able to allow herself to eat together at the table, Xia Shiryao must have already done a tremendous amount of mental struggle. Gu Xingyi put himself into Xia Shiryao's position and thought about it. If it was himself trying to get along with his enemies after the kind of treatment he had suffered in the past, he certainly couldn't do it himself. It's not right. If it was himself, then the original Gu Xingyi must not even be able to find his body now. The kind you chop up and feed to the dogs. After playing with Nana until 9 o'clock at night, Nana was so sleepy that she was nodding her little head from time to time, but she still wouldn't go to bed. During this time Gu Xingyi also discovered a very serious problem. That was that little Nai Nai was now 3 years old, but the little guy couldn't even take off his shoes by himself until now. You have to know that normal 3-year-olds are at the age where they go to kindergarten. In this regard, Gu Xingyi also knows that this is the result of the previous dysfunctional family environment, cannot be rushed, but he still felt incomparably disturbed. It was at this moment that Xia Shiryu walked out from the bedroom, she didn't say anything, she just silently gazed at Gu Xingyi and little Nai Nai on the sofa, the meaning in her eyes clear and unambiguous. Gu Xingyi understood in a second, he picked little Nai Nai up from the sofa and kissed her on her little face before saying with a smile in his eyes, little Nai Nai, it's time to go to bed, tomorrow, daddy will play with you again, okay? Little Nai Nai's eyes that were originally about to squint open slightly, she looked at Gu Xingyi's face and then twisted her head to look at Xia Shiryu before her little head suddenly buried itself between her father's neck. Nana wants to sleep with daddy tonight. The sudden words caused Gu Xingyi to be somewhat at a loss for words, and also caused Xia Shiryu's face to darken slightly. The greatest fear is the sudden quietness of the air. Gu Xingyi looked at Xia Shiryu with an innocent face, this was the little guy's own idea, it really wasn't him flirting. Xia Shiryu secretly clenched her fists, this little white-eyed wolf, in vain she took care of her for so long, it's only been two days before she was corrupted by the enemy's sugarcoating. In the end, the little one got her way, Xia Shiryu simply gave her a wash, the little one beautifully drilled into her father's nest. Little Nai Nai, like a wombat, hugged Gu Xingyi's neck, unwilling to let go, and Gu Xingyi let her hold herself like this. This was Gu Xingyi's first time putting a baby to bed, and he remembered his online parenting experience, so he gently told little Nai Nai a bedtime story. Today daddy is telling the story of the Snow Queen. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, there was a beautiful land where the king had two very lovely daughters, one of whom was called Elsa. It was also the first time little Nai Nai had slept in her daddy's white arms and the first time he had read her a bedtime story. From the first time dad cooked for her, the first time he bought her a gift, and now two more firsts. With immense contentment in her heart, Nakina fell into a deep sleep. Early the next morning, little Nai Nai was still asleep, Gu Xingyi still got up early. He gingerly pushed open his bedroom door and made his way to the living room, ready to go out for his morning run. The next moment, he rubbed his eyes as if he couldn't believe it. The ointment on the coffee table in the living room was surprisingly gone. Gu Xingyi's eyes gradually glowed, and his face even pulled out a knowing smile. It was with pleasure that he left the house today. Morning jogging and bathing plus cooking, Gu Xingyi spent a total of more than two hours. After making breakfast, he had one more task for the day, getting his daughter out of bed. Little Nai Nai was awakened by Gu Xingyi's gentle voice. She rubbed her sleepy eyes, and the first time she saw Gu Xingyi, a cute and delicate smile gradually bloomed on her face. The little guy stretched out his two soft arms in a gesture of wanting his daddy to hug him. Gu Xingyi immediately reached out and gently picked her up, putting on the new clothes she had just bought yesterday for her, before carrying her out the door to wash up. Gu Xingyi had learned how to take care of small children on video, but theory was still theory, and now once he practiced it, he realized how difficult it was. The little one's body was too delicate, he didn't dare to exert himself, so the whole process seemed clumsy, especially when tying the little one's hair, he was even more overwhelmed, busy half a day, and in the end, he could only tie it up in a crooked way. Daddy's a big dummy. Seeing her crooked hair in the mirror, little Nai Nai pouted and mocked Gu Xingyi. Gu Xingyi pinched her little nose, causing little Nai Nai to giggle and giggle, also reaching out her little hand to pinch his nose. Xia Shiryao came out from the bedroom and saw this cozy scene between father and daughter, she didn't say anything, just silently walked into the kitchen to bring out the breakfast. Perhaps even she hadn't realized that the corners of her mouth had long since quirked up slightly without her realizing it. After the family of three had a simple breakfast, 
Gu Xingyi didn't return little Nai Nai back to Xia Shiryao, but continued to bring little Nai Nai to the sofa to play princess house. Only this time, Gu Xingyi had inadvertently instilled some very simple numbers, from 1 to 10, into little Nai Nai's little head during her playtime with her. After discovering little Nai Nai's problem, Gu Xingyi secretly formulated a plan to cultivate the little one's independent learning in the midst of his usual playfulness. Starting from simple numbers to some general knowledge of life, he would slowly teach little Nana. Obviously this wasn't going to work overnight, but it was good that little Nai Nai was very smart, it was just that no one had taught her any of this before, and now under Gu Xingyi's unconscious guidance, she quickly remembered some of this knowledge. Moreover, Gu Xingyi realized that since Xia Shiryao came back yesterday, it seemed like she had suddenly changed into a different person. Though she was still as silent as ever, there was clearly more of a glow in her brow that hadn't been there in the past. As it was, she didn't go back to her bedroom at this point, but sat on the other side of the couch fiddling with her cell phone, looking over at herself and her children from time to time. This was a good sign, making Gu Xingyi feel much more comfortable in his heart. Xia Shiryao downloaded WeChat, Weibo, Douyin and other software while observing the interaction between the father and daughter. At this time, she also discovered that Gu Xingyi was subliminally teaching little Nai Nai, and as she watched without moving, a hint of sweetness flooded her heart. She had wanted to teach her children for a long time, but it was just that their lives had been hard enough in their previous home environment, so how could she afford to teach little Nana like a normal mother? Xia Shiryao withdrew her gaze and looked at the cell phone screen. This is worthy of the newest phone, the software download speed is very fast, just a few seconds, several software has been downloaded. The moment Xia Shiryao boarded her WeChat, an unread message popped up. It was the little assistant who had been with her for two years before. Dorothy. Her WeChat was only those few people in total, in addition to Gu Xingyi, there were also a few from her previous company. Dorothy's messages had been non-stop from the time she'd gotten married until two days ago, mostly asking how she was doing, only she hadn't been able to reply. Looking at this series of messages, Xia Shiryao's heart warmed slightly, and she immediately replied back. I'm sorry, Joy, I haven't been able to return your messages before, I'm fine now, don't worry. Not two seconds after the message was sent, the message from the other side came back in seconds. Sister Shiryao, you're finally alive. I thought you wouldn't bother with me after you got married. Woohoo! Sister Shiryao, you don't know, since you disappeared, the company has been full of gossip, especially that nasty Lu Qian, who has been arrogant for the past two years. She's been saying bad things about you, that you deserve it, and it's really pissing me off. Seeing Lele's message, Xia Shiryao's small mouth pursed up slightly, Lu Qian was right, she did deserve it. Previously, when he was in the company, he had always pressed Lu Qian, and it was reasonable that Lu Qian would be like this after retiring from the circle. But his own little assistant was as perky as ever. Happy, how have you been? How's life? Xia Shiryao didn't respond to Lele's words, but instead asked about her recent situation. I'm fine. Don't worry, Sister Shioyo, I'm a strong man who can't be defeated. It's just that I miss Sister Shioyo. Oh Sister Shioyo will you still make a comeback? Xia Shiryao was stunned for a moment, and a trace of longing passed through her eyes. Will he make a comeback himself? She twisted her head to look at Gu Xingyi and then at little Nai Nai, and after a moment, the longing in her eyes slowly faded. It should, it won't. But if Lok Lok misses me, we can go out sometime to see each other. At this time in the Tianmei Entertainment Building in the center of Jiangqing City, a small girl with a height of about 1 meter 6 put down the weight on her shoulders, her small face with a slight baby fat was flushed, and there were two dimples hanging on both sides of her cheeks. At the moment she couldn't wait to jump up and down with excitement, and her hands were even more excited as she kept tapping away with her cell phone. But soon, a sharp female voice roused her from her enlightenment. Dorothy, are you slacking off? Hurry up and work. Do you still think you're the assistant of the previous popular young flower? Get lost if you don't want to work. Dorothy looked up. The owner of the voice was a woman with a foxy face, her face raised upwards, her slender willow eyes filled with disdain. What are you looking at? Why don't you carry the equipment to the studio? Can you afford to pay for delaying my recording? Dorothy gave the woman a blank look and a dark twit, but still shouldered the equipment on the floor and headed for the recording studio. Okay. Shiodo, I'm on vacation this Saturday, call me when you're free. Xia Shiryao looked at such a message and a smile finally hung on her face. She scrolled through WeChat again, saw that there was nothing else, and switched back to Siege, on which her last update was still two years ago, a statement announcing her retirement from the circle. The original hundreds of thousands of fans has now become a few thousand, in addition to zombie fans, surprisingly, there are some old fans often leave messages concerned about their own. Randomly scrolling through the peripatetic hotspots, they're all about the latest trills, but surprisingly a couple of them are talking about a song that's recently exploded in popularity. A lifetime with you. A divine song, mysterious singer breaks a million fans overnight with just one video. Xing Yao? Who the hell is he? An in-depth analysis that takes you through a recent treasure of a song. 
The song that soared to number one on the Do Yo Hot 100 overnight. Listen to it. Xia Yao was quite curious about what the recently exploded song was like, so she searched for the title and clicked in. The inside of the post is sprawled with a large comment from the blogger, all words praising the song, with a link attached below. Xia Yao tapped the link, and the phone screen automatically jumped to a video interface of Douyin. A familiar figure appears on the screen and a familiar guitar melody plays. Then the familiar song echoed through the living room. I woke up from crying because I dreamed you left. The living room was steeply silent, with only the sound of the song echoing in the ears of the three. Gu Xingyi awkwardly twisted his head, and little Nai Nai's big eyes fluttered into Xia Shuriyao's arms as she looked at the cell phone screen. Xia Shuriyao completely froze, this familiar song, wasn't it the song that came out of the room two days ago? So Gu Xingyi was recording a video that day? It was still little Nai Nai who was the first to speak out, she stretched out her little finger towards the cell phone screen and looked up at Xia Shuriyao, her big eyes full of curiosity. It's daddy. Daddy's on the phone. Well, it's daddy then. Xia Shuriyao responded by stroking the little one's head. She now realized why Gu Xingyi would have so much money to replace the furniture for her family. The number of likes was several million. Could she not have money? She twisted her head to look at Gu Xingyi's well-defined side face, her eyes complex and inexplicable. Little Nai Nai got his mom's answer, even happier, pounced back into Xingyi's arms, two little short hands holding his dad's face, big eyes full of bright light, milky voice. Daddy is so gentle, Nana wants to sing and get into the phone too. With two soft little hands pressed against his face, Gu Xingyi's eyes gradually melted as he similarly cupped his daughter's little face with his two big hands and asked in a soft voice, does Nai Nai also like to sing? Love it. Nana curled her big eyes and answered without hesitation. Gu Xingyi's smile grew even wider. Okay, then daddy teach little Nai Nai to sing, and when Nai Nai learns how to do it, she'll sing it in her cell phone, okay? Little Nai Nai kept nodding her little head, then happily gave Gu Xingyi a hard kiss on the side of his face. 3-0. Gu Xingyi, who had been rewarded, was instantly beaming with joy, and darted back to the side bedroom to take the guitar out under the little one's eyes full of admiration. Back on the couch, Gu Xingyi hugged his guitar and tuned the strings. He turned his head and saw Xia Shuriyao and little Nai Nai both looking at him with unblinking eyes. Gu Xingyi's face reddened for a rare moment, then he stroked the strings of the zither. Today daddy created a children's song that belongs to little Nai Nai, daddy will sing it once for Nai Nai to listen to, and the next time daddy will sing one line, Nai Nai will sing one line after him, okay? Aha! Little Nana nodded cheerfully, her little face filled with anticipation. This song is called Courage Busters. Listen up Nana! After saying that, Gu Xingyi gently swept the strings of the zither, and a light melody then resounded in the living room. Nana's sense of rhythm was surprisingly good, as she bobbed her head and gently swayed to the melody. Gu Xingyi couldn't help but swing his body along with the little one. Looking at this pair of father and daughter who were moving at the same frequency, Xia Yao's eyes gradually softened, a smile quietly surfaced on her face, she actually joined their rhythm. Here we go. As the intro ended, Gu Xingyi was busy informing little Nai Nai with a sound, and then the cheerful song sang out from his mouth. A seed was planted in my heart da 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 da. It's magic that grants little wishes. I hear every kid wants it. Ready? Oh, yeah. Let's explore. The cheerful sound of the guitar and Gu Xingyi's cheerful singing resounded through the living room. The little one was indeed a musical performer, and she kept doing her movements in time with Gu Xingyi's song. Her big eyes lit up as she matched Mo's movements. It was about to sprout Gu Xingyi's heart. Xia Shuriyao's almond eyes completely fell on Gu Xingyi's body when the song started. Those eyes, as if they wanted to see through Gu Xingyi, flickered with a strange light. Gu Xingyi didn't notice, he just smiled and looked at the little one, rocking his body after her movements. The song continues. This seed is about to germinate in my heart. I'm working harder for it every day. Mom and dad say every dream is great. Brothers and sisters charge together. For the first time, the family was all immersed in a sea of joy, and for a moment, even the living room was bright. Gu Xingyi's voice was light this time, like a naughty child frolicking and playing in the room. It was as if the song was going to take away all their worries and leave only joy. Okay go 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 go, okay go 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 we'll stick to our thoughts at the moment. Okay go 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 go, okay go 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 courageous burst. Following the song, Nana clenched her little fists and made a punch you superman gesture. Gu Xingyi also put down the guitar in his hands at this time, and followed the little one's gestures, then stretched out his fingers to gently point on little Nai Nai's pretty nose. Eyes full of favor, voice gentle. Nana, do you know what okay go is? Okay go ah is the courage to go forward. Aha! Little Nai Nai jumped into Gu Xingyi's arms, her two little short hands tightly wrapped around his neck. Daddy, Nana loves this song, Nana loves this daddy. Daddy, don't go back to the way you were before, okay? Little Nai Nai's soft voice rang in her ears, and Gu Xingyi opened her mouth slightly, her eyes suddenly misting with water. He held Nakina tightly in his arms, his face buried deep under Nakina's clothes, smelling her milky scent. Aha! Daddy will never do that again. 
The voice was husky and firm. Xia Shiryao couldn't see Gu Xingyi's expression at this moment. She was long in tears by now, but she had a smile on her face. She knew that the old days would never come back, never again. It was Gu Xingyi who was the first to adjust his emotions back as he placed his guitar by his side and carried little Nai Nai on his lap. Nai Nai, let's learn a song now. I'll sing one line and you sing one line after daddy, okay? Ta-da. Nana agreed very quickly. The rest of the day turned into teaching time for the father-daughter duo, with Gu Xingyi slowly singing one line and little Nai Nai following behind and learning one line. Children's songs really should be sung by children, the lyrics are sung from the mouth of little Nai Nai, much more flavorful than Gu Xingyi, the tender and soft children's voice who listens to who shall not be confused? Perhaps it was because she inherited her parents' excellent musical genes, little Nai Nai learned it with style, and even though she was only singing along for the first time, her tune was not wrong at all, only that the lyrics were still a little off. Little Nai Nai obviously loved to sing, Gu Xingyi patiently taught and she patiently learned, and the entire morning, the living room echoed with the two singing. Seeing the two immersed in learning the song, Xia Shiryao silently made lunch. It's just that what she did, obviously wasn't as good as Gu Xingyi's handiwork, causing little Nai Nai to keep yelling during the meal that she'd always want to eat her dad's cooking in the future. This caused Xia Shiryao to give the little guy a jealous blank look, her heart even more indignant. Little heartless, it's only been two days and you've been bought off. This kind of family atmosphere was very comforting to Gu Xingyi, although the atmosphere was something that could not be seen or touched, Gu Xingyi could feel it clearly. This atmosphere in the house now is what a real family should look like. Before that depressing environment, I'm afraid a dog wouldn't want to spend much time there. Little Nai Nai was a fast learner and sang the song Courageous Outburst in its entirety in just three days. And the little guy sang the best version Gu Xingyi had ever heard. Perhaps it was the reason why there was a western style in the eyes of a loving father, Gu Xingyi felt that little Nai Nai's singing was even much better than the original. Under little Nai Nai's strong request, Gu Xingyi also took a video of little Nai Nai and sent it to Douyin. In the video, little Nana is wearing a pink princess dress with a bow on her head, and her tiny body is swaying to the music, which is adorable. Gu Xingyi's face was all smiles during the shoot, filled with the arrogant expression of this is my daughter I'm proud of. Xia Shiryao, who was watching from the side, inadvertently saw Gu Xingyi's face and almost stifled her laughter until she turned off. It was the first time she had seen him even look like this. In these three days, because of Gu Xingyi's good behavior, Xia Shiryao's relationship with him had eased quite a bit, at least Xia Shiryao would now take the initiative to say a few words to Gu Xingyi. No one expected that the second video from this account of Xingyao would be a children's song, the song was still original and still so good. Fighting Voice HQ, Li found the video in the first place, and after watching the whole video, he gave it the biggest push stream without even thinking about it. Such a cute milk ball, such a nice song, Li had an anti-smile on her face, her whole mouth grinning up to her cheeks. This video is not fire god cannot be forgiven, he is specifically responsible for this account, he can foresee his commission this month is going to rise upward significantly again. Just be happy. Immediately after that, the Du Yo Heat search blew up again. Before the storm of a lifetime had completely settled, the storm of a great outburst of courage had already blown up. The heat for the video came even faster this time. In just one afternoon, the number of likes came to 5 million, and the number of comments was even more outrageous. This also led to the evening, Gu Xingyi had to mute his cell phone once again, sitting on the sofa with little Nai Nai in his arms happily brushing the comment section. The comment section is talented and speaks well, and Gu Xingyi can't stop brushing. If I were to have such a daughter, I wouldn't allow a yellow hair for a hundred miles. This is one of the most liked comments. The father starts with a song about having you in his life, and the daughter starts with a song about her courage, so is it time for the mom to appear in the following video? This was one of the most replied to comments. If I had a daughter like that, I'd eat shit. This was the third of the hot comments, a comment that Gu Xingyi himself had liked. Naturally, the song has caught fire in the doo-wop sound, with countless parents basking in the glow of their own baby girls as they learn to bob their heads and sing about their courageous outbursts like little nine eyes. In an instant, Duin was completely taken over by the munchkins. It also became a night of revelry for the munchkins. The one who started it all, little nine eye, had long been sound asleep in Gu Xingyi's arms. Children's world is always so pure, you are so good to her a little bit, she can throw away all your previous bad, re-accept you. The following day, Saturday. Gu Xingyi had just finished his morning run and wiped his sweat as he pushed open the door to his home, when he saw Xia Shiryao coming out of the bathroom in her newly purchased halter nightgown. She had obviously just finished her shower and was blow-drying her hair, her pretty face was slightly red from the heat, beads of water were dripping from the ends of her hair, and the two straps were hanging loosely on her snow-white shoulders. The nightgown seemed to be a bit too big, and Gu Xingyi could vaguely catch a glimpse of the whiteness inside. This was the second time Gu Xingyi had bumped into her after bathing, and it was a bit awkward. The two of them stared wide-eyed, Gu Xingyi's mind suddenly popped up a poem, Natural Yuan is not, clear water out of hibiscus, which is used at this time Xia Shiryao's body is just right. 
Seeing Gu Xingyi staring intently at herself like a dullard, Xia Shuriya subconsciously covered her chest, her face gradually filling with blood, even her earlobes began to redden. Obviously the two have been married for more than two years, and now this feels as if they have just been together as a young couple. Morning. Good morning. Xia Shuriya tried her best to calm herself down and greeted Gu Xingyi, but her steps towards the bedroom couldn't help but quicken. Morning. Gu Xingyi simply replied back. Xia Shuriao didn't say anything else and ran back to the bedroom as if she was escaping. Gu Xingyi smiled helplessly, just now he was also quite confused, after all, he was a single dog, early in the morning to see such a light, I have to say the impact is still quite big. However, he wouldn't have anything against Xia Shuriao, even though they had children, Gu Xingyi knew his own business. On the one hand, he had always been serious about love, or else he wouldn't have been so old in his previous life and still not been in love. On the second hand, Xia Shuriao surely hated him too much, so how could she be interested in him? You have to be in love to be in love with a man. Gu Xingyi shook his head to get rid of the nonsense in his head and walked into the bathroom humming, bathing, cooking, and waking up little Nana, a three-piece daily routine. When Gu Xingyi pushed open the bedroom door, little Nai Nai was still asleep, her little mouth slightly open, lying on all fours on Gu Xingyi's big bed. After these few days of normal diet and sleep, little Nai Nai's face was much more hydrated, and although she was still so thin, her mental outlook was much better to the naked eye. Gu Xingyi sat on the edge of the bed and watched for a while, then leaned down and gently pinched the little one's nose, Nai Nai, get up and eat rice. The little guy lying on the bed pouted his little lips and slightly opened his eyes, and when he saw Gu Xingyi, the corners of his mouth couldn't stop rising on both sides. Then she slowly reached out her small short hands and hugged Gu Xingyi's neck. Daddy, milked with pettiness. Gu Xingyi smiled and reached out to pick her up, walking out the bedroom door and placing her on the stool in front of the sink. The little one has been washing her face and brushing her teeth by herself for the past two days, with Gu Xingyi holding her up next to her, squeezing toothpaste for her and taking towels and whatnot. Little Nai Nai was very smart, Gu Xingyi only taught her for two days before she learned the skill. Xia Shuriao also walked out of the bedroom door at this time, she had already changed her clothes, a white shirt with small flowers printed on it and a pleated long skirt that she had just bought two days ago. The long hair behind her was also coiled up high and tied into a small pill head, and her youthful and beautiful appearance made people not see that she was the mother of a three-year-old child in the slightest. This appearance of Xia Shuriao made Gu Xingyi's eyes stop lighting up and secretly nodded. That's the kind of energy you should have in your twenties. It's just still too skinny, and it would definitely look better if it was more rounded. Xia Shuriao was still a little nervous in her heart, her cheeks were slightly red, this was her first time dressing up like this at home, she didn't know if it was good. She looked up at Gu Xingyi, who was still taking care of little Nai Nai, and without moving, she walked over to the table to take her seat. Did his eyes seem to light up just now? That means it still looks good, right? Wait, why should one care what he thinks? Xia Shuriao puffed out her cheeks in anger, her chopsticks stirred twice in the bowl without thinking, she was angry at herself for not being able to compete. Gu Xingyi also landed in his seat at this time holding the washed up little Nai Nai. Little Nina sweetly called out to her mommy before picking up her own special little spoon and scooping up the golden millet porridge in front of her. Today, can you go out with us? Ha, huh? I, me, Gu Xingyi, who was enjoying his food with his head down, suddenly heard Xia Shuriao's words, he looked up at Xia Shuriao before pointing at his nose with a puzzled face and asked. Xia Shuriao nodded without looking at him, only her earlobes were already freshly colored. Yeah, Gu Xingyi agreed very quickly. Little Nai Nai changed into a small shirt and skirt of the same style as Xia Shuriao, while Gu Xingyi was dressed in a decent casual suit. A family of three walks down the street from their neighborhood and the turnaround rate soars to 100%. Everyone was attracted by the face value of this family of three, and at the same time they were wondering why they hadn't seen this kind of divine face value neighbors living in the neighborhood once. Little Nai Nai was holding her dad in one hand and her mom in the other, jumping around with a smile on her little face. She never imagined that one day she would be able to go out the door holding both her mom and dad's hands like other little kids. At this moment Nana felt as if her happiness couldn't fit in that big princess house. Although the weather outside was a bit hot, this family of three didn't seem to feel it, and from the corners of their mouths that were curled up it was clear that they were all in a pretty good mood at the moment. On the road, Gu Xingyi stopped a cab, he first carried the little one into the back seat, then very gentlemanly let Xia Shuriao sit on the back seat and closed the door for her. He himself, on the other hand, sat in the passenger seat. They were going to the Yida Plaza in the city center today, and Xia Shuriao had arranged to meet with her former little assistant, Tao Lele, at a milk tea store there. The reason why they had to bring Gu Xingyi and little Nai Nai with them was purely because Tao Lele wanted to meet the little guy, and the little guy had become Gu Xingyi's little tail in the past two days, and was inseparable from him, so Gu Xingyi had purely dipped into the little guy's light. The car was driving down the road, a good 40 minutes from here to the center of town. Little Nai Nai kept wrapping her arms around Xia Shuriao's neck and looked at the scenery flashing by outside. For the little one, this was her first time to go out of town, 
and everything she looked at was new. The driver uncle first marveled at the family's face value, then suddenly felt that the little guy in the back row looked a bit familiar, only he couldn't recall exactly where he'd seen him before, so he spoke to Gu Xingyi from time to time. Gu Xingyi was also very comfortable chatting with the older man, and the atmosphere in the car was not so dull. The car quickly reached its destination, and it wasn't until all three members of the family disappeared from view and the driver's uncle, who was parked on the side of the road waiting for his next order, was bored and clicked on the dujinchi that had dawned on him. That little milk ballerina just now seems to be the munchkin that exploded in popularity on Douyin recently. This discovery immediately let the driver uncle pound at his chest, his own daughter is a big fan of this munchkin, since the video came out, his own daughter watched 10 times a day, the song does not leave the kind of mouth. I can't believe I didn't ask for a group photo just now. If this was known by his daughter, he would definitely lose a few more hairs. Yida Plaza was the busiest place in the center of Jiangqing City, and it wasn't even very far from Tao Lele's work residence. After two years, she was able to see Sister Shioto again, Tao Luolele was in an excited mood, she bought a few cups of milk tea in advance, and sat on her seat, staring at the door of the milk tea store all the time, so to speak. She used to work with Xia Shiryu for a year and a half, the two of them were like sisters, and Xia Shiryu was really good to her, it's just a pity that after that, Xia Shiryu got together with Gu Xingyi. She also did not understand why Shiryu's sister had to be with the man who seemed to be useless, she could not figure out, but also persuaded, when Xia Shiryu seems to have an iron heart, simply do not listen to persuasion. Dorothy's mind was wandering when she suddenly saw that familiar figure walking in through the front of the store holding a bouncing little milk ball. Her eyes lit up and she sprang to her feet, waving her hands. Sister Shioyo, here. When Xia Shiryu heard the voice, she looked up and saw Tao Lele's waving hand, her face couldn't help but overflow with a smile, Lele really hasn't changed, still so lively and cheerful. Walking close to the front, the two eyes in addition to the joy, are a little wet, a long time apart sisters meet, they are a little unable to suppress their feelings. Taluola carefully scrutinized Xia Shiryu, her eyes reddened even more, her little mouth deflated as she pulled Xia Shiryu's hand. Sister Shioyo, you've lost a lot of weight. Is that man treating you badly? Where is he? I'll help you teach him a lesson. Xia Shiryu pursed her lips and shook her head, sitting down with Tao Lele and holding little Nai Nai by her side before speaking. Lele doesn't need to worry, I'm fine now, Gu Xingyi. He's treating me quite well now too. What about you, did you work well after I left? I'm pretty good too, Sister Shioyo, you don't even know how much I've missed you. The two asked each other how they were doing, and little Nina's big eyes dripped with curiosity as she looked across the room at her little aunt. Sisters have not seen for a long time, naturally have a lot of topics, chat for a while, Taluolele will only move the line of sight to the little one, the little one has just been obedient in the side, Taluolele is only concerned about catching up with Xiaoshiriao, has not been careful to look at her, and now take a closer look, the eyes immediately brightened up. Wow! She looks just like Shioyo, simply carved from the same mold. Especially with those big soulful eyes, one look could make one fall in love with this little guy. In particular, little Nai Nai even smiled sweetly at Mamalu at this time and this time Mamalu was instantly captured by the little guy. Wow! Shioyo-san, is this Nanachan? It looks like you. So cute! Tao Lele said while leaving her seat, squatting in front of the little one with a light in her eyes, reaching out to touch the little one's little face. Then her brow furrowed slightly again, the little one was just as skinny as Shioyo-san. Tao Lele is now incomparably angry in her heart. She is sure that that good-for-nothing man is definitely not good for Sister Shiryao and the child. Think of the years, Sister Shiryao was raised round for herself. Where would it be like this now? The more she thought about it, the more angry she became, she now couldn't wait to question that man face to face, so she raised her head and looked at Xia Shiryu. Sister Shioyo, didn't you say that he would come too? Where is everyone? Xia Shiryu could also feel Tao Lele's hostility towards Gu Xingyi, only she didn't know what to say, saying that he had changed? Isn't that equivalent to telling Tao Luo Lele that Gu Xingyi treated her badly in the past? It was the kind of thing she didn't want anyone else to know, especially Dorothy, who was like a sister to her and she could only smile awkwardly. Nina wanted ice cream and he went to get the kid in line for ice cream. Tao Lele naturally saw the look on Xia Shiryu's face, she was instantly more angry in her heart. Her sister Shiryu was originally a gentle and cool nature, and now there was more cowardice in this gentle and cool nature, she could feel it. Afraid of scaring the child, Tao Lele could only snort coldly and return to her seat, while secretly gritting her teeth and wanting to get Gu Xingyi killed. Sister Shioyo. Dorothy was just about to speak, but then suddenly paused, and her eyes gradually sharpened as she looked towards the entrance of the milk tea store. Xia Shiryu froze, the expression on her face became even more awkward, she thought it was Gu Xingyi's arrival that caused Lele's hostility, and just as she wanted to turn around to look, a slightly shrill voice rang out from behind her. Dorothy, you still have time to drink milk tea, have you finished the job I gave you? Lu Qian, you're finished. Today is a day off. Tao Lele blushed hard and stared dead at the person who spoke like a fried kitten. 
Xiaoxiao turned around, only then did she see the visitor, a slender woman, she wore a duck-tongued hat and a mask on her face, a hint of essence flashed through her slender willow eyes, and she unexpectedly raised an eyebrow when she saw herself. It was Lu Qian. Xiao Xiaoxiao froze slightly, the popular young flower who was previously in the same company as herself, also taking the route of a powerhouse singer. Only at that time in the beginning, Lu Qian had been pressed by Xia Shuriao, and when Xia Shuriao was in the company, she had even been called Sister Shuriao with a mouthful of Shuriao. People go away and tea is cold, Xia Shuriao understood this, so she didn't care about it ever. Yo, isn't this Sister Xioyo? Sister Xioyo was not at home to teach her children. What is she doing out looking for Lele? Lu Qian's eyes were smiling, but the words coming out of her mouth were full of mockery. She just came out to go shopping, she didn't expect to meet Tao Luo Lele meeting with Xia Shuriao. Before Xia Shuriao could say anything, the Tao Lele at her side got angry first. Lu Qian, mind your own business. It's not a working day now, so don't be so gloomy here. Sister Shuriao, let's go. There's a mad dog barking here, it'll only affect our mood. After Tao Lele finished speaking, she picked up little Nai Nai and pulled Xia Shuriao's hand to leave. But she didn't want Lu Qian to step in front of them first, her eyes were a bit gloomy. She looked at Xia Shuriao with her eyebrows raised lightly and smiled again. Alas! Sister Shuriao, why are you so thin? Are you having a hard time? If you don't have a good time, tell me and I'll give you a hand, I'm a good person, look at Lele, he's working under me now, isn't it a good life? Don't you think so? Lele? Tao Lele looked at Lu Qian with an iron face, not saying a word. Xia Shuriao violently turned her head and looked at Tao Lele, her eyes full of unbelief. Lele is working under Lu Qian as an odd job man? Didn't she tell herself that she was still working as an assistant for someone else and that her work was going well? You know that doing odd jobs is selling labor, how can the company let Lele do this? Just now is obviously not the time to ask. Xia Shuriao turned her head, looking at Lu Qian's gaze also took on anger. Fists clenched tightly, bullying herself, she endures and passes. Bullying Lele makes it hard for her to accept. Just as she was about to speak, Dorothy was the first to speak up. The contract I signed with the company will expire at the end of the month, I will naturally resign at that time. I just hope that someone, don't climb higher and fall harder. If Sister Shioyo makes a comeback, I'm afraid that someone will wake up scared even in their dreams. Lu Qian froze at her words, she did have some shadows on Xia Shuriao, after all, in the past, Xia Shuriao had suppressed her for a whole year and a half, who knew herself during the time she was there? However, Lu Qian quickly laughed as she looked at Xia Shuriao with a defiant look. A comeback? Ha, huh, that's the funniest joke I've ever heard. Would any company dare to sign such an over-the-top artist with a child? Speaking of children, Xia Shuriao, your child is pretty good looking. You can consider thinking about raising her to become a new generation of popular young flower. Lu Qian spoke with a face full of disdain, even as she obliviously tried to pinch Nai Nai's little face. Stop. Stop it. Get your filthy hands off me. I promise if you touch her, I'll give you nowhere to cry. Two voices sounded at the same time. One was Xia Shuriao's, little Nai Nai was her scales. Even if she had a gentle nature, she would not allow anyone to hurt little Nai Nai a single hair in front of her. For a mother, even the Gushingi of the past hadn't been able to touch little Nai Nai for a moment all of which she had kept the damage to herself. Another muffled male voice came from the entrance of the milk tea store, it was Gushingi, he had a fierce gaze and was holding three ice creams in his hands, bought for the three Xia Shuriao. Gushingi walked quickly to Xia Shuriao, handing the ice cream in his hand to the three of them, then faced Lu Qian, blocking Xia Shuriao and little Nai Nai behind him, his voice cold. Which one are you? Lu Qian was startled and her body involuntarily took two steps backward. The angry Gushingi gave a strong sense of oppression. Only when she fixed her mind and looked closely at Gushingi, she suddenly laughed, so it was this little white boy, useless trash. I wondered who it was, so it's you, what? Do you still want to hit people in public? Gushingi frowned and turned back to look at Xia Shuriao, his eyes carrying a question, obviously inquiring where the shrew Xia Shuriao came from. It's, it's a singer from a previous company, and I didn't expect to meet her here. The angry Gushingi might not be afraid of others, but Xia Shuriao was a bit scared, seeing Gushingi looking at her, she lowered her head slightly. Seeing Xia Shuriao like this, Gu Xingyi's brows frowned even tighter, and he sighed even more in his heart. He didn't question Xia Shuriao anymore and turned his head to stare condescendingly at Lu Qian. Singer? I'm sorry, I haven't heard of you and I don't know you, all I know is that you're in our way right now, so please get out of the way. Gu Xingyi said seriously, his words couldn't pick a single fault, only in Lu Qian's ears, it was so harsh, so her voice became even more shrill. Ha! Huh? Being a man is about seeing your own weight. You think I don't know, you flattered Gao Chang and Su Bin in the flower boys every day, bought them drinks every day, and now you're here pretending to be a big tail wolf with me. Gao Chang? Su Bin? Gu Xingyi thought carefully about these two names and finally remembered who these two were. The members of the boy band that the original owner was in before, the original owner wanted to make a comeback after he retired from the circle, he did often buy them drinks and flattered them, just that they didn't even give a damn about him. 
However, this was all done by Gu Xingyi before. What does it have to do with me Gu Xingyi? I'm not familiar with the duo you mentioned either. Thanks. Good dogs don't get in the way. If you keep pestering me like this, don't blame me for calling security. Yida Plaza, as the largest commercial plaza in Jiangcheng City, would certainly not allow anyone to find trouble here. Lu Qian was choked, she cut a vicious glance at Gu Xingyi, and in her heart, she kept cursing him, but she still obediently let go of her body. Gu Xingyi pulled up Xia Shuriao behind him, and signaled Tao Lele to follow, heading straight outside. Just as she brushed past Lu Qian, Lu Qian turned to Xia Shuriao but then suddenly opened her mouth. Alas, it's a pity that someone can't sing anymore. Xia Shuriao, my new song will be released at the end of this month in Huaino. Ha ha, after saying that Lu Qian actually laughed happily. How can you Xia Shuriao compare with me? Lu Qian's bitchy voice echoed in the ears of several people. Tao Lele couldn't wait to rush up and slap her right now, knowing that Sister Shuriao likes to sing and now she can't, for her to say that is just murderous. Gu Xingyi's footsteps also lurched for it, and he looked deeply at Lu Qian before continuing to walk out with an expressionless face. Xia Shuriao didn't say anything, just gently pursed her lips. However, at this time a tender childish voice suddenly rang out, clear and firm. Mommy sings better than you. You're a bad aunt. It was little Nina, waving her little hands, her mouth pouting, her face full of angry little expressions. Mom was supposed to sing beautifully. Nina had heard it. When mommy sang lullabies to herself, she sang them better than daddy ever did. The crowd was stunned, no one expected the little one to speak up for his mom at this point. Gu Xingyi only froze for a second, then rubbed the little one's head with a smile on his face. Awesome. It's true that she's her own daughter. Much more powerful than her mom's aggravated ass. Gu Xingyi had some gas in his heart, but as soon as Nai Nai made a sound, the gas in his heart was immediately thrown out of the sky, and his eyes and heart were full of this little guy. Ignoring Lu Qian's reaction, the several people left this place of wrongdoing. When it was noon, a group of three people with a little munchkin came to a restaurant. Gu Xingyi held the child in his arms and took the lead in the waiter's welcome. The two of them, Xia Shuriao and Tao Lele, had been chatting in the back. Tao Luolo obviously didn't like Gu Xingyi, and along the way, she turned her nose not her nose and her eyes not her eyes at him, and would roll her eyes at him if nothing else. If Gu Xingyi hadn't behaved quite well just now, she wouldn't even want to care about this man. Several people were seated, Gu Xingyi handed the menu to Xia Shuriao and Tao Lele, and after they simply ordered a few dishes, Gu Xingyi ordered some of Little Nai Nai's favorite dishes before returning the menu to the waiter. Little Nai Nai was still a bit scared of being a baby, and although she had opened up quite a bit over the past few days and had gotten much closer to Gu Xingyi, she still behaved very well when facing outsiders. This was quite similar to Xia Shuriao's nature, but somewhat different. The little one obviously had a more lively personality, a child's nature is to love to play and want to communicate with others, so her eyes treated all these unfamiliar people and things with curiosity and inquiry. It's just that her experiences two years earlier have made her more understanding than the average child, and it's heartbreaking to see how much she understands. This situation Gu Xingyi knew, but there was nothing he could do about it. The little one still lacked self-confidence and needed more time to let her recover her nature. It's a long way to go. Xia Shuriya was still chatting with Tao Lele, before she had been walking on the road. There were some things she was worried about in her heart but didn't ask. Now that she finally sat down and there were no outsiders around, she pulled Tao Lele's hand and finally asked the question she had been wanting to ask. Lele, how come you're doing odd jobs for Lu Qian? Also, where's Sister Yun? What is she doing now? Sister Yun was Xia Shuriya's previous agent, almost 40 years old and had always treated her very well, like a daughter. Previously when Sister Yun was around work matters had always been held by Sister Yun to help her, and had dealt with a lot of trouble for Xia Shuriya, such as attending certain receptions and whatnot, all of which Sister Yun had forcefully refused for her. Especially when Xia Shuriya and Gu Xingyi fell in love, Sister Yun had warned Xia Shuriya many times that she was not allowed to fall in love with him, but unfortunately, only that time Xia Shuriya didn't listen to her, and after that, she was even more dissuaded from getting married to Gu Xingyi. I don't know how many times Yun was angry about it, but in the end, she had no choice but to agree. Hearing Xia Shuriao's question, Tao Lele's complexion could not hide her downcast. After you left, Sister Yun was sacked not long after, she looked for a job for a long time but couldn't find one, and then her mother even got sick and was hospitalized, she needed to be in the hospital all the time to take care of her mother, so she just looked for a job as a nanny. Xia Shuriao did not think that Jin's sister was now reduced to such a state, she was in a trance in front of her eyes, and she could vaguely see the dry look of Yun's sister when she was doing things at that time. Both of them fell silent, Xia Shuriao pursed her lips, she knew that she was to blame for all of this, if it wasn't for her own willfulness, Sister Yun wouldn't be like this. She has blocked so many storms for herself, defied the company's orders for herself so many times, when she had money on the way the company naturally would not say anything, after she patted her ass and said she was retiring, it can be imagined what kind of treatment Sister Yun will encounter. The atmosphere was a bit dull. After talking about Sister Yun, Xia Shuriao, and Tao Luolele didn't even have much appetite for dinner, 
After eating hastily, Taluolele talked with Xiaoshuria for a while, and then left in a hurry. Xiaoshuria's mood had been very low. Originally, the family had arranged to accompany Little Nai Nai to the amusement park in the afternoon, but she was now not even in the mood to play. Gu Xingyi could naturally feel her mood, and he wanted to say something, but in the end, he didn't. In fact, he didn't understand why Xiaoshuria wanted to marry herself in the first place as if she had been drugged. The original owner didn't know, and he knew even less. Xiaoshuria wanted to go home, she wanted to be alone. Only when she saw little Nine Eyes expectant eyes, she was a little too impatient. So as not to disappoint Nana, the family ended up at the amusement park. I don't know if it was because it was a Saturday, but the entrance to the amusement park was filled with a steady stream of visitors. The little one is very happy. She is the first time to come to the amusement park. Pulling Gu Xingyi's hand is going to rush in. Tugging cannot drag the kind. Xiao Shiryao also barely managed to raise her spirits at this time. She didn't want to be sad when Nai Nai recalled her first trip to the amusement park later on. The amusement park here adult ticket 200A, children half price, some of the entertainment inside the ticket can be free to experience, it is quite cost effective. After checking the tickets, the family got inside the amusement park without any problems. Little Nai Nai, holding her dad with one hand and waving the ticket in her hand, was grinning like a little fool as she looked at all the amusements ahead of her. Being held by little Nana all the time, the family was the first to experience the merry-go-round. With the melodious sound of music, the lifelike white pony rose and fell up and down, and little Nai Nai was secured in Gu Xingyi's arms, with silver bell laughter ringing out of her mouth from time to time. Xia Shiryao also temporarily put down the worries in her heart and sat on the other small wooden horse beside them, holding little Nai Nai's hand and teasing little Nai Nai happily from time to time. Gu Xingyi protected little Nai Nai, and a rare cheerful smile appeared on his face, this moment should be indulged in play, those bad things should not be brought into the sea of joy. The family of three complimented each other and became the envy of others. Especially some of the young couples, when they saw this family of three, the look in their eyes obviously carried expectations, they were looking forward to getting married and having children in the future, and they could also be like this family. After the merry-go-round, Gu Xingyi and Xia Shiryao took little Nai Nai to play snail secret service, sitting on a snail warship with everyone else, shooting water columns with a snail gun to shoot the legions of insects. Whenever those insects are shot, they immediately make their unique cheerful sounds and quirky sound effects. This kept little Nai Nai entertained, from time to time learning the animal's cries and calling out to her mom and dad to shoot her designated animals. After the family played a few more projects, the sky is also unknowingly dark, the playground is also lit up with colorful lights, in the darkness of the night, beautiful, so that people like being in a fairy tale world. At this moment, Gu Xingyi was taking little Nai Nai on a flying chair, slowly ascending into the air, the seven colored lights lingering around them, a castle that would only appear in a fairy tale slowly appeared in front of their eyes. The appearance of this castle instantly caught little Nai Nai's gaze, and she gazed at it with unblinking eyes, her big eyes filled with excitement. Maybe she's also wondering if she'll be able to live in a castle one day, like a princess. The last program is the Ferris wheel, which can be shared by two people in one cabin or three people in one cabin. By the time Gu Xingyi held little Nai Nai and sat inside with Xia Shiryu with the door open, little Nai Nai had already fallen asleep in Gu Xingyi's arms. After playing all afternoon, and after seeing the castle, the little one's spirits finally ran out, and at that moment she was dreaming of some beautiful dream, with a light smile on her face. If it wasn't for the fireworks show, Gu Xingyi and Xia Shiryu would have taken the little one home by now. The ferris wheel slowly rises, the ground flashes with colorful light of the building gradually shrinks, Gu Xingyi does not know is that Xia Shiryu is also the first time to play in the amusement park, but also the first time to sit on the ferris wheel. One of her almond eyes looked out of the cockpit curiously, the inside of her eyes sparkling. She looked out the window when Gu Xingyi looked at her. Perhaps sensing Gu Xingyi's gaze, her earlobe slowly reddened, and she poutingly blanked Gu Xingyi. It was the first time Gu Xingyi had seen this kind of gaze, and was a bit overwhelmed. The light that came with the ferris wheel shone on her thin face, and Gu Xingyi suddenly felt a little shaky yet. The ferris wheel was still slowly rising, Gu Xingyi tightened the little Nai Nai in his arms, and turned his eyes to look outside with some inexplicable meaning in his eyes. There were already a number of people down there with fluorescent lights and others with brilliant fireworks shaking as they all looked up at the sky. Next moment. For places inside the castle released fireworks into the air at the same time almost instantly, and the sky instantly blossomed with colorful fireworks. At this moment when the fireworks bloomed, Gu Xingyi clearly saw that Xia Shiryao's face revealed a smile that was pouring out of her heart. Gu Xingyi was a bit dumbfounded. The ferris wheel slowly rose to its highest point at this time, the fireworks became clearer, and Xia Shiryao's pretty face became more charming. You don't have to be as scared as you were before. Amidst the sound of fireworks, Gu Xingyi's voice was a bit soft, so Xia Shiryao didn't hear it. She turned her face to look at him with a question. Hmm. Gu Xingyi didn't look at her and continued to look at the gorgeous fireworks in the air. You're too gentle, that's not good, you'll get bullied. You don't have to be scared like you used to be, 
I know it, you want to sing, and I know it, you have a lot of things you want to do, so don't worry about going, I've got Nana to take care of. When Xiao Shiryao didn't respond, Gu Xingyi turned his face and saw that there were already two lines of crystals on her face. She pursed her lips and looked at herself with unblinking eyes, the intense aggression and complexity in her eyes looked like it was going to drown Gu Xingyi. Gu Xingyi tensed up at once, he didn't understand, how did he suddenly cry in a good reason? Who are you? Xiao Shiryao had been staring closely at Gu Xingyi, those almond eyes were already misting with water, her crisp voice was not loud, but it fell so loudly in Gu Xingyi's heart. Gu Xingyi was silent. The air grew silent, as if even the sound of the fireworks had disappeared, and it was only after a long time that Gu Xingyi smiled gently at her. Then he opened his mouth, his voice suddenly a little hoarse. I'm Gu Xingyi. Xiao Shiryao continued to look at Gu Xingyi, Gu Xingyi's smile made her feel like her heartbeat suddenly went haywire, like a deer in headlights. His answer was even more unexpected, she sniffled and looked at Gu Xingyi's clear to glowing eyes, her tears suddenly falling faster. She hugged her legs and buried her head in a soft sob before speaking. Yeah, you're Gu Xingyi, who else could you be if not him? Let me tell you a story, a very cheesy one. There used to be a little girl in the orphanage who was very timid, but there was always a brother in the orphanage who was a year older than her to protect her, and one day she was bullied by a group of older boys, and that brother held her back, never letting her get hurt a bit. At that time, in her eyes, that brother, who was a year older than her, was her heaven, but after that, he disappeared, until later, when she grew up and saw that brother again, and married him as she wished. It was a very cheesy story, but Gu Xingyi was a bit dumbfounded after hearing it, and he finally understood something now. Xia Shi Yao raised her head, her eyes misty with tears, her whole person looked so lonely and pitiful. She finally spills the beans on her heartfelt secret, no one understands her stubbornness, everyone is unworthy of her, and she's the only one who is convinced she's worth it. But it turned out to be so bad, and she had regretted it countless times until Gu Xingyi appeared now. She asks who he is, and he says he's Gu Xingyi, and that's enough. Gu Xingyi lowered his head and rubbed little Nine Eyes hair, the little guy was not honest and squeezed into his arms again, and when Gu Xingyi raised his head again to look at Xia Shiryao, the softness in his eyes overflowed. He could suddenly understand Xia Shiryao's feelings. Seeing the tenderness and love in Gu Xingyi's eyes, Xia Shiryao couldn't hold back any longer. She directly jumped into Gu Xingyi's arms and snatched the position in her arms with little Nai Nai, sobbing in a small voice. Nana was awakened and watched with confused eyes in disbelief as her mom took her place. The little guy just froze for a moment, then joyfully wrapped one arm around his dad and the other around his mom, bearing two kisses on their cheeks. Today was the best day of Nana's life. Gu Xingyi looked at the big and small beauties in his arms and was dumbfounded. At the moment he was like a big winner in life with a naive expression on his face. He raised his hand and gently patted Xia Shiryao's back, and kissed Nai Nai's little face again, looking at the bright fireworks outside, his heart was unusually relaxed. Life's trajectory is moving in a good direction, and that's enough. Some plans, though, are going to have to make some changes. The fireworks gradually came to an end and the ferris will slowly descend it to the ground. Xia Shiryao held little Nai Nai, walking in front, little Nai Nai fell asleep again, little children have so much energy, today the day is used up. Gu Xingyi followed behind, looking at the fit and agile Xia Shiryao, rubbing his nose, after coming down from the ferris wheel, Xia Shiryao left from his arms, the whole person seemed to have returned to her previous indifferent attitude towards him in an instant. Could the one who just jumped into his arms and cried be a ghost? Xia Shiryao was so nervous in her heart that even her hand holding little Nai Nai was tight, she felt her earlobes and cheeks getting a little hot. Just now she had actually stayed in Gu Xingyi's arms for so long, and rubbed herself in his arms like a little girl. It's killing me! Gu Xingyi must be secretly laughing at herself in her heart. She had just seen it when she came out of the ferris wheel. Saw the hidden smile on that man's face. Thinking of this, Xia Shiryao couldn't help but step even more sharply, as if she was racing. Gu Xingyi didn't know why this woman was suddenly so energetic, he had to jog to keep up with her. Until they were out of the amusement park skate, seeing that Xia Shiryao still had no intention of stopping, Gu Xingyi had to call out to stop her. Hey, is it hard for you to walk home? Just take a cab here. Only then did Xia Shiryao stop, standing on the side of the road but not looking at him. She felt more than ever that the man must be laughing at her again back there. Abominable. More disgrace. Too many people coming home from the amusement park in the evening. After waiting for a long time, Gu Xingyi finally got a cab, which gave Gu Xingyi the idea of buying a car for the first time. Gu Xingyi was worried that Xia Shiryao had been holding the child and was tired, and had carried Nai Nai into his arms early. At this time he was carefully sitting in the back row, the Nai Nai in his arms was still sleeping very sweetly. Xia Shiryao also sat at the back, because Gu Xingyi was holding little Nai Nai, the two of them were a little close to each other, Xia Shiryao glanced at Gu Xingyi beside her, thinking about what happened this evening, her pretty face was a little hot again. Gu Xingyi, however, yawned at that moment, startling her, and she hurriedly turned her head to the other side, pretending to be looking out the window. 
The scenery outside the window changed rapidly, without realizing it, the car drove out of the city center and came to the old town. Gushingi looked at the time, 9.30 p.m. Dinner hadn't been eaten yet, and judging by the way the little one was sleeping, dinner shouldn't be eaten. Gushingi was also a bit sleepy, if they were at home, they would have fallen asleep at this time. Thinking of this Gushingi suddenly laughed a little, himself and Xia Shuryao are not at all like young people in their 20s, nowadays there are young people who don't stay up all night? They're both rather like middle-aged people who go to bed early and get up early. The cab stopped smoothly at the entrance of the neighborhood, Gushingi paid the fare, hugged Nai Nai and stepped out of the car gently, and returned home with Xia Shuryao accompanied by the night. The house was still quiet under the warm orange light, only this time it was much different than before. Gushingi carried Nai Nai back to her room and settled down, when she came out Xia Shuryao was already in the bathroom washing up, Gushingi didn't stop and walk Gushingi didn't stop and walk straight into the kitchen. She hadn't eaten much down at lunch today, so she must be hungry now. Gushingi thought this and rummaged around in the refrigerator for a bit before finally deciding to keep it simple and just make some noodles. Xia Shuryao was indeed very hungry, she was not in the mood to eat at noon, she played for so long in the afternoon, and cried at night, now she was already hungry, she just simply washed up and thought of coming out to make something to eat. Pushing open the bathroom door, Xia Shuryao saw that Gu Xingyi was already busy in the kitchen. Xia Shuryao's heart instantly warmed, she walked to the sofa and sat down as if nothing had happened, but her eyes kept following the slender back in the kitchen. Oddly good looking. Xia Shuryao suddenly thought this in her heart, and the next moment she covered her face, not daring to look again. What's wrong with myself today? Obviously you're a mom. Why are you still acting like a young girl who's pining for spring, Xia Shuryao? You're really getting more and more humiliated. Dinner. When Gu Xingyi brought out the finished noodles, he saw her on the couch all twisted up into a ball of noodles. He didn't think much of it, just a soft greeting. Hearing Gu Xingyi's voice, Xia Shuryao's body visibly tensed for a moment, then she didn't move to remove the hand covering her face and nodded her head as she walked to the dining table. Thanks. Her pretty face was slightly red, but she looked down and dried her meal as if nothing had happened. Xia Shuryao ate quickly, for the first time she knew that simple and simple noodles could be made so delicious. Half a bowl of noodles with two fried eggs was quickly swallowed into her stomach, Gu Xingyi smiled slightly at the sight and placed another fried egg from his bowl into hers. Xia Shuryao, who was taking a big swirling mouthful of rice, froze, she didn't dare to raise her head to look at him, only her cheeks became even more flushed. Although she couldn't help herself from jumping into Gu Xingyi's arms before, she was still a bit uncomfortable with the two of them acting in such an intimate manner now that she had reacted. I ate a lot for lunch, you eat more. Gu Xingyi's voice came, Xia Shuryao nodded her head imperceptibly and gave a hum sound, her voice as thin as a mosquito fly. In just a moment, Xia Shuryao shivered all the noodles in the bowl, not even the soup was left, she put down the chopsticks in her hand and didn't get up, she just sat quietly on the chair. It wasn't until Gu Xingyi finished eating and stood up to prepare to clean up the dishes that she got up in a bit of a panic and grabbed the dishes on the table first. I'll clean it up. The voice was still soft, but nice, and it turned out she had been waiting all along. Gu Xingyi didn't argue with her, they were all family, he didn't feel the need to be so polite. When Gu Xingyi comfortably came out of the hot bath, Xia Shuryao had already gone back to the bedroom, Gu Xingyi turned off the living room lights and also walked quickly towards the bedroom. Today was the latest he had ever slept in this world, all he wanted to do now was sleep, he had a morning run tomorrow and his dog's life depended on it. Lightly and quietly getting into bed, Gu Xingyi quickly entered dreamland. In contrast to Gu Xingyi's sound sleep, Xia Shuryao was tossing and turning a bit, as she lay on the bed, and as soon as she closed her eyes, her mind unconsciously floated back to today's scene at the amusement park. Xia Shuryao somewhat exasperatedly pulled over the quilt and covered her face, wanting to force herself to fall asleep, but her constantly blinking eyelashes were constantly displaying how unsettled her heart was at the moment. It wasn't until the sky was slightly lightened that Xia Shuryao finally couldn't resist her sleepiness and fell into a deep sleep. 6 A. M. Early risers start a new day's journey, Gu Xingyi woke up on time as usual, morning jogging, washing, cooking and shouting at little Nai Nai to get up a dragon end, but did not see Xia Shuryao come out of the room. Looking at the closed door of the master bedroom, Gu Xingyi scratched his head, it seemed that he did come back a little late last night, and she actually slept until now. Gu Xingyi didn't have the idea to call her either, and it would be good to leave her a breakfast. After the meal, Gu Xingyi washed and put away the used dishes, and when he came out of the kitchen, he saw little Nai Nai singing a children's song and playing a puzzle game. Seeing her father, the corners of little Nai Nai's mouth grinned, revealing a mouthful of small white teeth as she smiled sweetly at Gu Xingyi. Gu Xingyi immediately came to her side and rubbed her little head. Nana, sing na. Aha. Daddy, by the way, daddy, I'll tell you secretly, mommy sings beautifully, she sings me a lullaby every night. Little Nai Nai was rubbed on her head by her big hands and suddenly tilted her little face up and said mysteriously to Gu Xingyi. So mommy sings better than daddy? Gu Xingyi smiled and sent out a soul torture question. Immediately, little Nana was in a tangle, 
Her little brows furrowed in pouting as if she was considering whether or not to strike her father. Gu Xingyi could see the little one's difficulty and smiled to ease her frown away. Ha 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 daddy knows that mommy definitely sings better than daddy. It was only then that little Nai Nai regained her joyful smile, and she took Gu Xingyi by the small hand and shook him from side to side, encouragingly. Daddy sings beautifully too. Gu Xingyi nodded and suddenly asked again, then you know that mommy still wants to sing? The little guy tilted his little face up and fought hard, then said seriously, Mommy did say when she was asleep, singing, like what da? Gu Xingyi nodded and rubbed the little one's head again to let her play by herself first. Like Xia Shuriao's gentle character, she would definitely never take the initiative to tell herself that she wanted to sing, right? Nana obeyed and played the game alone. Xia Shuriao also got up at this time, her pretty face slightly red as she walked through the living room to the bathroom to wash up. You, want to keep singing? Hearing Gu Xingyi's voice, Xia Shuriao froze slightly, not reacting for half a day. Gu Xingyi leaned against the bathroom doorframe with his cell phone, quietly waiting for her answer. It took a moment for her soft voice to ring in his ears. Think. There was only one word, without too much of an answer, in Xia Shuriao's heart. The current day was already a life she didn't dare to imagine in these two years. Singing, on the other hand, is a very distant dream that can only be buried in the heart. Gu Xingyi didn't ask again, just nodded, and then took his cell phone back to the side bedroom and opened the Douyin background private messages to rummage around. His backstage private messages had long since exploded, and since the first video was posted, he had only roughly swiped through it, and never watched the back, and now it was difficult to rummage through it again, but Gu Xingyi still silently scratched the screen, patiently filtering through it one by one. Finally, his eyes steeply lit up, and then he clicked on one of the private messages. Looking at the contents of the private message, Gu Xingyi unconsciously tapped his finger on the screen, making certain considerations. Originally, his original intention of posting the video was only to make money, and when he made enough money to settle Nai Nai and Xia Shuriao down, he would then retire after his success. But after the last few days together, and especially after what happened yesterday, he changed his mind. The content of this private message was simple, SoundC Entertainment invites you to join our team, with your musical talent, we will make you a super tier 1 superstar in the fastest time possible. At the end of the private message is the contact number for Sound and C Entertainment. The three companies, Sound C Entertainment, Tianmei Entertainment, and Shangshu Entertainment, were the three giants of China's entertainment companies, and this world's Douyin platform was a subsidiary of Sound C Entertainment. With two videos and two original songs in a row by himself, both on the Douyin platform, it wasn't unreasonable that Sound C Entertainment would send an invitation to him. After just a moment's thought, Gu Xingyi didn't hesitate any longer as he typed in the contact number for Sound and C Entertainment and dialed it. The phone was answered after only a few rings, and a royal voice came from the receiver. Hello, hello, who is this? Hello, my Dujinchi account name is, Xingyao. I received a private message with an offer from your company, is it convenient to chat now? The moment. Far away in the magic city, at the Douyin headquarters. Yang Changlin received the call, her expression slightly froze, she didn't expect that this creator named Xingya would actually call her. After all, a few days had passed since she had sent a private message inviting the other party, and she had assumed that the other party would not be involved in the entertainment industry. Hello? Still there? The nice male voice on the other end of the phone came, Yang Changlin steeply reacted, and then she couldn't stop a joyful color from surfacing on her face. It was important to realize that she was not only the director of Doyen's operations department, but also the Vice Minister of Human Resources and Administration for Soundsea Entertainment. As the director of Douyin, she is able to reach out and scout for new talent more quickly. It's not. Starry Yao called herself. You know to say the hottest thing on the internet these days is undoubtedly this mysterious guy. Hello, Mr. Xing Yao, I'm Yang Chang Lin, the Vice Minister of Human Resources and Administration Department of Soundsea Entertainment. I have some time now. May I ask if you're joining us at Soundsea Entertainment? Yang Chang Lin was secretly happy in his heart but still quickly replied. However, Gu Xingyi's reply caused Yang Chang Lin to be a little stunned again. Hello, Minister Yang, I'm sorry, I don't have any thoughts of getting involved in the entertainment industry for the time being, but I'd like to recommend a singer to you, I wonder if your company has the will to do so? What? I can't believe it's not him? He's just here for a recommendation? Yang Chang Lin couldn't help but be a little disappointed and shook her head with a bitter smile, what she wanted was Xing Yao, the guy who brought his own fame and two songs that were on fire all over the internet. Mister. Xing Yao, it's like this, I'm only the vice minister, if it's you who wants to come, with your fame, I can completely make my own decision, but if it's someone else, I'm afraid I don't have the right to directly agree to you. Even though there was some reluctance in his heart, Yang Changlin still explains seriously to Gu Xingyi. I can give you a guarantee, she is a very powerful singer, moreover, I will write songs for her, in addition to your company in the future if there is a need for a song, I can be the musician of your sound and see entertainment, 
but there are certainly conditions, do not what peoples come to find me to write songs, I do not see I do I not to write. If you agree, we can talk about the specifics, what do you think? On the other end of the phone, Gu Xingyi spoke in a light tone, and Yang Changlin gradually fell silent, at the moment her mind was spinning rapidly, pondering the benefits here. After a moment, Yang Changlin admitted that her heart was moved. However, the company is not her own, she still has to reflect it to the next level. Mr. Xingyao, this isn't something I can decide alone, is this okay? I'll discuss it with the company on my side and give you an answer, whether it's a success or not, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Good, then I look forward to your reply. The phone hung up, Yang Changlin didn't hesitate any longer, she picked up her cell phone and pushed the door with hurried steps. Gu Xingyi sighed, he put down the phone, thought for a moment, or decided to wait for the other side of the reply, after all, the sound of the sea entertainment is one of the three giants of China, the start is higher than other companies, if not, he will find a way to find the next one. Sort of completing a matter of the heart, Gu Xingyi breathed a sigh of relief and opened the door to his room to walk out from the side bedroom. Little Nina was still playing with her toys in a well-behaved manner, muttering something from time to time. Xia Yao had already washed up and was sitting at the dining table eating her meal, when she heard the door open, she raised her head and glanced at Gu Xingyi, and then pretended to eat with her head down as if nothing had happened. Only the shyness on her face fell right into Gu Xingyi's eyes, as well as those panda eyes. Hell, I don't know what the hell she was thinking last night that she lost sleep. Gu Xingyi was even more confused, he didn't know what she was shy about, he didn't talk to Xia Yao about the entertainment company, something that wasn't on the table yet, it was useless to talk about it now. Without looking at her again, Gu Xingyi continued to sit back on the sofa to accompany little Nai Nai. What Gu Xingyi didn't expect was that the little one could completely count from 1 to 10, knowing that before yesterday, she would forget one or two numbers in between. After being out all day yesterday, it's amazing that little Nana can do this after only playing on her own for a short while today. This discovery made Gu Xingyi happy and proud that it only took him about a week to make little Nai Nai succeed in being indistinguishable from other three-year-olds. Could it be that he was born suitable to be a father? Gu Xingyi thought proudly. Just as Gu Xingyi fell into self-expansion, the door of the room was suddenly knocked at this time. Gu Xingyi who heard the ringing sound looked towards Xia Shuryao in confusion, only to find that Xia Shuryao looked towards herself with the same puzzled face. This made Gu Xingyi even more puzzled. He and Xia Shuryao were both orphans. No one had been a guest in their own home for 10,000 years. Who could this be? The door to the room continued to slam and grew louder and louder, and it was obvious that the person outside was not getting a response for a moment and was pushing harder. Gu Xingyi frowned, this person is so rude, just for a moment no one answered with so much force? Gu Xingyi didn't wait any longer, and with a slightly cold face, he got up and walked quickly towards the gate. But I didn't want the people outside to suddenly shout at that moment. Gu, open the door. I know you're home. I'm your brother Gao. Didn't you send us messages every day to buy us drinks? Look, we're here. And me, Yu Su, open the door. Hearing these two bitchy whooshing voices, Gu Xingyi's face completely darkened. Xia Shuryao even changed her face, frowning with a disgusted look at the door of the room. Little Nai Nai had long put down her toys and ran into Xia Shuryao's arms. The violent knocking on the door startled her. Gu Xingyi happened to see this scene when he turned his head, and his face became even darker, even with a silky murderous aura. What the hell? After so many days of coaxing her little baby to get better, these two dare to scare her like this. Unforgivable. Gu Xingyi opened the door, and what met his eyes was none other than Gao Chang and Su Bin from the boys' group he was in before with derisive smiles on their faces as they tried to look past Gu Xingyi into the house. However, he didn't want the view inside the house to be blocked by Gu Xingyi. Yo, Xiao Gu, why did you open the door so late? Are you not welcoming us? Seeing their faces, Gu Xingyi really wanted to shove a fist in his face. Both of them were older than Gu Xingyi, but when they used to be combined together, on weekdays these two called out to each other as brother Gu. It's all because the original body was the face of the previous boy group, and it was the original body that was the hottest in the beginning that drove this boy group to debut. When Gu Xingyi and Xia Shuryao were in love, they were all incredibly envious, but when the two later retired from the circle and became obscure, their faces changed, and they were extremely mocking with a mouthful of Xiao Gu. It's hilarious that such a person's original body would even think of browbeating them. Gu Xingyi wasn't the big fool that the original body was, so he naturally wouldn't give the two of them a good face. Why do you ask if you know? You two are not welcome here. Go back where you came from. Gu Xingyi was angry at the sight of these two, he narrowed his eyes, his face cold, a look of rejection. Gao Chang on the right, however, licked his chops and stepped forward. Gu is in a bad mood today? Didn't you always want to see us before? Why do you have such an attitude when we're here? Oh, I see. Have you not been drinking? Come on, brother Gao will drink with you. If Gu Xingyi had been before, he would have happily welcomed a few people in for a drink. But he wasn't, Gu Xingyi closed the door in passing, sidestepping Gao Chang's outstretched hand his expression still cold. 
I quit drinking, and I won't drink again, and I don't want to see you guys again, so don't ever come back to me. Gao Cheng's footsteps as he went forward were lurched, and he fixed his eyes on Gu Xingyi, then turned his head to look at Su Bin, and both of them laughed. Bin, did I hear him right? He said he didn't want to see us? Gao Cheng pulled out his ears and pretended to look incredulous. Su Bin similarly smiled, Brother Gao, you heard it right, people are giving an expulsion order, awesome ah. Sister Qian really wasn't wrong, someone's got a brain problem and still thinks he's as honorable as he used to be. Gao Cheng instantly changed his face and turned cold. What? Get in your face? Forget how you begged us before? Gu Xingyi looked at the clownish two in front of her and was filled with speechlessness. They're doing a Sichuan opera? And they're singing in unison? It's a waste of talent to be idle boys. They should be in comedy. Gu Xingyi subconsciously turned his head to look at the closed door of the room, thinking that Nai Nai and Xia Shuriya were still in the house, and that quarreling here would scare both mother and daughter. He raised his hand and slapped Gao Cheng's shoulder, waving his hand in a repellent gesture. Come on, we'll talk about it outside. After saying that, he didn't wait for the Gao Chung duo to react, pulling one of them with one hand and heading outside. When Gao Cheng and Su Bin reacted, they wanted to break away from Gu Xingyi's hand, but they found that his strength was surprisingly large, and they couldn't break free from his grip. All the way to the outside of the floor, on the cell aisle, Gu Xingyi let go of them. Go back where you came from, I don't want to say it a second time. Gao Chang and Su Bin's faces had turned red, they had made a promise with Sister Qian, they didn't expect to be defeated, but just now Gu Xingyi's strength scared them, they were a little afraid to move for a moment. Don't you want to know what we're here for? After Gao Cheng finished speaking, Su Bin seemed to be afraid that Gu Xingyi would refuse again, and busily followed Gao Cheng's words, we're here to invite you back to the mail group. Haven't you always wanted to come back? Oh, Gu Xingyi squinted at them, wanting to hear what dirty water they were holding back. When Gao Cheng and Su Bin saw that Gu Xingyi seemed to be somewhat moved, the two of them glanced at each other with a hint of smugness in their eyes. It was as if the look said, see, he's still not heartbroken when it comes to this. Gao Chang reverted back to his previous haughty appearance, looking at Gu Xingyi with disdain and said, Haven't you always wanted to come back? You also said that it was Xia Shuriya who ruined your future, now we can help you come back, but, you have to divorce Xia Shuriyao. How about that? Simple, right? Gu Xingyi still squinted, were these two people treating themselves as breaks? Finished? Finish up and get lost. It's bad luck to see you too, I'm going to throw up my breakfast. Gu Xingyi, don't you give your face away, you're the ones who give a shit. Gu Xingyi didn't wimp out at all and directly disliked back. These two goods across the street had been soaking in wine and meat pools and forests for years, while he was obviously much better after a week of exercise, and he didn't know if it was because of the crossing over, but he felt that his strength was greater than that of his previous life. Looking at the two men's red faces looking like they wanted to move but didn't dare to, Gu Xingyi reached out and took the initiative to pat Gao Cheng's shoulder, startling him. I know why you guys came, go back and tell your master to keep her away from touching Xia Shuriya, or else. Oh. After Gu Xingyi finished speaking, he ignored the two douchebags and turned around to walk back. Looking at Gu Xingyi's back as he left, Gao Chang and Su Bin's faces were green and red, their eyes staring at him dead on. Originally thought a piece of cake, I did not expect to do a bad job, but the two of them have received benefits. Su Bin was still a bit reluctant. Gao, just let him go? Gao Chang bared his teeth and rubbed his shoulder that was hurt by Gu Xingyi's slap, and returned without any good humor, or else? Strange, why does it seem like he's suddenly changed into a different person, with so much strength? Go back, since things didn't work out, you'll just have to think of any other tricks later. Su Bin gave a deflated him, and the two of them turned around and left. Gu Xingyi, on the other hand, returned home with light steps, and the big and small babies in the house were relieved when they saw him, with a slightly relaxed look in their eyes. Little Nai Nai was still in Xia Shuriya's arms and didn't bother to continue playing the game, his big black eyes staring at Gu Xingyi's face until he saw that familiar smile. The little guy left his mom's arms and pounced over to hug his dad's legs. Xia Shuriao, too, hadn't finished her meal yet, and sat at the table looking at Gu Xingyi with a questioning expression. There. Gone? Well, send it away and it won't come back. Gu Xingyi said lightly, reaching out to pick up little Nai Nai and walk over to the sofa to sit down. Watching Gu Xingyi play with little Nai Nai's toys as if nothing had happened, Xia Shuriao then turned around and lowered her head to continue eating. The home returned to its previous coziness, and this little episode was soon forgotten by the three. Unlike Gu Xingyi's side, Gao Chang, Su Bin, and the two of them were embarrassed, they had just been humiliated by Gu Xingyi, and then they were ruthlessly humiliated by Lu Qian. The two of them had made a promise to Lu Qian that they would be able to convince Gu Xingyi, but they didn't want to be kicked out straight away. This made the two hate Gu Xingyi even more. The sun was setting in the evening and it was getting cooler outside. Xia Shuriya changed her clothes and took little Nai Nai out to buy groceries, and Gu Xingyi, who was alone at home, had just picked up his cell phone and was ready to swipe Douyin when he received a call from Yang Chenglin. The phone had just been connected, and the nice imperial voice on the other side immediately rang out. 
Mr. Xingyao, is that you? It's me. After Gu Xingyi returned, another voice immediately came from the receiver. Mr. Xingyao, we've already discussed the possibility of letting the person you recommended join the company, however, what the above means is that at the moment, you only have two songs in existence, and one of them is a children's song, don't get me wrong, both of them are great, but the above still wants to take another look at your composing ability, I don't know if it's convenient or not. Sure enough, with just two songs, the other guy didn't believe in his abilities. Gu Xingyi didn't think much about it, he could understand that capitalism always prioritizes profit, surely he wouldn't let him send people into the company with his two songs. Composing a song is it? Yes. Gu Xingyi's answer was simple and clear, his head was filled with the culture of a world, so naturally he wouldn't be afraid of the other party giving him questions. Yang Chenglin's heart had been quite bumpy, but when she heard Xing Yao agree so dryly, her heart couldn't help but rise with some relief. She had been running around for a long time today for this, she liked the two songs he composed, she believed in Xing Yao's talent, but there was still some skepticism up there. After all, who knows how long it took him to compose these two songs, maybe he prepared for a long, long time before holding back such two songs and releasing them together? In fact, Yang Chenglin was also a little bit anxious inside, she also had a little bit of worry inside, but in the end she chose to believe in her own vision, to be able to make two songs that have you in their life and courageous outbursts of people she felt that the other party is certainly not bad. In the end, the company still agreed to give Xing Yao a chance, and it just so happened that Yin had recently given a hard time to a few entertainment companies, and they had recently invited many lyricists because of this problem, but unfortunately none of them were able to catch the eye, and they were all passed in the end. If Starry Yao can solve this dilemma, the company will never suspect him again. Mr. Xing Yao, can we meet and talk about the specifics? This side still needs you to come over for a live songwriting session. Yang Changlin said very sincerely, she also wants to see this mysterious guy, what exactly does he look like, shooting videos without showing his face? Gu Xingyi thought about it for a moment, he didn't have much else to do at home other than bring up the kids, so he agreed readily. Okay, what time? Where? Mordor, it would be best to come over tomorrow if you can, after all, the sooner the better for you, the better to reflect your value. Hearing Yang Changlin say this, Gu Xingyi couldn't help but feel better about this imperial sister in her heart, after all, very few people would be so considerate of others, most people would prioritize the company's interests. Hmm. Good. Tomorrow then. Seeing that Xing Yao agreed so readily, Yang Changlin also exhaled deeply, and then his tone was noticeably lighter. Then set a specific time, text me and let me know, it's this number, and I'll come by tomorrow and pick you up on time. Okay, text me then, bye. Gu Xingyi agreed, and the phone hung up, then he researched the flights to Mordor, and finally booked a ticket for tomorrow at 10 a.m. Finishing texting the time with Yang Changlin, Gu Xingyi closed his eyes and took a nap, as if he wasn't the least bit concerned about the upcoming dilemma. Not long after, Gu Xingyi actually fell into a deep sleep. When Xiao Shiryao led little Nai Nai back, she saw the sleeping Gu Xingyi, she was busy putting her finger on her mouth and gently shushed at little Nai Nai. Little Nai Nai blinked her big eyes and similarly shushed Xia Shiryao, and the mother and daughter shared a heartfelt smile. Xia Shiryao quietly entered the kitchen carrying the dishes, and little Nai Nai walked over to the sofa and gently snuggled into Gu Xingyi's arms. In his dream, Gu Xingyi only felt that a kitten had been rubbing his face, and that soft little paw rubbing on his face, not to mention how comfortable it was. Suddenly, the kitten covered her nose with her two small paws, and Gu Xingyi gasped a little as he struggled a little and jerked awake. Cluck cluck cluck. Nana's cheerful laughter echoed in his ears. Gu Xingyi lowered his head, and only then did he realize that it was his own precious daughter who had pinched his nose with her warm, soft little hand. Daddy, let's eat. Yes. Gu Xingyi would smile, suddenly feeling that this kind of day was very good, much better than every time he woke up alone in his previous life. The aroma of the meal also drifted over from the dining room at this time, making Gu Xingyi feel a little hungry. He looked up. On the table was a plate of baby crisps, a plate of shredded potatoes and a bowl of tomato and egg soup. It looks so inviting. Xiao Shiryu's figure then walked out from the kitchen with two bowls of rice in her hands, she glanced at Gu Xingyi and softly said, Seeing that you haven't woken up, I made rice, and even though it wasn't as good as the one you made, I tasted it, and it still tasted good. Gu Xingyi stood up as he picked up little Nai Nai. I think it's great. The colors and flavors make me hungry just watching it. I'll take Nana to wash her hands and be right over. Hearing Gu Xingyi's praise, Xiao Shiryu was a little shy, she nodded and returned to the kitchen to bring another bowl of rice to the table. As the family ate their meal, Gu Xingyi chucked a piece of small crispy pork into Nai Nai's bowl, turned his head to Xia Shiryo and said, By the way, I'm going out tomorrow, and I don't know how many days I'll be back for the time being. Xia Shiryo was sipping her soup when she suddenly heard Gu Xingyi's words and was instantly choked, unable to stop coughing. Gu Xingyi was busy handing over tissues with a worried face. Xia Shiryo took the tissue and turned her back to wipe her mouth. Hearing that Gu Xingyi was suddenly going out, she did get a little flustered, 
and her subconscious reaction was that his sudden going out had something to do with those two people who came to the door today. But now that I think about it, I don't think it is, and if it is, then he should have invited those two into his home today, right? After packing up, Xia Shuriao then turned back around. She didn't know if she should go and ask Gu Xingyi where she was going, and there was some inexplicable panic in her heart. She who clearly wanted to escape a week ago, now that she heard that Gu Xingyi was going out, she was subconsciously somewhat reluctant. It was Nana who asked, she didn't know why her mom suddenly coughed, but she heard that her dad was going out for a few days. The thought of not being able to see her daddy for days made Nana a little lost. Where's daddy going? Little Nai Nai didn't even pick at her favorite egg custard, pouting her little lips full of reluctance. Daddy's going to find mommy a job, so you can hear mommy sing more often. Aren't you happy? Nina was still young enough that she didn't really know what work was, and as far as she could remember, her parents seemed to be home all the time. But she was happy to hear that she could hear her mom sing more often, so she was happy, so happy that she was clapping her little hands. Little does she know now that she will be seeing her mom a lot more often in the future, and I wonder if she will still be so happy then. Mommy's going to sing to Nana more often yay. Gu Xingyi rubbed her little head, then his gaze went to Xia Shuriao. I'm sorry for deciding for you without asking your opinion, it's just that Nana said you like to sing, so I guess you do, right? Before things were not ready, so I didn't tell you, now other people's companies asked me to go over to talk about it, this time the talk came to fruition, you can make a bright comeback, continue to go singing, sound and see entertainment, it should still be good, he asked himself to sing? Xia Shuriao subconsciously looked at him, Gu Xingyi was serious, the two of them stared at each other, and Xia Shuriao's almond eyes suddenly filled with watery mist, their eyes slightly reddening, a pair of beautiful eyes were suddenly as gentle as water, which made Gu Xingyi a bit overwhelmed, and he lowered his head to pick up his food, Xia Shuriao didn't think that she would actually be able to continue singing one day, and it was still this man who took the initiative to choose for himself. Thank you, Gu Xingyi. I love to sing. Love it so much. Xia Shuriao spoke softly, her voice getting firmer and firmer. She loved to sing. And she also wanted to make Lele and Sister Yun better. No more bullying. She'd been worried about them ever since she'd met with Dorothy. No need to thank you. You like it. That's enough. Gu Xingyi looked up with a gentle smile. The following morning, after the meal. You guys go on back, I figure it'll be a day or two at the most before I'm back, don't worry. Gu Xingyi hailed a cab to the airport and turned to Xia Shuriao. Xia Shuriao nodded her head, and there was actually a look of reluctance in her eyes. It was clear that she had hated running away from him before, and she hadn't expected that in just a few days she would feel bad about him leaving. Little Nai Nai snuggled in Xia Shuriao's thigh side, but also do not want a Gu Xingyi out, her little mouth pouted high, the look in her eyes let a person pity, see Gu Xingyi are eager to tie the little one in their own body. We went out for two days, why did we make it look like we were leaving for life and death? Gu Xingyi ruthlessly stopped looking at her, waved his hand and turned around to sit inside the cab. The car drove away, the two figures in the rearview mirror gradually became smaller, Gu Xingyi closed his eyes, his heart could not tell what it felt like. It's the first time I've ever been sent away from home. At 9.30, the car arrived at the airport, and Gu Xingyi waited for another 20 minutes before taking the plane to Magic City. Magic City, an inch of gold, most of the headquarters of the entertainment company stands in this. People here for the stars have basically become accustomed to, usually shopping can meet so one or two. There has been a saying circulating on the internet that the magic city, that is a place where celebrities walk everywhere and netizens are as numerous as dogs. At 12.20 minutes past noon, the plane arrived at Mordor on time, and Gu Xingyi just got off the plane and felt the warmth of Mordor. There are too many people here compared to River City. Following the surging crowds, Gu Xingyi moved her body with difficulty and walked until she reached exit 5, only to breathe a little sigh of relief. Standing in front of the exit, Gu Xingyi looked out at the large group of people holding signs, looking for the name that belonged to him. Before he came, he made an appointment with Yang Chang Lin and she would pick him up here at the exit. There were too many people holding up signs at the scene, so many of them were fans picking up, which made Gu Xingyi look for a long time before she finally saw a tall woman wearing a professional suit, and what she was holding up in her hand was clearly Xing Yao's sign. Sure enough, it's a Mikado. Let's just say the voice is as good as the person. This woman and Xia Shuriao were two completely different styles, if Xia Shuriao was as gentle as water, then she was competent and spontaneous, her whole body exuding an intellectual beauty. Gu Xingyi walked up quickly and waved at her. Hello, are you Minister Yan? I'm Xingyao. Reality name is Gu Xingyi, sorry to keep you waiting. Yang Chenglin looked at the person in front of her and a hint of surprise flashed in her eyes, but she hid it well. I knew that Gu Xingyi was young, but I didn't expect it to be just that young like fresh out of college and with a face perfectly suited for stardom. Yang Chang Lin couldn't help but have some regrets, it would have been so nice to sign him. Hello, I'm Yang Chang Lin. I also just arrived not long ago, Mr. Xing Yao is really young. With a professional smile on his face, Yang Chang Lin spoke and shook Gu Xingyi's hand gently before letting go. 
Let's go this way. There are too many people here. My car is parked in the underground parking lot. It's dinner time. Let's find a place to eat first and then we'll talk about it in detail? Yes. Gu Xingyi nodded and walked outside side by side with Yang Chun Lin. Yang Chang Lin was indeed someone who had been in the workplace for a long time, and as she walked, she looked for topics to chat with Gu Xingyi. She had thought that a youngster like Gu Xingyi wouldn't be much of a chatterbox, but after contact, she realized that the other party could actually keep up with her own conversation eloquently, and wasn't shy at all like the other youngsters. This makes Yang Chang Lin can't help but give him another high look, it's true that excellent people eat everywhere. Gu Xingyi doesn't know that Yang Chang Lin has a high opinion of him, if he knows, he must be very speechless, he has the memories of two lifetimes, adding up to more than 50 years of age, if this point of emotional quotient is not there, then he can directly find a rope. The two got into the car, Gu Xingyi looked out the window at the bustling magic city, Yang Chang Lin from time to time to introduce him to the local characteristics, only a moment, the two arrived at a special restaurant, the place is not big, but it is said that the taste is very authentic. The two of them sat down, and as Yang Chang Lin finished ordering and waited for the food to be served, that's when she got down to business. I'll call you Mr. Gu, Mr. Gu, I wonder who you're recommending this time. A vegetarian or a professional singer? I wonder if Minister Yang has heard of Xia Shiryao. She used to be a singer, but then she retired from the industry, and now she's kind of making a comeback. Talking about business, Gu Xingyi's expression also became serious. Yang Chang Lin frowned, she has heard Xia Shiryao songs, Two years ago the popular little flower, singing is really good, but the reason she frowned is that at the time Xia Shiryao was forced to withdraw from the circle because of the exposure of the romance, and the object of the relationship seems to be a white boy who did nothing? This would be hard to handle, Yang Chang Lin pondered for a moment, skimming a strand of hair from her forehead behind her ear before she fixed her eyes on Gu Xingyi. I know her, I wonder what Mr. Gu's relationship with her is? Do you know why she retired from the circle before? Gu Xingyi looked into Yang Cheng Lin's eyes and faintly said, Husband and wife, she is my wife. Eh? Even the long experienced Yang Cheng Lin couldn't help but be jaw dropped when he heard Gu Xingyi's reply. Couple? He's the rumored gigolo? What a joke. Can't it be that Xia Shi Yao divorced that one and found another one? Seeing Yang Cheng Lin's expression, Gu Xingyi guessed what she was thinking and couldn't help but laugh bitterly. You're right in thinking that I'm the one who retired from the circle together with her when their romance was exposed. Yang Cheng Lin suddenly didn't know what to say, she had heard of Xia Shiryao but didn't know who she was with, and she naturally wouldn't pay attention to an idol boy band like Gu Xingyi who used to rely on his face. She was now a little skeptical that he hadn't written those two songs. Gu Xingyi didn't give her much time to think about it, and continued to speak when he saw her face torn. Is it hard to get her to join your company? If it's really hard, I'll think of something else, and I'm asking for more than just for her to join your company, I want her to have the top resources and freedom in your company, and her contract can't be stuck. In the end, it's still a matter of interest, I believe that with my help, Sound and Sea Entertainment will go to the next level, I still hope that you can consider it carefully. Gu Xingyi finished in one breath and picked up the water cup to take a calm sip of water. Yang Chenglin's face was grave, obviously in some difficulty as she opened her mouth. In the end we haven't worked together, just with those two songs you released on Douyin, it's not that valuable, I recognize Xia Shiryao's singing ability, but the entertainment industry is about more than just singing, I believe you are also clear, it's not difficult to make her come back but you want top-level resources, freedom of contract, we basically haven't signed this kind. Let us discuss this matter a little more, it is not a trivial matter. Although Yang Cheng Lin did not explicitly refuse, his words revealed that this was basically impossible. Not to mention the top resources, really give her top resources will be hard to cultivate her into a first-tier or super first-tier superstar. The contract, and to be free, then directly out of the company, what about the company? Who will cry? You guys can discuss it, and I'm here to express my attitude, not only the difficulties you encountered this time, but in the future, if you need songs, or even scripts, no matter what genre, if you ask, I can give it to you. I still very much hope that we can successfully work together. Didn't you guys ask me to come here this time just to see what I can do? I'm here, so why not make a decision after seeing it? Gu Xingyi said lightly, with an air of confidence. Yang Cheng Lin gave him a deep look, it was the first time she had seen such a confident person. Is this the legendary white boy? The world is foolish. Eventually Yang Cheng Lin left in a hurry after dinner, she had to go and discuss with the company, and on her way out she gave Gu Xingyi a room card, she had booked the hotel in advance and it was right next to the restaurant. Wait for my message. Those were the last words she said on her way out. She was impressed by Gu Xingyi's self-confidence, and she couldn't believe that such a self-confident person would say that he didn't have some skills. Gu Xingyi came to the hotel room and simply washed up before lying on the bed thinking, if Yin Hai didn't work, he would go to other companies. It's always possible, right? If none of them work, the big deal is that he'll make more money, tire himself out and start a company, and take Xia Shiryao with him to develop obscenely. 
Gu Xingyi hadn't noticed in the slightest that his thoughts had unconsciously changed, from just wanting to be a salted fish in the beginning, to now going on the run for Xia Shiryao. In a short time together, he was becoming more and more considerate of them, and even more unconsciously integrated into the little family. Yang Chenglin's call came at 3 p.m. M. She had already arrived downstairs, indicating that Gu Xingyi needed to make a trip with her to the Sound and Sea Mansion. Gu Xingyi didn't say anything more and went straight downstairs to join Yang Chenglin. The company of Sound and Sea Entertainment was located in the busiest area of Magic City, and an entire building was full of Sound and Sea Entertainment's properties. At this moment, on the 18th floor of the Sonic Sea Mansion, inside the parlor, the company's chairman, Yang Xian, the head of the Human Resources Department, Zhang Chao, and a few other managers from Sound and Sea Entertainment were all there. Zhang Chao's face was ugly, and he was currently speaking to Yang Xian. Chairman, I have nothing to say about Vice Minister Yang's business ability, but this time I think she's paying too much attention to this Gu Xingyi. He used to be a trifling artist, and now he's even making such outrageous demands of us. Those two songs on Duyo are good, but who knows where he got them from. I think we're just wasting our time. In response to Zhang Chao's complaints, Yang Xian waved his hand with a kind smile on his face. We still need to give the young people some opportunities, this time let's see how talented he is first, if it doesn't work I'm sure Shaolin won't say anything more. Looking at the chairman's amiable demeanor, Zhang Chao could only hold his breath, but in his heart, he was constantly bellyaching. It's not because it's your daughter, you're biased. Yang Xian saw Zhang Chao's look of being aggravated and laughed again, as the chairman of the company, he naturally would not say what his daughter said, in fact, he had also heard those two songs, which could only be described as perfect. However, he didn't need to explain anything to Zhang Chao, as for whether those two songs were made by the person himself, whether it was a mule or a horse, it would be known if he pulled it out for a walk. Moreover, he was still interested in Gu Xingyi, a former unknown artist, but now he was so confident that he dared to put forward that kind of condition, in the end, he didn't believe that he didn't have some real talent. This concept Yang Envy and Yang Changlin are the same, in the end, it is a father and daughter, not a family does not enter a door. Yang Changlin led Gu Xingyi to the parlor at this time, Gu Xingyi had seen quite a few of the stars that had burst onto the scene in this world from the moment she entered, each of them being the best in their respective fields. Sure enough, it is one of the three giants, this degree of luxury, this big names gathered, looking at it makes people have a feeling of high class. What a row! As soon as he entered the parlor, Gu Xingyi felt that the gazes of everyone present were directed at him, their eyes showing various colors. There was skepticism, surprise, disdain, and probing. Gu Xingyi naturally settled into the guest seat, one to a group, his expression bland and generous. Yang Xian couldn't stop a trace of appreciation from rising in his heart. Nice first impression for such a young guy to show such generosity in the face of such a situation. Well, since the main man has arrived, let's get started. Mr. Gu, right? We had a meeting to discuss your request, Xia Shiryao, right? The contract can be signed. Resources can also be given at the top level. However, the contract can't be free. We really can't give this. It's not signed like this. You should be able to understand what I mean, right? Gu Xingyi nodded his head. He naturally knows, but cooperation, certainly to talk, not talk about how to know what their bottom line is? Understood. So how long is the contract for? Yang Xian laughed and looked straight at Gu Xingyi. Five years. We train her with the top resources and we don't limit what songs she wants to release or what activity she wants to participate in, but the contract has to be for five years, which is the standard contract for all the company's top artists. Gu Xingyi frowned slightly, not in the least bit afraid of his gaze, and looked at him equally straight. Five years is too long, I believe in my ability, your resources plus my talent, within a year she will be the top stream, maybe not even a year, so the most I can promise is two years the remaining year to bring enough benefits to your company, it can be. In these two years, Xia Shiryao's songs don't need you to worry about them, and I can write songs for you sound see for free, but the number is limited. Ha! Who wouldn't say big words? To become a top stream within a year, are you dreaming? Gu Xingyi had just finished speaking when he saw a balding man sitting next to Yang Changlin snort a little, looking at himself with contempt in his eyes and said. Gu Xingyi only glanced at him and ignored him, continuing to stare at Yang Xian. As for this baldy, this kind of person will just use his strength to hit him in the face, it's useless to say more. Yang Xian narrowed his eyes, his fingers gently tapping the desktop as the smile on his face became more and more obvious. It's good for young people to be confident, and two years isn't out of the question, but it all depends on your strength. This time I invited you over, on the one hand, to talk about cooperation, on the other hand, recently Yin issued a universal activity, requiring every company to participate, but only one song can be elected, I want to take it, I wonder if you have the strength? Gu Xingyi nodded slightly. Isn't this the event I came for? So crazy. It has character. I love it. Let Vice Minister Yang hand over the details of the event to you, then I'll wait for your good news. As long as your song is recognized, I can sign the contract right away from my side. 
Yang Xian smiled gently and made his final decision. Everything was negotiated and Gu Xingyi relaxed, he stood up and shook hands with Yang Xian, then left the parlor with Yang Chenglin. Taking the elevator down two floors, he reached the 16th floor inside Yang Chenglin's office. Yang Chenglin sighed a little, she didn't expect her father to agree to such an outrageous condition, but this event was really important, the official event held down the road, the company that won the elected song at that time would naturally be favored by the official. The benefits of this are self-evident, businessmen seek profit, and my father is obviously not in the business of taking losses. Yang Chenglin's eyes were a bit complicated when she looked at Gu Xingyi again, she quite hoped that Gu Xingyi would be a hit, which would mean that her vision was right. Then some of the company's gossip will naturally go away. Take a look, here's the fine print for this campaign, only three days for you to create, I hope you get what you want. I also hope we can work together successfully. Yang Chenglin took out a file bag from the drawer and handed it to Gu Xingyi, saying. Gu Xingyi opened the file bag, and what met his eyes was a large headline. Ordinary Heroes. Seeing these few large words, Gu Xingyi's complexion immediately became serious as he continued to look down. Heroes are ordinary, yet extraordinary, they don't have the power of a god, yet they do what no god can do. There have never been gods who fell from the sky, only mortals who were willing to step up to the plate. In this chaotic world, it is the silent and nameless heroes who are working hard to maintain this pure land, and they have been passed on from generation to generation. My country is a great country, not to mention the lack of these ordinary heroes, just that they are rarely known. Now Huayin joins hands with many departments to solicit response songs from major entertainment companies, with the theme of ordinary heroes, to promote the culture of China and erect a new social atmosphere. The office was quiet, with only the sound of Gu Xingyi flipping through papers. Gu Xingyi's expression was the most serious since crossing over. He flipped through the file and there were a couple of photos underneath. In the first one, a group of doctors and nurses in protective suits, in the background in the middle of the night, under dimmed lights, who are paralyzed with exhaustion outside the operating room without even being able to take off their clothes. The second one. It's three firefighters, covered in wreckage, with the extinguished fire behind them, and the one in the forefront, with a bright smile on his face despite the ashes, all because in his arms, he's holding a child still swaddled in his arms. In the third one, there were several warriors with only their backs, their faces could not be seen, only the clothes behind them could be seen, with the word narcotics written in large letters, while in front of them, they were facing a group of vicious criminals. In the fourth one, a classroom that is about to collapse, two teachers are running towards the door, clustered around children, and another teacher, who is holding a child and handing it to someone outside, and behind her, there is no one left, and she is the last one. There were many similar photos, Gu Xingyi looked at them carefully one by one, his heart trembled slightly, and when he saw one, he couldn't help but rub his fingers together. That's the soul of China. Gu Xingyi suddenly felt that even if Soundsi Entertainment hadn't agreed to his terms, he would have written the song down. It's his honor to be uninvolved and uncaring. These people in the photo, they deserve it. After reading all the documents, Gu Xingyi organized them one by one and put them away, taking a deep breath. Yang Chenglin also broke this silence in the office at this time. Shocking, isn't it? To be honest, if I had the ability, I would compose a good song to accompany them even if I had to pay money backwards, but unfortunately, I can't. Even the huge Sound Sea Entertainment doesn't have a single person who can come up with a satisfactory composition. Well, are you okay with this? You only have three days, and in three days Yin is going to end this audition. Gu Xingyi nodded. As a Chinese, how can I not be shocked? Don't worry, leave it to me, within three days, I'll definitely give you all a satisfactory answer to them. After saying that, Gu Xingyi put the documents away and stood up. That's it then, you get me some songwriting paper and I'll go back to the hotel and work on it slowly. Okay, I'll walk you. Yang Changlin didn't dawdle, she knew that it was hard to create a good song in three days. Now that time was short, she didn't say anything more and was busy standing up to go downstairs with Gu Xingyi. In the evening, in the hotel, Gu Xingyi took a shower and came to his desk, he laid the curved manuscript paper flat on the table and lifted his pen to think silently. He had two songs in his head as soon as he read the document. Both songs fit this theme well, one is about nobody and the other is about just being ordinary. Gu Xingyi thought for a long time before deciding that it was it. As long as it's ordinary. The theme song of the original world I'm not a drugstore. It was later used as a song for the anti-epidemic theme song by Hua Yang, which fit the theme of this time. Ordinary heroes, silent, don't want God's halo, just your ordinariness. The whole piece is very simple, but the simple melody reveals a hint of sadness up front followed by a gradual shift from sadness to faith. Gu Xingyi put pen to paper to compose the tune, and as each musical note leapt onto the paper, Gu Xingyi seemed to have returned to the time when the epidemic broke out in the original world. Everyone, though trapped in their homes, always believed that we would beat the epidemic, always sure that we would win. He thought of that great academician Zhong, and of the countless most beautiful retrograde travelers. It's like that quote. 
The world is broken, but there is always someone to mend it, no one is born a hero, but there is always someone to carry the weight. These are the ordinary heroes. After the sheet music was written, Gu Xingyi rubbed his slightly sore eyes, took out another piece of paper, and solemnly wrote down the title of the song. When they were all written, Gu Xingyi put them together and hummed softly. He didn't allow the song to make the slightest mistake in his hands, and he hummed it over and over again several times to make sure there was no mistake at all before he finally lay down on his bed contentedly. He was suddenly looking forward to the look on their faces when they saw the song tomorrow. The next day, Gu Xingyi simply ate breakfast without informing Yang Changlin and took a taxi alone to Sound Sea Entertainment. Yang Changlin was still busy working in her office and she was surprised to suddenly see Gu Xingyi visiting her. You still have time to come to my place? It's only three days. Big brother. Why don't you go and think of a song? Writing what song? It's finished. Gu Xingyi smiled, handing her the manuscript paper under Yang Chenglin's face full of shock. Let's see it first, I think this one should work, right? Yang Chenglin looked at Gu Xingyi like she was looking at a monster, and the dry imperial sister rarely lost some control of her emotions. Are you kidding me? One night? What great songs can you write in one night? He's not just going to muddle through, is he? Yang Chenglin frowned and received the curved manuscript paper, she still felt that this young man was stable and excellent yesterday, and today the other party came to hit her face. She'd like to see what he wrote in one night. Yang Chenglin put her eyes on the song script paper, she was still calm when she saw the title of the song, but next, when she slowly read the lyrics, her whole body was stunned. What kind of fairy lyrics are these, everywhere written ordinary but everywhere reveals the extraordinary, throughout the whole text did not mention a hero but every sentence is a hero. This lyric is straight to the point. Yang Changlin then couldn't wait to look at the sheet music again, and a few moments later, she suddenly raised her head and looked at Gu Xingyi, her eyes glowing. This. Did you really write this in one night? Gu Xingyi touched his nose and said calmly, what else? I stayed up all night to make it. Well. Is this song any good? Gu Xingyi deliberately asked again, in fact, he knew in his heart, this song if it does not work, then there is no line. Yang Chenglin's eyes became more and more radiant as she stared closely at Gu Xingyi. You are so awesome. I made the right choice. Can you sing it for me? I want to hear it sung. One night. Yang Chenglin couldn't even dare to imagine how much talent it would take to create such a complete lyric in this short period of time. She couldn't wait to hear what the song was like being sung now. Yes. Gu Xingyi nodded his head, he closed his eyes for a moment to brew his emotions, thinking about how he felt when he first heard the song in the first place. Yang Changlin immediately sat up like a devout listener, only the dazzling light in her beautiful eyes grew brighter and brighter. The serious Gu Xingyi is really a sight for sore eyes. Gu Xingyi opened his eyes to see the scene. He coughed and skimmed his eyes slightly, taking a deep breath before singing softly. Maybe far away or yesterday, here or across the river. A long road of sorrows and sorrows, people get together and people get separated. Letting go of right and wrong to know the answer, living bravely. Without the aura of God, you and I were born ordinary. Gu Xingyi's face was serious and pious looking, his voice was gentle, and with the tune, it was as if he was slowly telling something mundane and unforgettable. The summer sunlight shone in through the window, shining on Gu Xingyi's serious face. This kind of scene made Yang Chenglin trance as if he saw a beam of light from the darkness shining into the earth. Recognize regret in heartbreak, life is long and short. The beating heart grows vines, willing to fight for danger. Falling into the grayness falling into the abyss with a dirt-stained face. There is no halo of God, hold the mundane in your hands. This heart has no regrets in this life the fire of life has been lit. This is the feeling. Yang Chenglin's heart had begun to tremble slightly at this moment, and this was the first thing she felt when she saw the document. Heartbroken, lamenting life, honoring them yet heartbroken. She now finally understood what was meant by a gap, a gap was something that everyone else could feel but couldn't express. Gu Xingyi, on the other hand, was able to express this emotion in his entirety in one song. Right. Because of these lovely heroes who defied the odds and set the fire of life ablaze, so many miracles have happened on earth. Yang Chenglin looked at the young man in front of him with some fascination, immersed in his singing voice. 
Someday it may be far away, and maybe we'll see each other again. Whether in the crowd in the sky, let me see your face again. Let the tears spread over your eyes, though there are no words for the tears. Don't want God's halo, just your ordinariness. When Gu Xingyi sang this, his eyes became a little moist, and it was as if the faces that had angelic faces but were blurred appeared in front of him again. It was as if he stood there and just watched, as those who had been saved bowed to them. And Gu Xing's opposite. Tears had already slipped from Yang Chenglin's eyes, and she didn't even seem to know it, just staring at Gu Xingyi in a daze. Before in her mind, he was just a talented but bullying person, but now, the image of him in her mind became clearer and clearer, not only was he talented, he had a delicate heart, and he had qualities that others did not have. He possessed a heart that was always grateful. There's no such thing as a good time, just someone carrying your weight. This heart has no regrets in this life, the fire of life has been kindled. When the song ended, Yang Cheng Lin was still immersed in the song and couldn't help herself until Gu Xingyi gently coughed twice, and only then did she suddenly come back to her senses. Panicked, she wiped the tear tracks on her face, Yang Cheng Lin stood up violently, her eyes becoming more and more radiant, so radiant that Gu Xingyi was too embarrassed to look directly at her anymore. Can. May I? Snap 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 snap. It's too okay. Little friend Gu. I really didn't expect you to give us such a big surprise. Just as Yang Cheng Lin was about to open his mouth, the door of the office was suddenly pushed open, and Yang Envy walked in while clapping his hands, speaking with a look on his face that was clearly caught by surprise. Behind him, followed by the head of the Human Resources Department, Zhang Chao, at this moment Zhang Chao obviously with a face full of vegetables, he could not believe it, this is only how long? Gu Xingyi really made a song? Or such a perfect song? Dad! Why did you come in without knocking? Seeing the visitor, Yang Changlin looked a bit flustered, she secretly wiped the tear tracks on her face again and shouted at Yang Xian with a disgruntled face. Yang Envy, however, did not have the slightest intention of repentance, still smiling and laughing, only looking at his own baby daughter's eyes are a little strange. How long had it been since he'd seen his daughter in this little womanly pose? If I didn't come, how could I know that Gu Xiaoyu had composed such a good song? Okay. Gu Xingyi was speechless. This went straight from Mr. Gu to Gu Xiaoyu. As expected, he's a businessman, and those who can bring him benefits are his relatives. I'm flattered, Chairman Yang, as long as you're satisfied. Satisfied. Very satisfied. Little friend Gu, now that the song is available, then as long as this song is chosen by Hua Yin, we'll sign the contract with Xia Shuriyao immediately, now I'll sign a cooperation agreement with little friend Gu first, right? It'll save you from worrying, won't it? Yang Xian smiled and nodded his head, and at the same time, his efficiency was very quick, and he directly clapped things down. Gu Xingyi finally breathed a sigh of relief, he knew that this was sort of 8 or 9. The group signed a cooperation agreement on the spot, and as long as the song was selected, then the cooperation Gu Xingyi had previously mentioned with Soundsea Entertainment would begin immediately. After signing, Gu Xingyi excused himself to Yang Xian. Chairman Yang, since the matter is settled, the kid will leave first. Good, and I hope we'll work well together in the future. Gu Xingyi nodded slightly and took the cooperation agreement and turned toward the office door. I'll give you a ride. Seeing that Gu Xingyi was about to leave, Yang Changlin suddenly said, she had just been a little afraid to look at Gu Xingyi, she had actually looked at him like a fangirl before. That's just shameful for a royal girl. It was just that now that Gu Xingyi was leaving, her heart was suddenly inexplicably a little reluctant. Aham Shaolin Ah. I remember don't you still have work left to do? Xiao Gu wouldn't be a child, where would he need you to send him around? Before Gu Xingyi turned his head and spoke, Yang Xian on the opposite side suddenly spoke first. Seeing this, Gu Xingyi smiled at Yang Chenglin with gratitude. Thank you Minister Yang for your kindness, I'll just take a taxi back myself. After saying that, Gu Xingyi turned around and walked out of the office, gently closing the door behind him and passing before striding away. As for Yang Chang Lin in the office, at this moment, like a furious kitten, he suddenly exploded. Dad! What do you mean? They just sent us a song and you let them go. You're not like that. When Zhang Chao, who was still in the room, saw this scene, he suddenly became furious, gulped, and hurriedly said, that. I still have some work left to take care of, 
I'll take my leave first. Farewell. Without waiting for Yang Xian to speak, Zhang Chao scurried out in a puff of smoke, shutting the door tightly in the process. It wasn't until he was out the door that he wiped the fine sweat from his head and left quickly, he couldn't be there to get in the way of other people's father-daughter affairs. Yang Xian looked at his daughter's appearance, and did not get angry, but only a little speech. Xiao Lin Ah. You're not so young anymore, it's time to find a date. Kid Gu is pretty good, but don't forget. He has a wife. And as far as I know, he has a daughter, right? Yang Chenglin suddenly fell silent for a moment before coldly saying, Of course I know, I only sent him because he was invited here by me. It's as simple as that. The imperial sister was back to being high and cold, an aura that made even her father, Yang Xian, a little frightened. Okay, okay, okay. It's good that you know. I suddenly remembered I have work to do too. Let's go, let's go. Yang Xian pulled his legs out and left, only to just walk out the door and suddenly poked his head in again. I mean it. Good daughter, you're 26 now. It's time to find someone. Get out. Okay, Lu. No more rushing. I'll get out now. Walking out of the Sound and Sea Mansion, Gu Xingyi waited by the side of the road for a long time before finally stopping a cab. Gu Xingyi got into the car, the driver master also flirted with the fact that those who work here are rich, usually cabs do not come here, Gu Xingyi is good luck to get a taxi. Gu Xingyi spread his hands, he was also helpless, he was here to ask for a favor. But this also strengthened the idea of Gu Xingyi to buy a car, it is too inconvenient to go out, waiting for a car to waste half a day. The car was traveling on the way to the hotel, Gu Xingyi inquired about his ticket home, he was going to go back to the hotel to simply pack up, have lunch and leave. It was clear that he had only left home early yesterday morning, and now he was actually a little homesick. Gu Xingyi wasn't sure what was wrong with him, in the original world he had gone out for so long, he wouldn't even have thoughts of homesickness, but when he came to this world, he changed. He hadn't even chosen his airfare yet when Yang Chenglin's phone call came in. Hey, mister. Gu, that's so mean, my dad didn't sound too good, I apologize on his behalf. On the phone, Yang Chenglin expressed his apologies, his tone a little cold, as if he was still angry with someone. Gu Xingyi was a bit surprised, he didn't take this matter to heart, and Yang Xian had expressed it very politely, as a capitalist he had already given his face. As to whether there is any unloading? It doesn't exist. It's just a fair trade. Used to seeing all kinds of people in the capital market, Gu Xingyi has long been aware of this. Ha! Huh? It's okay, it's okay, I didn't think anything was wrong, you don't have to take it to heart. Hearing Gu Xingyi say this, Yang Chenglin's tone eased slightly. It's good that you don't care, by the way, are you on your way back to the hotel now? Right. Already in the car, I'm going back to the hotel to pack up and head back to Jiang Chang. Gu Xingyi said, but there was silence on the other end of the phone for a moment, followed by Yang Chenglin's voice. It's like this, mister. Gu you'd better wait for two more days, if your lyrics are chosen, I guess why inside will still need your assistance, after all, you did all the lyrics and music, you have the deepest understanding of the song. I've booked you a few extra days at the hotel, so you don't have to worry. Upon hearing Yang Chenglin's words, Gu Xingyi's plans to go home fell through, and he was left with an empty heart. But they're right, if there's anything else at a later stage, it wouldn't be a good idea to fly back and forth between the two cities. Okay, I know, I'll stay a few more days then, thanks for letting me know. You're welcome. Hanging up the phone with Yang Cheng Lin, Gu Xingyi regretfully put down his cell phone and turned his head to look out the car window at the scenery flying by. He missed the little one at home a little. Thinking of little Nai Nai, Gu Xingyi himself didn't even realize that a smile inexplicably raised on his face. As if his heart was in the right place, Gu Xingyi had just returned to the hotel and took out his cell phone in boredom when Xia Shuriao's call came in. Gu Xingyi picked up the phone, and little Nai Nai's voice immediately came from the other end of the phone. Crooked? Is it daddy? It's the little one AC. Even though he couldn't see little Nai Nai's appearance, Gu Xingyi's ant-like smile still rose on his face. It's daddy. Nai Nai is this missing daddy? Think. Dad. Mommy asks when you're coming back. At this time at home, little Nai Nai held her cell phone in both hands and nestled sweetly in Xia Shuriao's arms. 
Xia Shiryao's pretty face immediately climbed red, helplessly blanked the little one a glance, obviously she was the one who clamored to call her father, how come she got involved now? Didn't ask for that myself. Then tell Mamo, dad won't be back for a few more days. Gu Xingyi snickered, he guessed it must have been the little guy who wanted to go back on his own but moved out Xia Shiryao. Nana was visibly upset to hear this and grunted over the phone. The corners of Gu Xingyi's mouth curled up slightly as he changed to a comfortable position on the bed. Did Nina eat properly today na? Hearing this, little Nai Nai immediately looked up at her mom, then lowered her head as if she were a thief and whispered, there is oh. But Nana wants to eat daddy's cooking more. The little guy's tone was extremely serious, so serious that the eavesdropping Xia Shiryao was angry and laughed. You're a tattletale at such a young age, aren't you? You're saying you're not a good cook? Then Xia Shiryao heard Gu Xingyi's harumphing laughter on the other end of the phone, in an instant Xia Shiryao's face turned even redder as she snatched the phone. Okay. That's enough chatting with dad for today. Hey. That's not what I asked. Hmm. I know, how's the family? Hearing Gu Xingyi's reply, Xia Shiryao only felt even more angry. Was he holding back his laughter? Very well. You've only been out for a day. What can be the matter? Okay, enough talk, hang up. I'm going to make lunch. Hey. Hey. You can't. I haven't talked to the little guy enough. Bye. Xia Shiryao, however, didn't give Gu Xingyi this opportunity and directly hung up the phone. Her face was rolling now, and if she kept talking, she was afraid she'd want to punch someone. Seeing that little Nai Nai was still staring at her phone with a face full of regret, Xia Shiryao decided to make little Nai Nai's least favorite small green vegetables for lunch today. Right. Kids can't be picky eaters. Gu Xingyi heard the blind voice coming from the earpiece and regretted it while still having a smile on his face. This was the first time he had ever seen Xia Shiryao in such a small mood, and it was just great. Before, she always gave him an indescribably depressing feeling, the kind of depressing that was as if she had no self-emotion and was gentle to the point of weakness. How can I put it? Gu Xingyi called it someone who lacked a solitary soul. And right now, that's slowly getting better, she's changing back into herself, and that's just fine. The wait is long. Before we know it, we have reached the end of July, and in a few days we will be in the month of August. Gu Xingyi had already spent two days in Magic City, during which time he had spoken to Yang Chang Lin on the phone several times, and their relationship was no longer so rusty. At least now Yang Chang Lin wouldn't be calling out with a mouthful of Mr. Making Gu Xingyi sound awkward. He was obviously a young man himself, and he was calling himself old. Gu Xingyi still woke up early and ran in the morning for the past two days, and everything seemed to be calm and quiet, and the news from Hua Yin's side hadn't come yet, so Gu Xingyi could only wait slowly. On the evening of the third day, Gu Xingyi, however, received an unfamiliar yet familiar phone call. Hello? Is that old Gu? It's Chen Feng. Chen Feng? Gu Xingyi didn't expect to receive this call either, and he quickly combed through the original owner's memories. A moment later, he remembered that this was the original owner's former dead friend when he was in college. The two go their separate ways after graduation, with the original owner taking part in a boy band talent show, while his nemesis Chen Feng is forced to go home and inherit his family's mini-mart. Going home was not Chen Feng's intention, his ambition was not there, Gu Xingyi remembered that he had always wanted to enter the animation industry, after all, they had graduated from the University of Communication, and Chen Feng had studied animation production and the like. Front. Crazy? Long time no see. Thinking of the two hooking up in college, Gu Xingyi smiled and opened his mouth to ask. He didn't have any friends in this world yet, thinking of Chen Feng's character and personality in the original owner's memories, Gu Xingyi's smile grew even wider. It's nice to have a genuine friend, it seems, too. Old Gu. What's the situation after you got married? You don't answer your phone, you don't answer your messages, you don't see me as a brother? On the other end of the phone, Chen Feng's reproachful voice came, but the tone of concern hidden inside made Gu Xingyi unable to stop her heart from warming up. It's just that the original owner always wanted to flatter both Gao and Su after she got married, so she didn't even have time to take care of this best brother. Hi. It was my fault before, so please spare me this time, 
and I'll treat you to dinner later to make amends, okay? Gu Xingyi said in reparation, while in his heart, he secretly scolded the original owner again. You can't even tell if you're a human or a ghost. It's a disgrace to me, Gu Xingyi. Ha ha. You said it. No need to wait for later then, just today. Brother. I'm coming to Jiangcheng. Chen Feng's tone was excited, and his proud tone could be heard through the phone receiver. Ah uh, crazy, it's not that I don't want to invite you, I'm not in Jiangcheng right now. I've come to Magic City on business, I won't be able to go back until a few days later. Gu Xingyi was embarrassed, not expecting Chen Feng to run away to Jiangcheng and pounce. Why did you kid run away to Mordor again? No, no, no. Wait. I'll fly to Magic City right now. You won't get away with this. I'm the one who ran away from home with great difficulty to prepare for great things. This kind of good deed should be shared with you. Okay. I'll wait for you in Magic City. I'm not going anywhere. I'll send you the location on WeChat. I can afford a meal, huh? Gu Xingyi agreed with alacrity, he also wanted to meet this dead friend he hadn't seen in years. Then it's a deal. I'm booking the tickets now, and I'm going to have to rip you off this time. I'm hanging up. Let's go. Chen Feng was very efficient, and after hanging up the phone, it didn't take long before he sent Gu Xingyi a message on WeChat about the airfare. It arrives at 10 p.m. M. And is still a couple hours away. Gu Xingyi was also in a happy mood, even the sadness of days of waiting disappeared, humming a song and swiping her cell phone as she waited for his arrival. Not long after, Gu Xingyi saw that it was about time, so he went downstairs to the door. A cab stopped in front of the hotel, from the car down two people, one of them a meter seven or so chubby boys face all the excitement, a car to the hotel to look. The other was a girl, a secondary dress, petite and delicate looking, who got out of the car and slightly impatiently followed the slightly chubby boy. Until Gu Xingyi and this boy saw each other, both of them froze for a moment before a smile rose on their faces at the same time. Lao Gu. Crazy. The slightly chubby boy in front of him was none other than Chen Feng. Chen Feng sprinted forward, not to mention the excitement in his eyes as he heavily hugged Gu Xingyi. You brat. You haven't changed a bit, and you've gotten much more handsome. I don't even dare to recognize you. Gu Xingyi smiled and sized him up. Ha ha. You've gained weight. I remember how good that body of yours used to be. You had muscles. Now you've gotten so fat. Ha ha. It's not that there's a mom at home who thinks you're skinny. I can't get out of the house anymore. Chin Feng laughed playfully, he really was not fat before, his body is also good, with a country face, quite a kind of not angry and authoritative image. But since he came home from graduation, he's been captive to this, and his country face has turned into a round, chubby one, with an extra round of fat on his body. It's hard to blame. But it's nice like this. It's more comfortable to look at. That's right. Chen Feng stepped forward and took Gu Xingyi's shoulder, turned around and pointed at the secondary girl and said, Let me introduce you. My girlfriend, Wan Chang. Gu Xingyi glanced at Wan Chang and bumped Chen Feng's waist with his elbow, whispering. Okay. Crazy guy, good job finding a girlfriend. After saying that, Gu Xingyi nodded at Ruan Chang again. Hello, I'm Chen Feng's good buddy, Gu Xingyi. Hello, I've been hearing about you from Feng, I didn't realize that reality grows so handsome. Ruan Chang's eyes clearly lit up for a moment when she saw Gu Xingyi, but she quickly collected herself and smiled back. That's. Don't even look at who it is buddy. Chen Feng said immediately afterward, a smile overflowing on his face which was rewarded with a pair of blank stares from Ruan Chang. It's not you. What are you so proud of? Ha ha. My buddy and I don't share the same thing. Go go go, I've flown all this way to slaughter you kid, I can't let you get away today. Chen Feng hooked up with Gu Xingyi and walked forward. Slaughter all you want today. I recognize the punishment. The three of them walked all the way, and in the end, Chen Feng surprisingly just found a roadside stall selling barbecue and pulled Gu Xingyi to sit down. Gu Xingyi snickered in his heart, saying that he wanted to slaughter himself, but he still couldn't give it up, 
I didn't see that this fatty was quite arrogant. The three of them sat down and Chen Feng shouted at the boss to order skewers. Gu Xingyi, however, noticed that Ruan Qing seemed a bit reluctant, but she still took out a tissue and carefully wiped the stool before sitting down. The big-hearted Chen Feng did not notice this scene in the slightest. Seeing this, Gu Xingyi patted Chen Feng's shoulder and deliberately said, Crazy man, why don't you change the house? Aren't you going to slaughter me? How much can you slaughter here? Unexpectedly, Chen Feng squinted and glanced at Gu Xingyi. What? I don't like street stalls. I used to come here in college. This is it. Let's get drunk today. There you go. Good intentions as a donkey's liver and lungs. This guy is still so straight. Gu Xingyi smiled bitterly, okay, okay, okay. Just here. What you say counts. But drinking is out of the question, I quit drinking. Chen Feng frowned slightly, he did not understand what Gu Xingyi really meant, one moment he disliked the roadside stalls the next moment he quit drinking. Gu Xingyi hastily patted his shoulder and explained. Bro, really quit. I made a lot of mistakes before because of drinking, and then I changed, so I don't drink anymore. Seeing Gu Xingyi's sincere tone, Chen Feng relieved himself and said with slight regret, okay? It's good to quit, so we don't have to miss anything, so let's just have enough today. Right. Where's my star sister-in-law? She didn't come with you to Magic City? Chen Feng was a year younger than Gu Xingyi, so he had always addressed Xia Shiryao as sister-in-law. Gu Xingyi shook his head. No, I'm here for a bit, she's at home with the kids, it's you, how can your family let you out? Speaking of this, Chen Feng obviously a face of complacency, mysteriously close to Gu Xingyi said, that is naturally in my efforts to come out, I'm not going back to inherit the family's small supermarket? Exempt. Not long after going back, I realized, that which is what small supermarket. It is a national supermarket chain. You say angry or not. My family kept me in the dark for so long, and only in the end did I realize that I'm a rich second generation motherfucker. Gu Xingyi face shocked, when in the university, this goods can not less rub their meals, his monthly living expenses are extremely small, hate a penny peeled into two halves with the kind of. I didn't expect to be transformed into a rich second generation now, I can only say that his family really knows how to play. Gu Xingyi gave a thumbs up. You cow! Now that you know you're the second generation of the rich, why don't you come out if you're not waiting for death at home? Shit! Dude is a man of thought and ambition. How can I be a rice worm? It took a lot of persuasion to get my family to let me out. Chen Feng's face was full of displeasure, an arrogant look of I am a warrior with dreams, not a salted fish. Can can can. Very thoughtful. Gu Xingyi liked Chen Feng's character and immediately expressed his approval. The kebabs were served just in time, so the three of them ate and talked. Right. Old Gu, what are you doing now? Do you want to work with me? I've opened a studio over in Jiangcheng. Gu Xingyi was busy waving his hand and refused, when Xia Shiryao came out to work, he still had to bring up his own child, and he didn't have a dream, he just wanted to be a salted fish. No no. I'm going to be a full-time baby daddy at home. What, that's a lofty enough ideal, isn't it? Chen Feng was shocked. Sublime. It's sublime. You're going to be a gigolo and a soft touch. Cough cough cough. Gu Xingyi was choked and coughed violently for a few moments, who said that being a baby daddy means eating soft food? However, it seems that eating Xia Shiryao's soft rice is also quite fragrant? Gu Xingyi fell into deep thought. Chen Feng was even more shocked when he saw that Gu Xingyi didn't say anything. Holy shit! You don't really want to eat soft food, do you, but the way you look, it does fit ha. Huh? Fuck you. Who says being a full-time baby daddy means you have to be a soft touch? It's not like you can't make money at home. Gu Xingyi sophomorically said, he even saw that Ruan Qing was casting a strange look at him when he said that he was going to eat soft food. Chen Feng, however, patted his shoulder and said in a serious tone, I'm serious, why don't you come and work with me? I'll give you half of my share. 
As you know, my dream is to make anime, to produce anime that belongs to our Chinese country's specialties, so I came out and found a partner with my girlfriend and opened a studio, no, my girlfriend is the dubbing, and when the time is right, I'm going to open a company. You also graduated from the University of Communication and have the right major, how about that? Gu Xingyi listened and pondered for a while, he can see that Chen Feng is sincere for his good, and Chen Feng has always wanted to do animation, from the university that will be, study very hard, but his parents do not approve. I didn't expect Chen Feng to actually obtain his parents' consent to run out now. It's also persistent enough. After thinking about it Gu Xingyi still shook his head. Crazy man, I appreciate the gesture. If you need any help in the future, just let me know, but don't bother doing it together. I'm really planning on being a baby daddy at home. Gu Xingyi patted Chen Feng's shoulder in encouragement. Cheer up. I'm sure you'll make it. All right then. I won't persuade you. You're always welcome to come by any time, but as usual, we'll split it in half, ha huh? If I succeed this time, I'll be able to fulfill my dream. Remember to watch my debut movie. Seeing that Gu Xingyi's mind was made up, Jin Feng also stopped persuading and smiled boldly at Gu Xingyi. The two didn't continue to talk about the subject, but instead ate their kebabs while reminiscing about the fun times they used to have in college. Most of the time it was Chen Feng talking and Gu Xingyi listening, while he was talking he also brought Ruan Qing the skewers she loved to eat from time to time, and Ruan Qing interjected every now and then and said something about Chen Feng. Although no one was drinking, the table was lively for a while. Waiting until the skewers on the table were pretty much wiped out, Gu Xingyi looked at the time, it was already close to 12 o'clock midnight. The three had also stopped talking long ago before Gu Xingyi said, it's almost time for us to go back, that hotel I'm staying at should still have rooms, just so you guys can check in. Chen Feng and Wan Chang nodded at the same time, and the three of them hit the road. On the way Gu Xingyi and Chen Feng were chatting, Wan Chang didn't know who was calling, she walked to the side, her voice was quite small, Gu Xingyi and Chen Feng couldn't hear what she was saying. For a while, the phone hung up, Wan Qing followed, and Chen Feng twisted his head and asked strangely. Who? Wang Jun, there's a bit of a problem there at the studio, calling to talk about the situation. Ruan Chang returned. Ha! Huh? What's the problem? Chen Feng's face was a bit tense, obviously attaching great importance to this studio. Just some equipment issues, it's taken care of, it's fine, you guys keep talking. Only then did Chen Feng let out a sigh of relief and turned his head to continue chatting with Gu Xingyi. Alas! This studio, it's taken a lot out of me. When I was at home in the early days, I worked all night on the script and edited the video for half a year. Gu Xingyi nodded his head, it seemed that Chen Feng indeed did not go into this blindly, surprisingly preparing for so long, and starting to work on it when he was still at home. Don't worry. Madman. I think you'll definitely succeed this time. But who is this Wang Jun? Hi. My partner. Also an anime guy, I met Haru and him at an anime festival. We were chatting quite a bit, he he he. So one became a girlfriend and one became a partner? Ha ha. Yeah, so I'm still pretty lucky, I guess. Gu Xingyi didn't reply, but instead looked at Ruan Xing, who at the moment didn't have much expression on her face, as if she hadn't heard what Chen Feng had said. Gu Xingyi was puzzled, he was quite puzzled why the lunatic's partner called in the middle of the night not to him but to Ruan Xing. But he couldn't say this, even if his relationship with Chen Feng was as good as it was, he couldn't take the liberty of meddling in these issues. Hopefully, I'm overthinking it. Chen Feng's heart was big, and he would not notice many things, but Gu Xingyi, who had been a man for two lifetimes, was different, and through this night's contact, he had a vague feeling that this Ruan Qing seemed to have a bit of a problem. On the surface, she looked close to Chen Feng, but Gu Xingyi always felt that she was far away from him. The three of them returned to the hotel and what Gu Xingyi didn't expect even more was that they had asked for two rooms. Seeing that Gu Xingyi's eyes were a bit strange, and his face reddened, Chen Feng pulled Gu Xingyi to the side and stammered, Xiao Chang, she's a traditional person, not married. So, I understand. Gu Xingyi gave Chen Feng a knowing look before continuing to ask. How long have you been dating her? Chen Feng just thought about it for a little while. It's been almost a year and a half. Haru is a good girl, and it was only because she gave me great encouragement to come out and open a studio this time that I made up my mind to come out. 
All right. Good old fashioned girl. Gu Xingyi patted Chen Fang's shoulder. Crazy, watch things carefully from now on. Just don't worry about it. I know. I've watched this anime over and over again to make sure it's right. There you go. Donkey's head. Gu Xingyi could only pat him on the shoulder once again and speak in a serious tone. It's good that you're happy. Due to the late hour, the three of them went upstairs, and Chen Feng didn't go back to Gu Xingyi's room to catch up with him, and each went back to their own rooms. The next day, Gu Xingyi had just finished her morning run and was ready to call Chen Feng up to have breakfast together. Only to see that they had already packed up and walked out of the room. Old Gu. Something happened at the studio, I have to hurry back. In such a hurry? And no breakfast? Gu Xingyi was a little surprised, yesterday was fine, how did something happen today? Seeing Chen Feng's anxious look, the matter wasn't small? Hmm. I won't eat breakfast. When it's taken care of, we'll go directly to your house as a guest next time. By the way, taste sister-in-law's handiwork. Well, without further ado, I have to rush over now, or I won't make the plane. Chen Feng was still pressing the elevator in his hand as he spoke. All right. I'll see you downstairs then. The trio hurried out of the hotel, and fortunately didn't have to wait long for a cab to arrive. Chen Feng sat in the car and waved at Gu Xingyi. Old Gu, go back, see you sometime. Good. And. Crazy. Always remember to contact me if there's really any big problems. Chen Feng nodded as the car started and slowly disappeared from Gu Xingyi's view. Until she couldn't see the cab, Gu Xingyi sighed, hoping that everything would go well for the madman. Gu Xingyi was originally an orphan, in both worlds, but here, he had family and friends, so in contrast to others, he cherished this hard-won relationship even more. Those who hurt their family and friends, Gu Xingyi would naturally find a way to help them get it back. Chen Feng went back, Gu Xingyi suddenly felt a little lonely, obviously the first two days are all alone over, he came to the lively after this loneliness is highlighted. But fortunately, this loneliness didn't last long, as Gu Xingyi received a call from Yang Changlin just after 9 a.m. His song was picked up by Wahini. According to Yang Changlin, the guys over there just took one look and chose the song out of thousands of submissions. Yang Changlin's tone was very excited, she called Gu Xingyi when he had already arrived at the hotel downstairs, Huai inside is ready to shoot a MV, need lyricist Gu Xingyi to go to the scene to guide a little. To say its guidance is to give advice. After all, he composed the song, so he has a better sense of how the music video should be shot and how the song should be sung. That's Huayin. Huayin's subordinate department. Gu Xingyi organized himself properly and washed up before going downstairs. Outside the hotel, Yang Changlin is still driving that gray Mercedes-Benz, do not know also thought it was an old man driving, the preferences of the imperial sister and other little girls is different. When Yang Changlin saw Gu Xingyi, he stroked the broken hair on his forehead, his eyes glowing a little. Didn't realize. You look like you're dressed for the occasion. Gu Xingyi rubbed his nose and automatically ignored Yang Chenglin's eyes. Let's go. It's getting late, bigger fucks break up early and we can still make it to lunch. Gu Xingyi got into the back seat without saying a word, Yang Chenglin rolled his eyes, he couldn't fit in the passenger seat that big in front? The two of them got into the car, Yang Changlin drove while talking, the director in charge of shooting the music video over at Wayne called but he kept praising you, how is it? Do you have any ideas for the music video and lead singer? Don't go there and fall off the wagon. Yang Changlin was obviously more worried that Gu Xingyi was young and hadn't experienced this kind of situation, and worried that he would get stage fright, so he told him some matters in advance. Don't worry, I've got the numbers. Gu Xingyi was old-fashioned and did not look nervous in the slightest, instead, it was Yang Changlin, who appeared to be a little more nervous than him, the rightful owner. Yang Changlin glanced at him from the rearview mirror and realized that he really didn't have much tension before he didn't say anything more about it. At 9.40, the car stopped at the parking lot in front of a building, Gu Xingyi and Yang Changlin got off one after another, Gu Xingyi looked up and saw the big signboard on the building. CCTV there's a small row of letters underneath, Wahini Headquarters. Bullying. Gu Xingyi didn't realize that he hadn't even been in Huayin in his original life, but in this life, he had actually come, or had been invited. 
Yang Changlin walked ahead, urging Gu Xingyi who was still stopping, the two of them walked into the building side by side together, it should have been Yang Changlin's prior appointment with someone else, they had just entered the building, and immediately a crowd of people greeted them. At the head of the group was an old man with grey hair, the old man, despite his age, had a robust body and still looked radiant, and his eyes were even more refined. This old man was not like other old men at all, there was no trace of cloudiness in his eyes. Followed by a group of middle-aged men, all in their mid-forties, this made Yang Changlin and Gu Xingyi seem very special. Not only were they exceptionally young, but a bunch of older people actually came to greet two youngsters? The other staff members in the building cast their eyes here from time to time, looking at Gu Xingyi and the two of them with a probing look on their faces. Grandpa Lin, why did you come down in person? If my father knew about this, he'd scold me to death. Yang Changlin quickly stepped forward and pulled the old man's hand and pampered him. This action startled Gu Xingyi. Even the gods can't stand up to an imperial sister who's pampered. As expected, a smile blossomed on the face of the old man at the head, full of favor. Lin girl, you don't have to do this. How dare your father scold you. He's lucky you don't beat him up, ha huh? Grandpa Lin. The imperial sister blushed a rare blush and pouted. All right, all right, let's get down to business, this is young friend Gu, right? He's really a hero. A talented man. Good day old man, thanks for the compliment ha, huh? I'm Gu Xingyi. Gu Xingyi politely nodded at the old man. Good. And talented and polite enough to write this song. I'm the director in charge of this music video, Lin Guodong, if you don't mind, just call me Grandpa Lin along with Lin Girl as well. Seeing that Gu Xingyi was both polite and unpretentious, with a look of favor and disdain, Lin Guodong was even happier. He imagined Gu Xingyi to be like this, with a groove in his heart, talent in his belly, and knowing how to be thankful, and there aren't many young people like this nowadays. Grandpa Lin, then the kid will do the honors. Gu Xingyi always had a faint smile on his face, giving off a warm and sunny feeling. Good. Xiao Gu Ah. Let's go upstairs then. Lin Guodong was so happy that he even changed his address, he directly took Gu Xingyi's hand and walked towards the elevator, without the slightest idea of introducing the others behind him. Gu Xingyi could only be forced to follow, but he still nodded with those middle-aged men. The elevator rose directly to the 20th floor, and just after exiting the elevator, Lin pulled Gu Xingyi into the recording studio. Xiao Gu, I heard Lin girl say that you sing very well, is it okay if you sing it first? We received this song and haven't heard it until now? The lead singer hasn't been finalized either. Okay. Gu Xingyi nodded in agreement. Gu, clean singing or? Piano it is, just use the piano accompaniment for this song. Yes. When it came to business, Lin was obviously much more serious, and he put Gu Xingyi alone in the recording studio while everyone else was taken out. As the crew turned the microphone on. A group of middle-aged men also looked forward to watching Gu Xingyi sit down in the recording studio, brewing their emotions. Gu Xingyi, who had entered the work state, was very serious, and it appeared to people outside that Gu Xingyi's expression inside the recording studio had changed with the naked eye. Lin nodded at this, this was pure musicianship. When a musician sings, they should give the song emotion first, not just ghost the song. Inside, Gu Xingyi began to play the piano, as long as the plaintive intro played along. The crowd outside held their breath for a moment, listening to the sound of the piano and looking inside without blinking. Maybe far away or yesterday, here or on the other side. A long road of sorrows and sorrows, people coming together and people going apart. Lin had only heard one sentence before his eyes widened abruptly. That's right. That's the kind of look he wanted to present in his mind. He knew the song when he saw it, and now that he's heard it, he feels it even more. Those few middle-aged men also looked at me and me, their eyes full of incredulity, they didn't expect that the song was really sung, but it was like this. As for Yang Cheng Lin, even though it was the second time she had heard Gu Xingyi sing this song, she couldn't stop her eyes from shining as she stared intently at Gu Xingyi inside. Such Gu Xingyi was just too charming. Gu Xingyi was completely unaware of this, he was already immersed in the song and only wanted to sing him better. The best. No regrets. One day may be far away, maybe we'll meet again. Whether in a crowd in the sky, let me see your face again. Let the tears spread over your eyes, 
though there are no words for tears. Don't want God's halo, just your ordinariness. The song gradually came to an end, Ling Guodong's eyes were already slightly red at this point, he used to be a soldier and could feel the meaning of the lyrics even more. Often those hidden behind the scenes in obscurity, the most ordinary people, is the greatest, should be the most contemporary young people to pursue. But. Of all the stargazers, how many will follow them? It wasn't just Lin Guodong, everyone outside was deeply touched, and they were in the same state as Gu Xingyi at the moment. Turns out. It's true that a good song can infect everyone. As the song ended, Gu Xingyi took a deep breath and calmed his emotions before standing up and walking out of the recording studio. The group outside was still staring at him in bewilderment. Next moment. Everyone couldn't help but applaud for Gu Xingyi, and Lin Guodong was even more excited to go forward and hold Gu Xingyi's hand, his eyes fiery. Gu Ah. That's the feeling. I don't think the lead singer needs to be replaced, so you're on. I have a feeling that this song will take the internet by storm in terms of focusing on ordinary heroes. This is exactly the effect we want to see. Those heroes who usually give quietly deserve it. Hearing such a compliment from the old man, even the long-experienced Gu Xingyi couldn't help but blush a little. However, he still shook his head and said to Lin Guodong with a sincere face, Grandpa Lin, I won't be the lead singer. I have a better idea, why don't you listen to it? Lin frowned, is there a better vocalist than the song's lyricist? There were plenty of people who could sing well, but he believed that no one could understand the meaning of the song better than Gu Xingyi. Seeing that Lin Guodong was obviously a bit reluctant, Gu Xingyi also stopped selling the idea and flew out his thoughts. It's like this, Grandpa Lin, I think this song is more suitable for children to sing, on the one hand, children's voices are more crisp and ethereal, on the other hand, it's more penetrating to the hearts of the people when the flowers of the motherland sing about the nameless heroes. Hearing Gu Xingyi's explanation, Lin Guodong couldn't help but widen his eyes. Oh, my god. This guy is a ghostwriter, right? Yeah. Why didn't he think of that? The children themselves came with the attribute of making people friendly, and with them singing, and with all that material they had filmed, it would definitely reach the hearts of the people. Absolute. It's true that he is the young man he has been looking at. Now Lin Guodong's eyes became even more eager, and even those middle-aged men behind him, as if they were suddenly enlightened, all looked at Gu Xingyi incredulously. They had selected these materials out of thousands to go along with the duration of the song, but they just couldn't settle on a vocalist, and they didn't expect Gu Xingyi to solve it with a single sentence. Xiao Gu. You're really a wunderkind. Are you interested in working at Huayin? Don't worry, your talent won't be buried in Huayin. Lin Guodong rose in love with talent, he wanted to pull Gu Xingyi to his side, it was too much of a waste to put such a talent outside. Don't, don't, don't. Grandpa Lin, I'm just a salted fish, I'm already satisfied that I can help you this time. Gu Xingyi waved his hand and refused, joking. He himself has a few kilograms he can still distinguish, he is just standing on the shoulders of giants to give advice. After all, what had given Gu Xingyi the deepest impression in her previous life was the song sung by the group of children. Lin was speechless, are all salted fish like this now? But he didn't force himself, anyway, Gu Xingyi was here and couldn't run away and he would find him again later when he really had such an opportunity. All right. People have their own aspirations, then Xiao Gu must contribute more this time. Let's talk about it when there are opportunities for cooperation in the future. Come with me, let's look at our footage first and see if you have any good comments on this material. Lin greeted Gu Xingyi and brought him to another working room, this was where the footage was edited, all the footage would go through layers and layers of selection here before being edited into this music video. After entering the room, those intermediaries also began to introduce themselves in a variety of ways, and Gu Xingyi looked at the computer in front of him, with a variety of shots flashing on the top of the screen, each of which featured those silent and unsung heroes. Gu Xingyi was shocked, he didn't expect that there would be so many shots and that many of these shots would end up being eliminated, which made Gu Xingyi a little sad. In his opinion, everyone on the material here deserves to be honored and known by the world. As if Lin Guodong knew what Gu Xingyi was thinking, he patted Gu Xingyi's shoulder. Xiao Gua, there is no need to feel sad, in itself this is their responsibility, and no one will remember which one of them is in this propaganda video, they represent a group, as long as people can be grateful to these groups, 
and subconsciously remember that there are still these lovely people in this society, it's fine. Speaking of which, they should also thank you, as long as the song Ordinary not only suits the tastes of most young people nowadays, but also promotes these energies, we old guys wouldn't have been able to make this kind of song that suits the young people, but we're afraid that people will forget about them, that's why we thought of soliciting for the song. Lin sighed with emotion and smiled at Gu Xingyi again. Luckily you made what we wanted and showed me the blazing hearts of today's youth, and that's good. Gu Xingyi looked at Elder Lin, and then looked at these people who were constantly flashing on the screen, and was really touched by them, and it was true that no matter what world they were in, there was such a lovely group of people. Grandpa Lin, I don't have any of these materials, as well as the production of the video, I'm not an expert in this area, this still needs to be done by you and the others. I honestly can't wait to see the finished video now. Gu Xingyi said very sincerely, he felt that after this group of people's hands to make the finished video out, it must be even more in-depth than the original world. Good good good. We'll definitely make it as soon as possible, by the end of July at the latest, by then this wind will surely blow through the streets of China. Hearing Gu Xingyi say this, Lin nodded his head cheerfully. By the way, I heard from Lin girl that you also have a Dujinchi, right? 10 million fans? And you've posted two songs? By the time this promotional video is launched, and you Douyin account to co-create it. After all, you're also the main force behind this video. Gu Xingyi was confused, why was there still something about himself? He thought that he would just write his name on the lyrics and music column, but he didn't realize that he would have to co-create or even the Dujinchi, which was obviously the old man lifting his own love. To know that the video launched by Huayin, that the number of views needless to say, at that time, the earnings of the traffic alone can make themselves eat seven full. Gu Xingyi naturally would not refuse this, and in his heart, he also became more grateful to Elder Lin. Then I'll thank Grandpa Lin. Gu Xingyi thanked Lin Guodong, his tone sincere. Lin waved his hand, indicating that this was all Gu Xingyi's due. Ending this topic, the people in the room discussed the details of the follow-up work, which involved a lot of specialized knowledge, and Gu Xingyi didn't say any more, just listened silently. By the time Gu Xingyi walked out of the Huayin mansion, the time had unexpectedly come to one in the afternoon. Now his whole brain was bloated, and when those guys talked about work, one of them was so positive that it was comparable to a workaholic. In the end, it was only when Yang Cheng Lin pouted that he wanted to go for lunch that the two escaped. Lin had also wanted Gu Xingyi to join the group to dabble in a meal at Wei Yan's cafeteria and continue to participate in the discussion in the afternoon, but Gu Xingyi got out of it with the excuse that his head was already empty. Those expertise he, a layman, really couldn't intervene and didn't need to continue to stay much longer. The two of them walked out of Huayin side by side, the weather was fine when they arrived, but now it was actually drizzling. Gu Xingyi. Shouldn't you treat me to a meal? Create something with Huayin. We're going to be rich. The two of them headed for the parking in a light drizzle, and Yang Chang Lin, in a rare moment of playfulness, poked her tongue out and snickered. This Mikado was becoming less and less of a Mikado. Gu Xingyi raised his eyebrows. You're a big man with a big family and you're going to rip off a commoner like me. How dare you? Cut. Cheap. Yang Chang Lin gave him a blank look, her footsteps quickened and she got into the car first with a puff of air. Gu Xingyi smiled and hurriedly followed, the more familiar he became with this imperial sister, the more he could feel that she had a really good personality, and didn't have the slightest sense of oppression that he felt when he first met her. Typical cold outside and hot inside. In the end, Gu Xingyi still couldn't escape the meal, allowing Yang Changlin to beautifully dabble in a big meal. After dinner, Yang Changlin drove Gu Xingyi to Sound Sea Entertainment, this time coming here to pick up the contract, Gu Xingyi's initial goal, Xia Shuriao's signing contract. The two rode on the elevator, I do not know why, Gu Xingyi suddenly felt that Yang Cheng Lin interest seems not too high appearance, the whole person wilted, obviously the goods just rubbed a big meal. Gu Xingyi didn't understand that a woman's mind was too difficult to understand. It's like this day, it changes at the drop of a hat. Out of the elevator, straight to Yang Xian's office, he had been waiting in the office for a long time, and the contract was ready on the table. He had a perpetual smile on his face as he looked at Gu Xingyi who pushed the door open. Little friend Gu, happy cooperation. The contract is here, see if there's anything else you need to add? Gu Xingyi nodded and sat down in front of the desk, reading the contract in person. 
The contract was very formal, in triplicate, as long as Xia Shuriao signed it would take effect immediately, and the content of the contract was the same as what was said before, Sound C Entertainment would give Xia Shuriao the top-level resources and the maximum degree of freedom. Just one sentence, Xia Shuriao did whatever she wanted to do on her own, no one could force her. This is what Gu Xingyi wants to see, the cycle of the contract is two years, after which the contract will not be renewed all depends on Xia Shuriao's own meaning. After reading the contract in its entirety, Gu Xingyi put it away and stood up, extending his hand to shake Yang Xian's. Thank you, Chairman Yang, happy cooperation. Being able to give such a contract, Gu Xingyi's feeling towards him was also a lot better, at least he wouldn't be like other black-hearted capitalists, who open contracts with traps everywhere. No need to thank you. I see your talent, you see our company's resources, it's just a mutual benefit. Also, you once promised to write songs for our company, which I won't create a separate contract for you, I believe in Gu Xiaoyo's character. Yang Xian also stood up and shook hands with Gu Xingyi and said. Gu Xingyi naturally wouldn't push back, but likewise stated his point of view. Don't worry. But I can say yes on the premise. I'll only write hit songs, and it's all up to me who I write for, so don't come to me to write songs for any cat or dog. I don't have time. There was a temper. And the talent to back up this temper, Yang Xian's feeling towards Gu Xingyi was getting better and better, only when he saw his daughter's appearance on one side, he secretly sighed again in his heart. It's a pity. What's the point of getting married so early at such a young age? With Gu Xiaoyo's talent, not the company's top stream singer's lack of songs I will not invite you, after all, I also know that in the future, with your fame, written will be a fine product, the general public does not have that qualification. The cooperation between the two parties was happily concluded. Yang Xian suddenly turned his words at this time, now that the contract has been obtained, when is young friend Gu ready to go back? Gu Xingyi didn't know what he meant by asking this, but still answered immediately, I'm going to go back to the hotel now to pack up and book a flight, and I'll be leaving in a while, after all, I'm no longer needed for things here. Is there anything else Chairman Yang would like to explain? No. Nope. Then I wish you a good homecoming. Yang Xian said with a busy smile, only the smile looked in Gu Xingyi's eyes, how come he was suddenly so happy when he heard he was leaving? Without doing much thinking, Gu Xingyi got up to take his leave. Yang Chenglin sent Gu Xingyi all the way to the entrance of the hotel without following her, and from the moment she entered Soundsi Entertainment, it seemed like her excitement had never been too high. Gu Xingyi. I'm not going to see you off to the airport, you go by yourself. I still have some things to do, so I'll go first. Gu Xingyi turned his head and waved his hand. Good. Be careful on the road. Then he turned his head and headed for the hotel. Yang Changlin looked at Gu Xingyi's back, inexplicably a little angry, and left the place with a kick of the gas. Finally I can go home. Missed my little baby. This is Gu Xingyi at the moment from the heart of the idea, he quickly packed up his belongings, there is nothing much, just two change of clothes. Book a flight, check out, get a cab, all in one go. Six o'clock in the afternoon, Zhang Chung, Gu Xingyi hand carrying a full of gifts, step into the familiar shabby neighborhood, footsteps actually more brisk. In his eyes, even the mottled walls around him seemed to be cordial at the moment. Until he pushed open the door of his long-lost room, the house was still spotless, and the air was filled with a nice fresh scent, Gu Xingyi took a hard breath of air before striding into the living room. The living room was quiet, Xia Shuriao and little Nai Nai didn't seem to be at home. Without immediately seeing the person they met, Gu Xingyi was vaguely lost in his heart. However, the next moment, the door of the master bedroom was suddenly pushed open, and Xia Shuriao rubbed her misty eyes and walked out playfully. At the first sight of Gu Xingyi, she jolted awake and unconsciously looked at him with wide eyes. She was wearing a halter nightgown at the moment, one of the halter straps falling off to the arm, her hair in a sleepy mess, and her mouth slightly open, in the pose of a sleeping beauty. Both of them froze at the same time, just quietly looking at each other under the afterglow of the setting sun, and then Gu Xingyi's face gradually brightened up with a big smile. I'm back. Xia Shuriao's face slowly rose red, standing in place not knowing what to do, her heart was a little flustered, yet there was such a hint of sweetness coming up. Ah. Uh. She lowered her head and responded softly, not forgetting to subconsciously pull the sling that had fallen down her arm quietly over her shoulder. Right, this is for you, I happened to see someone selling them on the side of the road when I came back, they smelled pretty good, 
So I just stopped by and bought a bunch. Gu Xingyi suddenly took out a bouquet of lavender from behind his back, the small purple flowers were in full bloom, and the light of the setting sun draped it in a light golden color, which was very pretty. Xia Shiryao pursed her lips as she stepped forward to gently receive the bouquet of lavender from Gu Xingyi's hands, her face already crawling with a blush. It was the first bouquet of flowers she had ever received from him, lavender, the language of salvation and hope, and she loved it. Thanks. Xia Shiryao gathered her courage and raised her head, looking straight into Gu Xingyi's eyes, her eyelashes gently blinking. You. Have you eaten? Gu Xingyi smiled abruptly. Nope. I'm sure you guys haven't eaten either, right? I'll make dinner and you go wake up Nina? Xia Shiryao's intention was to do it herself, he had just come back from being outside and must have been tired all day, but seeing the persistence in Gu Xingyi's eyes, and thinking that his cooking was indeed too much better than her own, she finally nodded her head. I'll go get Nina, she'll be so happy to know you're back, she's been asking me about it for the past two days. Xia Shiryao said and turned around to return to the master bedroom, this time she didn't close the door behind her, but just left it open. Gu Xingyi looked inside, only to see that today's master bedroom was very different from what he remembered long ago, and little Nai Nai was lying on her back on all fours, sleeping soundly. Xia Shiryao gently picked her up and she didn't even react. It wasn't until Xia Shiryao carried the little one to Gu Xingyi, kissed her little face, and whispered in her ear. Nana wake up, daddy's home. Nana suddenly made a move, she slowly opened those cute almond eyes and looked around in confusion. Then there was a sudden look of God in the little guy's eyes, and his two little short hands reached out and waved at Gu Xingyi. It's daddy. Daddy hug. Nana missed you so much. The little guy was like a wombat, and after being hugged by Gu Xingyi, he wrapped his arms around his neck and didn't want to let go, hanging on all the time. Even when Gu Xingyi went to the kitchen to cook, she was unwilling to spill down. In the end, it was Xia Shiryao's stern face, plus the temptation with Gu Xingyi's newly purchased toys, that finally removed the little one and placed him on the sofa. Little Nai Nai was playing with her toys while her big eyes were still looking towards the kitchen from time to time, fearing that Gu Xingyi's figure would disappear again. After a short time of work, the meal was served. Three bowls of steaming noodles were served with two small dishes, one meat and one vegetarian, and the family sat down at the table in a happy atmosphere. Xia Shiryao looked down, the noodles in the bowl were paired with two bok choy, and as usual there were two fried eggs, which were golden and very tempting. She gently picked one up and put it in her mouth, and her eyes narrowed in enjoyment. I have to say, Gu Xingyi's cooking is really delicious, he went out for the past few days, and he already didn't want to take a bite when he ate his own cooking again. Little Nai Nai had already taken her little chopsticks and sucked them up, a noodle was sucked down by her in an instant, at the same time her pair of eyes had turned into a crescent moon. This way of eating was like Xia Shiryao had starved her for days, making Xia Shiryao angry and helpless. The technology is not as good as it should be. What else can I say? This also made Xia Shiryao speed up her eating, for some reason, when the two of them were at home, they didn't seem to have this appetite, and as soon as Gu Xingyi came back, their entire being inexplicably relaxed. Xia Shiryao ate while rambling, it was scary to think about it, in the past they hated to stay away from this man, just a short time down the line, they were actually corrupted by him subconsciously. The only sound left on the table was the sound of sucking, until Xia Shiryao finished eating, only to find that Gu Xingyi and Xia Nai Nai had finished eating at some point, and the two of them were actually synchronized to make a salute to her. Xia Shiryao's pretty face could not help but be red again, busy wiping her mouth to stand up to hide her embarrassment, and put away the dishes on the table. I'm going to do the dishes while you spend more time with Nina. She folded the bowl in front of Gu Xingyi as well and picked it up to head towards the kitchen. Looking at Xia Shiryao like a gust of wind generally floated to the kitchen, Gu Xingyi shook his head, he really did not want to grab with her this time, what she panicked. Daddy! Come build blocks with Nana! Yes! Little Nai Nai jumped down from the stool and pulled Gu Xingyi's hand towards the front of the sofa, where there were the new toy blocks Gu Xingyi had bought for her today, which could be matched into the shapes of various items. The previous princess house, which had already been packed up by little Nai Nai, was now erected in the master bedroom in its entirety, and Xia Shiryao would still take it out from time to time to play house games with the little one. Now that there are new toys, the princess house is definitely going to be cold for a while with this little guy. With Gu Xingyi's help, little Nai Nai was building blocks and putting together the shape of a small house while giggling in a milky voice. 
Gu Xingyi deliberately asked about the recent developments at home at this point. The little guy was even more knowledgeable, especially when it came to Xia Shiriao, the little guy even sold his mom short. Mommy will miss daddy too. Oh. I can see that. Mommy would often watch videos of daddy singing and sneer. Gu Xingyi secretly covered his mouth and laughed, he really didn't mean to ask about this. The key was that little Nai Nai was still talking very loudly, not realizing in the slightest that Xia Shiriao had already killed her way out of the kitchen. At this moment, Xia Shiriao's pretty face was as red as a ripe apple, but her eyes were full of coldness, staring condescendingly at this little traitor who was selling her mom for her dad's pleasure. Noticing that her dad had suddenly stopped talking, Nana looked up in confusion and saw a big red face on her mom. She hid in Gushingi's arms with a ya and kept chanting, I can't see, mommy can't see. Xia Shiriao couldn't help but laugh in exasperation, reaching out to pat the little ones but that was exposed outside of Gushingi's arm, while her eyes stared at Gushingi's snickering face as she explained. Don't you listen to Nina's nonsense? I. I didn't. There it is. Mommy cheated. It's not good to lie. Little Nai Nai's small face was buried deep in Gushingi's arms shouting in a muffled voice. Xia Shiriao's eyes were about to explode, and Gushingi immediately threw up his hands and surrendered, revealing the little one completely. No. No. I believe you. The one who knows the time is a handsome man. It was just that little Nai Nai was miserable, immediately being fished over and ravaged by Xia Shiriao. The little guy's big eyes were starry as he reached out to look at his dad, who was sitting upright in the distance, not at all expecting his dad to turn around and sell himself to his mom. Gu Xingyi watched his eyes and nose, in order to be able to make Xia Shiriao smooth, in order for this family to prosper, he could only let his little baby condescend a little. The family hangs out for a while. Little Nai Nai eventually commiserated and took it all by herself, building blocks there alone. Gu Xingyi rubbed her little head before he stood up and took out a paper file bag from his suitcase, placing it in front of Xia Shiriao. Successful completion of the mission, look at this, it's a contract from Sound and Sea Entertainment. Xia Shiriao glanced at Gu Xingyi who looked serious, her eyelashes blinking slightly, signaling the unrest within her. He was out there for just a couple days and literally got himself a contract. Xia Shiriao lowered her head, picked up the file bag and unwrapped it, flipping through the contracts inside, and all the way to the end, her hands began to tremble slightly. It was a contract she had never even dreamed of having, top-notch treatment, the perfect level of freedom, even if she had never retired before and continued to sing until now, she would never have had such a contract. Xia Shiriao didn't know how he did it, just a few days, what he went through. How much did he pay? To be able to exchange for such a signing contract that one wouldn't even dare to think about. Xia Shiriao raised her head and looked at Gu Xingyi in a daze, tears in her eyes, pursing her small lips, just staring at him. He still had a gentle smile on his face, as if it was all so cloudy. Only after a long time did Xia Shiriao softly speak. Gu Xingyi, actually, I'm fine without singing. The voice was small, but it was very firm without any hesitation. Gu Xingyi then frowned slightly in disbelief, clearly she liked to sing, clearly she wanted to sing, now what did this mean? Somewhat inexplicably, he couldn't understand what was going on in this woman's head. Why? Haven't you always wanted to sing? Why are you backing out now that the opportunity is there? Gu Xingyi's tone intensified a bit, this was the first time he had come here to talk to her like this. After a lifetime of being a single dog he naturally wouldn't understand, Xia Shiriao's heart was in turmoil at this time, she suddenly felt that it was quite good to live like this. When she did go to sing, she was afraid of the changes that would come afterward, afraid that she would never live again never to be like she was now. Xia Shiriao's small mouth pursed gently again, looking straight at Gu Xingyi, teardrops slipping down one by one. After a few moments, she said quietly, I'm afraid, afraid of the bad changes that will come later. This was the first time Xia Shiriao had directly told Gu Xingyi about the fear in her heart. Gu Xingyi froze for a moment, then his slightly furrowed brows instantly stretched, and he suddenly smiled a warm smile. He picked up a tissue and raised his hand to gently wipe the tear stains that Xia Shiriao had slid down her face. Xia Shiriao. What do you take me for? I'm telling you very seriously, feel free to go. No matter what happens. None of this will change. I'm staying home with the kids. 
After all, I'm ready to be a full-time baby daddy. Xia Shiryao completely didn't expect Gu Xingyi to say this, and even went straight to her hands to dry her tears. Xia Shiryao, who had not encountered this level of intimacy for too long, instantly lowered her head shyly, her originally slightly red face instantly flushed, not even having the time to think about her previous chaotic thoughts. Gu Xingyi thought that she was still afraid of all this mess, he knew that now, and knew that Xia Shiryao should be afraid of making changes. After all, People who have been at home for too long without ever going out will always have that mentality. So he spoke again, I mean it. Just leave Nanachan to me, I'll take good care of her. And as you can see, you have a lot of freedom with that contract. You can come back whenever you want. Don't worry about home, just take care of yourself out there. Gu Xingyi spoke, but Xia Shiryao didn't listen to a single word, her head was still filled with the scene where Gu Xingyi had just gently caressed her face. Little Nana on the couch had long since begun to sneak a peek at her mom and dad's interactions. She could clearly see that the corners of her mouth had curled up slightly on her mom's face with her head down. Dad, on the other hand, was still there, nagging all the time. The little one had no idea what was going on, only that her mom should be happy right now. And dad still worried about mom. So she jumped onto Gu Xingyi's lap, tilted her face up, blinked her big eyes, and said out of the blue. Daddy! Nana is going to sleep with mommy and daddy tonight. When these words came out, Gu Xingyi was instantly petrified, and Xia Shiryao even looked up with stunned eyes at the little one, a heart that was about to jump out of her heart with a poof. Okay. Daddy. Seeing that Gu Xingyi didn't agree, little Nai Nai turned on her pampering technique and rolled on Gu Xingyi's lap. Gu Xingyi gulped, turning his head to look at Xia Shiryao, who had turned red even on her neck, his eyes dodging. It's. You'll have to ask your mom if she agrees. How was this going to make herself answer? Xia Shiryao was so shy that she collapsed a little, she stood up in a panic and walked towards the bathroom. I. I'm sleepy, so I'm going to go wash up and get ready for bed. Xia Shiryao hurriedly escaped, leaving Gu Xingyi and little Nai Nai wide-eyed in the living room. Gu Xingyi had already numbed his claws and was completely at a loss as to what to do, but it was little Nai Nai who jumped up from Gu Xingyi's lap and hugged his neck. Mom said just as soon as dad's ready. Xia Shiryao had said that? Gu Xingyi turned his head to look at the closed bathroom door, vaguely able to hear the sound of washing inside. That's okay, right? Gu Xingyi took a deep breath of the milky scent of the little one and braced himself, he was totally doing it for little Nai Nai. Not because of anything else. After a while, Xia Shiryao came out of the bathroom and went back to the bedroom without moving, and didn't even glance over to the sofa when she passed by the living room. Only then did Gu Xingyi stand up with little Nai Nai in his arms, and came to the bathroom to help the little one finish washing up, and then briefly washed himself before coming out with the little one in his arms. It wasn't until this moment that his heart began to race, the short distance from the living room to the master bedroom seemed like a long time to him, until his feet were completely in the bedroom and his head had gone blank. A light, fresh scent wafted through the room, nice and inviting. Gu Xingyi had never experienced this in his two lifetimes. He wanted to ask for help at the moment, what should he do? What should he do? Xia Shiryao had already burrowed into the quilt as if she was asleep, facing in sideways, unable to see her exact appearance at this time, only her crystal red earlobe showed her current state. Gu Xingyi closed the door gently behind her, the sound of the door closing caused Xia Shiryao's body to shake a small amount, but she still didn't get up. Gu Xingyi has now completely swung for the fences, it's all like this, it's useless to be nervous, just lie flat. Thinking this way his mind did lighten up a lot, placing little Nene in the center he sat down on the other side of the bed and wrapped his arms around little Nene and began to read her a bedtime story. Today daddy told Nina the story of Snow White. Once upon a time, there was a lovely little princess like Nai Nai, whose skin was as white as snow and as rosy as a red apple and whose hair was as black and shiny as the night sky, so her mommy named her Snow White. Gu Xingyi's gentle words echoed in the room, Xia Shiryao's eyelashes moved slightly, and that violent heart slowly calmed down as the story unfolded. In the end, she actually fell asleep without realizing it, and like her, little Nai Nai also slowly fell asleep during Gu Xingyi's story. The night was already deep, and Gu Xingyi saw their breathing slowly calming down before he turned off the light and got under the covers to lie down. The pillows were all filled with that familiar light fragrance, and Gu Xingyi knew for the first time that the original girl's pillow was so fragrant. 
Cuddling the little Nai Nai beside him, along with the scent, Gu Xingyi also quickly fell asleep. There was no talk all night. The next day, Gu Xingyi's biological clock was still on time, and he woke up at 6 a.m. M. Just after dawn. He subconsciously wrapped his arms around the soft, delicate body in his arms and then froze violently, when did little Nana get so big? Gulp. Gu Xingyi gulped, his eyes looking towards the quilt, where was little Nai Nai's figure in his arms. It wasn't the little guy, but Xia Shuriao. Gu Xingyi was completely dumbfounded, when did it happen, how did she drill her own arms? The faint fragrance lingered on the tip of his nose, the delicate body in his arms was soft and warm, and Gu Xingyi's Dao heart instantly shattered. Gu Xingyi unconsciously leaned down until he was so close to Xia Shuriao's pretty face that he could feel her warm breath hitting his face, scratchy. With only a stone's throw between them, he could make out the flush beneath her delicate skin. Gu Xingyi just stopped, doing a drastic mental struggle. Then he saw her long eyelashes blink gently. Frightened, Gu Xingyi hurriedly sat up straight again, quietly drew back the arm she had pressed under her neck, arched his back, carefully got off the bed, and scurried out of the bedroom. Gu Xingyi, who had reached the bathroom to wash up, was filled with frustration. This early in the morning. It's too torturous too. What Gu Xingyi didn't know was that he had just walked out of the bedroom, and Xia Shuriao on the bed actually opened her nice almond eyes and let out a slight sigh of relief. She covered her burning face and shrank back under the covers, looking like she couldn't be seen. Just as Gu Xingyi sat up, Xia Shuriao woke up. She didn't know when she ran into Gu Xingyi's arms and even used his arm as a pillow. It was just humiliating. It wasn't until she noticed Gu Xingyi's breath hitting her face that she felt some panic in her heart. What does he want? Trying to kiss himself on the sly? What should I do? Xia Shuriao panicked to death at that time and did not dare to wake up, can only continue to pretend to be asleep, fortunately Gu Xingyi stopped in time, otherwise she really do not know how to face him. It was only when Gu Xingyi really drew away that she vaguely felt a little lost again. Xia Shuriao didn't know if she was ready or not, she only knew that her heart was in turmoil. After a long time, Xia Shuriao, who had burrowed into the quilt, exhaled deeply, let nature take its course. After nesting until 8 o'clock, Xia Shuriao heard the commotion of the door opening again outside before she climbed up from the bed and cleaned up and walked out of the room. Gu Xingyi had already arrived in the kitchen to prepare for cooking, and when he saw Xia Shuriao come out, his expression was a bit unnatural as he greeted her. Morning. Xia Shuriao's expression was also a bit unnatural, she didn't even raise her eyes to look at him, she just gave a soft response. Morning. After that, he went into the bathroom to wash up. Gu Xingyi didn't think much about it and continued to turn around to make breakfast, not realizing that Xia Shuriao quickly washed up and came straight to the kitchen. I'll help you along. With a natural expression, Xia Shuriao skillfully took the basin in Gu Xingyi's hands and helped Gu Xingyi pan the rice. Gu Xingyi was only slightly stunned for a moment, and quickly reacted, readily accepting the kindness and turning sideways to start washing the vegetables. The two were in tune, like a couple who had lived together for years. The small kitchen was extraordinarily cozy at the moment. Twenty minutes later, the golden millet porridge with two plates of small dishes came out smoothly, Gu Xingyi took off his apron, washed his hands, and naturally walked into the master bedroom, waking up the little Nai Nai, who had already slept in the corner of the bed, to fish for it. The family had a pleasant breakfast. After the meal, Xia Shuriao saw a very beautiful hairstyle that was perfect for little Nai Nai, and it just so happened that the little guy's hair had grown quite a bit lately, so she cajoled and tricked him into taking little Nai Nai out for a haircut. And Gu Xingyi skillfully nestled onto the sofa, took out his cell phone, opened Douyin, and swiped the video. Summer, air conditioning, Wi-Fi, watermelon, wife and kids not at home. This day, Gu Xingyi felt that life had reached its peak at the moment. Just after swiping no more than two videos, Gu Xingyi saw that the teaser trailer for as long as it's ordinary had actually appeared. Wahini's speed is efficiency. The video comes out at the end of the month, and it's only the 26th, and the teaser is already online. The teaser for as long as it takes to be ordinary was simple, a couple of video clips paired with two lines of a song that whetted the audience's appetite. Gu Xingyi had just clicked on the teaser video when his voice unexpectedly came out of his cell phone. Falling into the grey falling into the abyss, stained face of dirt. There is no halo of God, hold the mundane in your hands. 
They were followed by three firefighters with extinguishing guns, facing the blazing fire, their faces smeared with ash and their eyes unusually resolute. The video came to an abrupt halt at this point, with only a low voice ringing out. Them. Nameless. Them. Ordinary. Them. But worth remembering. Gu Xingyi was puzzled as to why the trailer featured his own voice when Lin had clearly said that he would use the children as lead singers. But that doesn't take away from the fact that this trailer has been a hit online. A clip, a lyric, a statement. It's brief but deep enough that the teaser has only been out for only two hours and it's already killing it at number 10 on the Hot 100. This was also helped by the fact that one mainstream media outlet after another was scrambling to cover it, and they were heavily publicizing the trailer with various headlines, as well as getting the trailer into the sights of all the major online bloggers. Anyone with a discerning eye knows what kind of heat it's going to be when this main movie comes out, so they're starting to retweet it as well. As major online bloggers retweeted the teaser, the teaser heat intensified and comments from all over the world rocketed. Hats off to the heroes. One line of the lyrics and I got goosebumps. Ordinary reveals touching hearts, the uncooled fervor engraved in the blood of the Chinese people. Looking forward to the main movie. Definitely the first to watch it. Support the unsung heroes. Have forwarded. Let more people see the romance that is uniquely our country of China. I just want to say, why does singing this voice sound so familiar? Where have I heard it before? And I can't remember, whatever. Let's like and favorite it first. I cried when I saw these three young firefighters, my son is a firefighter and our family is scared every time we go out on a mission. They stand up to everyone. Only sorry for their loved ones. Auntie. I can understand you, in fact it's not just firefighters, I'm a nurse and my mom has been secretly wiping her tears at home every time she collapses from exhaustion outside the operating room. Sister nurse upstairs, so heartbreaking. So want to hug you. Are you serious with this hug? Sister nurse don't let him fool you, let me do it. I'm serious. Shit. I was going to cry. You two bastards made me laugh again. Now I'm crying and laughing at the same time. Various comments appeared in the comments section, but none of them were looking forward to the appearance of the main movie, and the fervor engraved in everyone's bones guided them to start paying attention to these silent and unsung heroes. Gu Xingyi, who was brushing the comments, was relieved that the song, the video, the old man's efforts were not in vain, and everyone saw and felt it. It's good that the feelings and ideas they were trying to convey weren't buried, and that the one touching story that wasn't ever known was competing for attention in the comments section. The door opened. Gu Xingyi put down his cell phone and looked toward the door. It was Xia Shiria holding little Nai Nai who came back from outside to get a haircut, and seeing little Nai Nai's new hairstyle, Gu Xingyi only felt his eyes light up. The original little guy's two little crochets have been balled up into two small pulls, tied with two beautiful big red ribbons, the forehead's thin chi bangs have been left to the eyebrows, and the original thin broken hair on the ear side has also been gathered behind the ear. Living a little fairy out of the fairy tale world, looking at Gu Xingyi's heart is going to melt away. Gu Xingyi was busy holding out his hands. Whose little fairy is this? Come here, give me a hug. The little guy immediately smiled to see the teeth, even some twisted ran to Xia Shiria behind, hold her thighs, small face buried deep. Xia Shiria was all amused by little Nai Nai's actions, watching the interaction between this father and daughter pair with amusement. Hi. Hi. The little guy's still shy. Gu Xingyi wasn't going to spoil her. He only wanted to hug his cute daughter now. He stood up, walked over to Xia Shiria and squatted down beside her, pretending to be surprised, Aya. This little fairy turns out to be my precious daughter. Saying that, and ignoring little Nai Nai's struggles, he picked her up from the ground in one hand, and looked at the little one's slightly reddened little face up close. Lingering big eyes, pink little face now also has a little meat on it, Gu Xingyi is how to see how to like. He unconsciously reached out and lightly scraped his fingers over the bridge of the little one's delicate, smooth little nose. Nana doesn't want daddy to hold her? Then daddy will be sad. Think. Daddy's not allowed to be sad. The little guy immediately wrapped his arms around Gu Xingyi's neck and arched and arched in his arms, afraid that his refusal would strike his father. Gu Xingyi happily kissed little Nai Nai's delicate face. 
3-0. The little guy's pampering is too foul, while Gu Xingyi completely adorable, even the bottom of the heart is like eating sugar sweet. It's true what they say about daughters being their father's coats. All right, all right. Don't get tired of being at the door. Get in there. Xia Shuriao laughed and closed the gate behind her, pushing these two bottomless show of love father and daughter towards the house. Gu Xingyi cheerfully hugged the little one and sat back on the sofa, digging a mouthful of watermelon into his daughter's mouth, then turned his head to look at Xia Shuriao and said, By the way, are you reporting for work at Sound and Sea Entertainment at the beginning of August? At those words, Xia Shuriao also sat down on the sofa, a pair of beautiful eyes blinking lightly. Well, before that, I'm going to pick up Lele and then go find Sister Yun, they'll be very happy if they know I can make a comeback. Xia Shuriao said, a smile on her face from the bottom of her heart, before she hastily retreated from the circle, she was most sorry for these two people, now even if not for her own dream, for the sake of the two of them, she has to work hard to be right. Aha! Gu Xingyi nodded and rubbed little Nai Nai's hair, but in his heart he was pondering what song he should write for Xia Shuriya when the time came, this was the first battle of her comeback, she had to play it beautifully. Xia Shuriya's tone was very good, whether it was a sweet song or a sad song she could handle, so there were so many to choose from that Gu Xingyi was a bit indecisive for a moment. After pondering for a moment to no avail, Gu Xingyi thought of something else. Right, go buy a car in the next few days, no. By two, in another month, Nai Nai should be in kindergarten, it's convenient to transport her back and forth, in addition, although Sonic Sea Entertainment will give you a nanny car, you still need a car when you go out during your usual leisure time. Xia Xiao pondered for a while, also think can buy a car, before has been at home do not go out, there is no car does not matter, now have to often go out, no car is really inconvenient. But she was worried that Gu Xingyi didn't have enough money on her, after all, the proceeds from the first two videos had been used to buy a lot of furniture, and Gu Xingyi had gone out on another trip, so she didn't know how much was left. Although before Gu Xingyi went out last time, he tied his bank card to Xia Shuriao's WeChat, but Xia Shuriao didn't know exactly how much money was in it. Nai Nai is going to start kindergarten again soon, and then it will be another expense. After contemplating, Xia Shuriao raised her head, a hint of worry showing in her brows. Let's buy one first, it's convenient for you to go out and pick up the kids at home, I have a company issued car outside for now, so I shouldn't need it too much, and I'll think about buying a car when I've made some money. Xia Shuriya thought that she would consider these issues when she released her songs, made an album, and had earnings. Thinking about this Xia Shuriya was a little sad again, she herself wasn't sure when she could have a singing, although the contract from Soundsea Entertainment was a top-notch resource, there was also a clause attached to it that the songs were self-prepared. She didn't know how Gu Xingyi talked to the company, the resources were given to the top, why didn't he help himself with the song appointment? She was a bit puzzled, after all, she didn't know a few songwriters herself. Thinking of the lyricist, Xia Shuriao suddenly froze, then looked at Gu Xingyi who had a calm face. It seemed like he could write songs. Although he didn't know when he had learned it himself, one of those two songs on Douyin was still one that he had taught to Nana on the spot. Gu Xingyi naturally knew Xia Shuriao's worries about not buying a car, and he calmly waved his hand. Don't worry, you don't have to worry about not having enough money at home, let the bullets fly for a while. There will be money in a few days. July 30th, just in time for Sunday. The music video for As Long As It's Ordinary went online at 8am. M. Right on time, and was co-creatively launched by Huayin and Xingyao's account, with Huayang joining forces with many other departments to forward it at the same time, in a lineup that could be described as unprecedentedly luxurious. Of course, as luxurious as the lineup is, what the audience wants to see is still the quality, and only when the quality is over the top will people buy it and pay attention to the story behind the music video. But there's a saying that's been circulating on the internet now, that when Star Yao produces something, it's a masterpiece. Although Gu Xingyi had only uploaded two songs, he had captured the ears of countless fans, and everyone was satisfied with the quality of the songs he had created. Now that we see that the lyrics and music of this music video are actually both Xing Yao, everyone is also instantly interested. If this mysterious guy doesn't make a move, it's bound to be amazing. So the viewers clicked on the music video to get a glimpse of the spectacle. In the old neighborhood of Jiangcheng, Gu Xingyi's family of three also nestled into the sofa early, and Gu Xingyi cast his cell phone to the TV and tapped on Douyin. Xia Shuriao and Little Nai Nai were still in the dark, they only knew that Gu Xingyi had dragged them up early in the morning and said that he was showing them something good, they didn't know what it was. 
Gu Xingyi clicked the music video of the song on, and the family looked at the TV at the same time, in the moment when the music video image just came out, Xia Shiryao and Little Nai Nai were quiet at the same time. They were a bit surprised, only to see the title as long as ordinary appear in four big words on the TV screen, and the lyricist underneath was clear as Xingyao. And the music video was seven minutes long, even Gu Xingyi was confused and didn't know where he got such a long duration, Lin Guodong was trying to show him the finished movie when he contacted him earlier, but he didn't agree. He wanted to share this moment with his family, and he had immense faith in Lin's expertise. Xia Shiryao turned her head to look at Gu Xingyi, a strange color in her almond eyes, she was surprised, he wrote another song. And it's still co-written with Hua Yin. Just horrible. So he went out and did all that before? Didn't even know it himself. Xia Shiryao shifted her gaze to the TV once again, wanting to see just what he had done behind his mother's back. As soon as the title ends in the music video, a group of energetic children around the age of 10 appear on the screen, uniformly dressed in black short sleeves, and in their midst is a middle-aged teacher playing the piano. The piano plays and the camera pans out, giving a close-up to the first little girl, who opens her mouth to sing with deep emotion in her eyes and a hand outstretched as if gently summoning something. Maybe far away or yesterday, here or across the river. The scene shifts to a group of firefighters in orange uniforms with tough faces, carrying various rescue supplies and using their bodies as bridges to cross the river. The camera panned again, switching to another little girl, who was already slightly red-eyed, lowering her brow and murmuring softly. A long road of sorrows and sorrows, people coming together and people coming apart. The little girl's figure gradually blurred into a family sitting around the table, eating dumplings, watching TV, which should be a joyous reunion, but the place is quiet, only the grandmother sitting on the first seat to hold back tears watching the TV. On the TV was a report of his grandson's heroic death. Two more little girl figures appeared one after the other, singing softly. Letting go of right and wrong is the answer, living bravely. Without the aura of God, you and I were born ordinary. After two lines of singing, the figure disappeared and turned into an unassuming looking man whose eyes were glittering, staring at the thief who was stealing from the bus. The moment the thief got his hands on him, he yanked the thief, but the nearby onlookers were scared and hid far away, and they all watched with cold eyes. In an instant, two more thieves surrounded the man, and the situation was momentarily unfavorable for the man. Countless people who are watching this video, at this time cannot help but seize the heart, fists clenched tightly, eyes with tears, itching to drill into the video, to help him subdue the thief. But the video footage was hidden at that point, and the teacher just played the piano silently as one of the little girls sang again. Recognizing regret and heartbreak, life is long and short. The scene abruptly arrives at a hospital, where a tired doctor hands over a newborn baby to a pair of elderly men, who cry tears of joy on the spot, thanking the doctor over and over again. Beating hearts grow vines, willing to fight for danger. The baby grew, and he was no other than the man who had caught the thief, who at the moment was facing the three thieves, yet his face remained unafraid. The camera switches again and two more little girls appear, their hands open and calling out. Down into the grayness into the abyss, with dirt-stained faces. Without the halo of God, hold the mundane in your hands. Moved. One of those onlookers, a grizzled migrant worker, took a firm step forward and stepped in front of the man, facing the thief. His furrowed face was so determined at the moment, and as he did, one commoner after another took a step forward to confront the three thieves. A look of horror visibly spread across the faces of those three thieves, who seemed to be in disbelief as to how these ordinary to the dusters dared to take this step. Just then, the camera shows a young boy with a hopeful light on his face, humming softly. This heart has no regrets in this life, the fire of life has been kindled. As it played, all the viewers who were watching the video couldn't help but cry tears of joy as they saw and saw the three thieves being subdued by a combined effort. This heart has no regrets. No regrets in this life. The fire of life is lit. The piano music continues, the images continue, but the fire in everyone's heart is lit, this sadness, this touch, this little bit from the side. They noticed. Another little boy appeared, and the corners of his mouth flicked up. One day it may be far away, and maybe we'll see each other again. The scene turns to the group of firefighters who have dribbled across the river, at the moment covered in mud but full of joy, as countless people clip-clop and wave. Whether in the crowd in the sky, let me see your face again. 
The camera draws closer. These firefighters are only about 20. Their faces of childishness has not yet completely faded, but this one a childish face at the moment is remembered by countless people. Those who were entwined in the road to see them off, although there was not a word in their mouths, but all kinds of things in their hands were stuffed into their arms, and the hot tears with smiles were spread all over their faces. At this time there is no sound, at this time there are no words but tears. The figure of a little girl also appeared at that moment, singing softly in a clean and pure voice. Let the tears spread over the eyes, though there are no words for the tears. In the next scene, an unseen image emerges of ordinary people, who at the moment are so extraordinary in the eyes of the audience. Don't want God's aura. Just your ordinariness. The piano continued to play, and everyone was infected by the deeply moving music and images, and they just hated that they hadn't realized earlier that there were so many lovely people around them. Throughout the music video so far, the heroes appearing in this have not said a single word, but what they have done has been memorized by all the viewers. The scene continues as a chorus of all the children begins, rocking the crowd, the innocent voices singing the tear-jerking story that brought everyone to silence. They usually stargaze and frolic online, and for the first time, some kind of fire was lit in their hearts. The song ends with a picture of all the children singing in unison. This trip this life has no regrets. The fire of life has been lit. The screen fell into darkness and a male voice suddenly sounded. We're not heroes, we're just doing what we're supposed to do. Gu Xingyi nestled in the sofa, rubbing his glazed eyes, he had thought that this video would be very insightful, and he didn't realize that actually shooting it was so shocking. Xiao Shiria was already sobbing uncontrollably, nestled in Gu Xingyi's arms, her eyes full of crystal and teardrops constantly dripping down, like a beaded curtain with broken threads, wetting Gu Xingyi's clothes constantly. Little Nai Nai at this moment is also deflated little mouth, little golden beans from time to time slipped from the face, the little one has already had the initial view of good and evil, she saw these kind brothers and sisters so hard, the heart is also very aggrieved. People are emotional, and this video has by now made all the countless netizens who watched the music video tear up and break their collective defenses, and at this point no one is paying attention to the length of the video anymore. They just watched silently, silently heartbroken, silently weeping. After the man's words ended, a line of dialogue rang out again from the darkened screen. Goo, clean singing or? Piano it is, just use the piano accompaniment for this song. Yes. Simple one by one question and answer, just the male voice of this conversation many netizens feel familiar, they listen carefully, and then suddenly realize that this is not Xing Yao that unique gentle voice? So the back is an egg? Starry Yao himself will appear? Sure enough, a sheet of eliminated material flew across the screen behind it, and Gu Xingyi's unique gentle voice rang out, matching the material, once again allowing the majority of netizens to break their defenses. This then. Have to cheat myself out of another wave of tears, I'm crying my eyes out. Until the last piece of material disappeared, Xing Yao's figure didn't even appear, he was still so mysterious. But all were satisfied that the material, one figure in this video, was seared into the hearts of all. They will never forget what they saw and heard today for a long time to come. Even the main movie was sent out for a long time, not a single person liked it, not a single person commented on it, everyone seemed to have disappeared en masse. At this moment in Wei-In's conference room, Lin Guodong had been looking at the real-time data on the internet, and he couldn't understand why there were more than 100 million people watching at the same time, but not a single nod of approval. Don't people recognize this video? Lin was a little lost, and he wiped his slightly red eyes, having some difficulty accepting the situation. However, the next moment, only to see the data of this video, suddenly took off, and the number of likes and comments even exploded like a flood. One shot. This is the first time in the history of Douyin, in such a short period of time, the data has risen in a well, just a few breaths, the number of likes from 100,000 soared to 5 million, then 10 million, 20 million. The Duwap platform had its first ever jam screen. Even so, it seemed as if it couldn't stop the majority of netizens from liking and commenting in the slightest, they were curious about this music video released by Huayin from the beginning, and then they were looking forward to it when they saw that it was composed by Xingyao. But now that they've seen it completely, they're completely moved by it. Empathy Is the most intuitive feeling in every heart right now? This video, too, rushed straight up the hot search from the end, firmly occupying the first place on the Douyin hot search list, and right after that, the following five hot searches were all about the music video of As Long As It's Ordinary. 
A violent burst of cheers erupted from Hua Yin's conference room. Lin also clenched his fists in excitement, speechlessly watching the rapidly rising data. It turns out that it's not that people don't feel it, they haven't had time to digest the feeling. Another half hour passed. This heat is not only Douyin, and even spread to Weibo, Weibo hot search is clear of the topic of this MV, the majority of netizens are constantly discussing. I don't know which netizen was the first to see that the Huayin platform had uploaded the music of the pure version of As Long As It's Ordinary. And it was set to be free. He informed the crowd with a mere post on the Huddle blog. At this time, everyone who had seen the music video rushed to the bottom of the Wahini platform and scored it. Download. Favorites. One key triplet. The storm of As Long As It's Ordinary just swept across the internet, blowing up so quickly that the knowledgeable Lin didn't even expect it, and he was now incredibly glad that he had chosen this song by Gushingi. This is material that, if it were any other mediocre song, would certainly not be as hot as it is. After just one hour, the number of plays of the single song on the Huayin platform had broken through 100 million, and Douyin had even broken through to 200 million plays. What a terrifying figure this was. This has also led to the entire network now, the hottest topic is today's music video, no matter which social media platform, this topic is firmly occupying the top one. No one can shake the first big brother on the list. The whole audience was commenting on it, and those figures were deeply imprinted in their minds, and they couldn't calm down for a long time in their hearts, and they needed to let it out. They shouldn't just be buried. To be hidden. We should remember the scene we saw today and pass on the spirit. This one figure set to a song like this and then sung by these kids, I literally cried my eyes out. They are also the children of their parents. Some of them don't even look older than me. But watching them use their bodies to build bridges across the river, I really couldn't hold it together. Don't want God's aura. Just your ordinariness. This trip is not regrettable in this life. The fire of life has been lit. I'll see who dares to smack bully them later. I'll go up there and do a sliding shovel. Without their contribution. How can we have a stable life? I've really seen it today. When I grow up. I want to be like them. Be one of those people. Never fails to touch an honor. How many unsung heroes have given so that we are now prosperous? Thank you Wahini. Thank you Star Yao. Let us hear and see such a deep and good work. Xing Yao Ah. I'll be your biggest fan from now on. I love every song of yours. I can't listen to any other songs since you appeared. I'm a diehard Star Yao fan. From the moment his first video appeared. I knew it. This. The. Van. No. 1. Normal. Oh I'm still moving. It's just a shame. He still hasn't shown his face. It's a no-show. But I got it. His last name is Gu. Gu Xingyao? And why is it like a girl's name? The comments section is basically full of compliments and feelings. Only a small number of brainless black people just said a word and were immediately drowned out by the army, this kind of what, no one will spoil them. There was also a portion of people who were Gu Xingyao's fans themselves, and after seeing this video, they directly turned into die-hard fans, and they felt happy at this moment that they could fan such a person. Within this day, the entire Chinese entertainment industry was shaken up. No matter which entertainment company or individual. All silently retweeted the video after seeing it. This kind of heat they are beyond envious, but they cannot envy, they can only follow the silent rubbing the heat, forcibly selling a wave of persona. It was noon, and at the moment, Gu Xingyi was wrapping his arms around the big and small beauties, tenderly rubbing one's head and patting one's back. He wanted to open his mouth, but he didn't know what to say, because he himself was touched, and although he had given the song to Lin, the entire video was a creation of the Yin film crew, and he hadn't gone through it in advance. Let's just say that Wahini gave the song a perfect home. Nestled in Gu Xingyi's arm sobbing lowly Xia Shuriya took Gu Xingyi's corner of the coat, the tears and snot will be wiped on it, a grieved little poor look caused Gu Xingyi a burst of heartache. It's not just watching a video, just cry, why are you still aggravated? 
Xia Shuriya finally realized what he had been busy with out there the other day, creating such a song, working with Yin, helping himself to that unrealistic contract, what he had been through, he didn't even know himself. She was aggrieved that Gu Xingyi had done so much outside and came back without telling herself, had he suffered outside because of this? Did he give anyone a hard time? And how much energy it took to create such a song? She knew nothing but to sit contentedly at home, even as he returned with a bouquet of flowers representing salvation and hope. All right, all right, don't cry. Want some lunch? I'm going to go make you something nice to eat, will you hold Nina? Gu Xingyi gently patted her back again. The little guy was tired of crying and had long since fallen asleep under Gu Xingyi's soothing presence. No. Got it. You go blah. Xiao Shuriao forcefully wiped the tears on her own face once again on his clothes, and got out of his arms, pouting her little lips as she carried Nai Nai into her own arms. The voice is soft and melodious. Meanwhile, in the center of Jiangcheng City, the branch of Tianmei Entertainment. Lu Qian's face was gloomy as if it could drip water, her agent, Sister Yuan, was equally pale, and the atmosphere in the room was sullen. Only Dorothy was snickering not far away, gloating. Lu Qian glanced at her agent, the more she felt that this aged woman was really useless. Sister Hope. Wasn't my song originally scheduled to go live on Wa Yin at the end of July? What's going on now? The song has been jacked down and I'm supposed to put it back online at the beginning of August? The company's doing all the publicity. I just bought the hot search. They're good. Not only did they postpone my song without a word, they dominated all the hot searches, Sister Yuan. You've been in charge of this, you have to give me an explanation. Sister Yuan's face became even more gloomy, she was already in a bad mood after such an incident, and now Lu Qian was still yelling at herself, for a while she was even more furious in her heart. Explanation? You want an explanation from me? Why don't you go to Wayin if you have the guts? Why are you so angry with me? Originally, this activity over there was scheduled to end in mid-August, but who knows where a Xing Yao came from, and one song froze Wayin's music video to go online earlier. If she didn't still have to rely on Lu Qian for food, Yuan didn't even want to pay attention to her. So what now? Lu Qian's tone is still very strong, Yuan frowned, they are now a grasshopper on a rope. They cannot turn their faces, they can only take a deep breath and patiently said, what can we do? We can only wait for this wind to blow over, and then let your album go online, but this time the company's resources definitely won't give too much, we can only rely on ourselves to find a way. Lu Qian also knows that it can only be so, just that she is really angry in her heart. She could only secretly curse Xing Yao in her heart, it was all because of him. Snatching away the heat that originally belonged to her. When Lu Qian turned her face and saw Tao Lele, who was covering her mouth and snickering not far away, she became even more furious. Dorothy! Can't you see what a mess this site is in? Why don't you come over here and clean it up? The sound was sharp and shrill, causing Dorothy to pull out her ears. Ah! Uh, sorry about that. My contract expired today and I've already submitted my separation paperwork. Ha ha! I'm not serving. Dorothy said, grinning broadly, sitting back in her chair with her legs crossed, sipping her tea leisurely. Anyway, they were leaving, so they were giving back a shit about face. Tao Lele's heart was extremely pleasant at the moment. Lu Qian stood up with a swish, pointing at Tao Lele, her face flushed green and white for a while, and she couldn't utter a word for half a day. Some people rejoice, others rejoice even more. Gu Xingyi had lunch, and the family happily took a taxi out, they are going to buy a car at a forest store today. The proceeds from the music video co-created with Hua Yin hadn't arrived yet, but the savings Gu Xingyi had on him were more than enough to buy a replacement car. Their home was an hour's drive from the nearest forest store, and at 2.20 p.m. M. The family arrived at the forest store on time. Welcome, do you have a preferred model, ma'am or sir? The salesman in charge of the reception of the eyes shine, he has several years of sales experience, such a family of three to see the car, 80% can be sold. Gu Xingyi nodded, when he was at home, he and Xia Shuriao both researched ahead of time and finally chose a model before coming over. Got an H9? Top of the line. Yes yes yes. 
Once you hear Gushing you really have a favorite model, the salesman's eyes are brighter, H9, the top of the line, the cheapest landed down to have to be more than 30W. The salesman's eyes are brighter. Sir, we happen to have a current car for the H9 top end over here, and it's two of them. One quicksand gold, one gentian purple, which one do you think you should look at first? The salesman said as he led Gu Xingyi and the three of them inside the store, he was worthy of having several years of sales experience, and what he said was very knowledgeable. He didn't ask Gu Xingyi which one he wanted to see, but asked him which one he wanted to see first, which made people comfortable to hear, as if saying that people like you, no matter which one that is not all randomly selected, this is the art of language. Gentian purple it is. It looks a little deeper. This is also what the two agreed on at home a long time ago, Gentian purple is more noble, and Xiaoshuriya won't lose too much face when she goes out. Monsieur is so discerning. Gentian violet is indeed more suitable for your wife's temperament. The salesman said as he led Gu Xingyi to the front of the car and introduced, this is the H9, Gentian purple, top of the line with a HUD head-up display, panoramic sunroof, steering wheel electric memory seats, rear boss key adjustment, heated seats, and many other features, and the ambient lighting inside the car is very beautiful. Sir, try sitting in it? Gu Xingyi shook his head and let out a laugh. I won't sit down, Xia Shuriao, Nine I will hold it for me, try it. He saw Xia Shuriao's eyes clearly light up when she saw the car, obviously she was quite satisfied with it. Xia Shuriao was a little shy, her cheeks were all slightly reddened, but she still mustered up the courage to hand little Nai Nai to Gu Xingyi and sat in. She had fantasized before that she would have a car of her own, and she didn't think it would come true today. The car is very good, the lines are beautiful and not overbearing, the feel of the hands is good, the engine sound is great, especially this car interior, Xia Shuriya very much like. Seeing that Xia Shuriya was a bit in love, Gu Xingyi was even happier. He boldly pulled out his bank card and driver's license and handed them to the salesman. This is the one. Full payment. Swipe the card. The corners of the salesman's mouth were grinning up to his ears, but he asked professionally. Sir, won't you ask the price? No need. I've been inquiring about the price, you just watch and give a discount, as long as it doesn't exceed the price I inquired about, I'll settle for this car today. Hearing this, the salesman's heart thumped, well. This handsome man in front of him is also a smart person, not telling himself his consultation price, which makes his room for maneuver a lot less. Okay. Sir, I'll definitely give you the best deal, wait I'll go prepare the materials, if it's suitable we'll make a deal. After that, the salesman left with his bank card and driver's license to prepare various documents. Gu Xingyi didn't wait long before the salesman came back with the purchase contract and various materials, and the few people walked over to the lounge area table and sat down. Sir, if you pay in full, we can give you 38. 5W, insurance and license plate are all inclusive, and send you a full set of car seat cover and car coat, you can pick up the car tomorrow. Gu Xingyi nodded, the price was similar to what he had inquired about, and the salesman was quite to his liking. So without saying a word, he entered his pin and swiped his card to pay. All the formalities are over, Gu Xingyi made an appointment with the salesman to come over tomorrow morning to pick up the car, and then happily left the 4S store. When I got home, it was 5 in the afternoon. Gu Xingyi, who had just arrived home, received a call from Yang Cheng Lin. Hey! Big talent, congratulations! Now the internet is full of news about that music video and you, you're totally on fire. Good day, good day, I don't want to be famous that much, but it's your company, you must have gained a lot of benefits this time. Gu Xingyi laughed, his song was sent to Huayin on behalf of Soundsea Entertainment, and their company must have gained a lot of benefits. These benefits may not be seen for a while, but they will slowly appear in the future, and Huayin will definitely be the first to think of them when she has any benefits in the future. That's not thanks to the blessing of you, a great talent, down to business, when will Xia Shuriao come over to report for duty? On the other end of the phone, Yang Chenglin flirted with Gu Xingyi, then asked with a smile. Gu Xingyi looked at Xia Shuriao on the sofa who was stubbing out her ears and quietly eavesdropping on her phone call, and smiled. In a couple of days, the third at the latest, there's some family stuff going on, so I'll go over there after I take care of it. Good. Then I'll be waiting for her here. Yang Cheng Lin was curious in his heart as to what kind of character a woman who could make Gu Xingyi run around for her like this would be. The efficiency of the 4S store is very fast, the next day at 10am. 
M. The salesman called to inform that the car has been on the license plate to do a good job of insurance, you can pick up the car at any time. The task of picking up the car was given to Xia Shiryao, Gu Xingyi didn't go with her but stayed at home to look after little Nai Nai, Xia Shiryao had driven a car before so Gu Xingyi wasn't worried. Arriving all the way to the 4S store, Xia Shiryao managed to mention the car and after trying to drive it for a while, she drove to the city. She was going to find Lele and sister Yun and bring them along to Soundsi Entertainment tomorrow. Xia Shiryao had already made plans to report to Soundsi Entertainment tomorrow, and although Gu Xingyi said she could go later, she didn't want to. She also had her own little mind, besides singing being her dream, she didn't want to be like a vase that would only rely on Gu Xingyi. At the moment Xia Shiryao didn't know that Tao Lele had already left her job, she drove to reach the Tianmei Entertainment building not far away before she called Tao Lele, she wanted to give her a surprise. The phone was quickly picked up, Xia Shiryao had a smile on her face, even her voice was much brighter. Joy! Guess where I am? Tao Lele was packing up her things in her rented house, after leaving her job she planned to hit the road back to her hometown, she had already thought about it, here is no place to stay, there is a place to stay. Can she, Dorothy, still not find a job? It was also at this time that she received a call from Xia Shiryao. Sister Shioyo, where else would you be if you weren't at home? Idiot. I'm downstairs in your office. Come on down. I have something to tell you. Ha? Huh? Then Sister Shioyo, wait for a while. I'll be right there. Tao Lele was a bit flustered all of a sudden. Why did Sister Shiryao run downstairs of her company? For a moment, she was a little unsure of how to tell Xia Shiryao that she was leaving her job to go back to her hometown. Fortunately, the house that Tao Lele rented was not far from the Tianmei Entertainment Mansion, and in a short while, she ran downstairs out of breath, looking around. Until she heard a joy. I'm here. She turned her head to look, only to see Xia Shiryao getting out of a brand new car and waving at herself. Sister Shioyo. Talua Li's eyes narrowed into a nice arc as she quickly walked over to Xia Shiryao. Sister Shioyo. You bought a car? Tao Lele looked at the brand new car next to Xia Shiryao with an unbelievable face, that man would even buy a car for Sister Shiryao? Isn't he not good to Sister Shiryao? Xia Shiryao smiled and nodded, taking Tao Lele's hand. Yeah. I just bought it. I have something to discuss with you today, are you free? Xia Shiryao's almond eyes curved up slightly, a happy expression leaping out on her face. It was only then that Tao Lulu realized that the Xia Shiryao this time seemed to be a bit different again from the last time she saw her. Her skin was quite a bit more hydrated, her face was a bit more rounded, her complexion was obviously much better, and most of all, it was the confidence in her that seemed to have returned. Seeing Xia Shiryao like this, Tao Lele's eyes were a little bright, her sister Shiryao, had returned. Sister Shioyo. I'm free, more than enough. Tell me what's up. Joy. Come back as my assistant again. Let's get Sister Yun together, I'm making a comeback. Xia Shiryao took Tao Lele's hand with a longing light in her eyes. Dorothy froze, she couldn't believe her ears. It took her a long time to come back to her senses, and she couldn't help but grip Xia Shiryao's hand even harder. Really? Sister Shiryao. You're not lying to me, right? You're making a comeback? Really? Xia Shiryao gave an affirmative answer. Yay! I knew it. There's no such thing as the path of joy in heaven, ha ha ha. Sister Shioyo, what a coincidence. I just resigned hey. We can be together again. Tao Lele jumped up all of a sudden and danced happily, she dreamed of continuing to fight side by side with her Shioyo sister. Xia Shiryao froze for a moment, she then realized that Lele had all left her job. Joy. You. I'm sorry, I was too willful in the past, it won't happen again. It's all because of herself that Lele and sister Yin are like this, when she thought of this Xia Shiryao blamed herself and felt sad, even her previous cheerfulness dissipated a bit. Hey ah! Uh. Sister Shioyo! People have the right to make their own choices. I don't blame you, I'm sure Sister Yun won't blame you either, and you're making a comeback now. We have to look towards the future. As soon as Taolulu looked at Xia Shiryao falling into self-blame again, 
She was busy stabilizing herself and hugging her to comfort her. Aha! Lele, you know where Sister Yun is, right? Then let's go find her now. I know. She's definitely at the Qingpu District People's Hospital right now taking care of her mom. Every day, except for the four hours she's at work, Sister Yun will be there. Good. Then let's go now. Xia Shiryao didn't waste any time, directly letting Tao Lele get on the car, the two of them rushed towards the hospital. In the car, Tao Lele curiously looked at this brand new interior inside the car, and then looked at Xia Shiryao who was focused on driving. Sister Shioyo, does he know about your comeback? Xia Shiryao nodded, the corners of her mouth unconsciously curling up gently. I know, he's still the one who went to negotiate my contract for this comeback, and the car, he bought it for me. Tao Lele's small mouth slightly opened in shock as she exclaimed out in disbelief. He negotiated the contract for you? How can that be? Sister Shiryao. You won't lie to me. Xia Shiryao shook her head and said seriously, it's true, he helped me negotiate the contract of Soundsea Entertainment, and it's the top kind. Tao Lele didn't know what to say, she couldn't figure out how she could negotiate a top contract with just Gu Xingyi's kind. Seeing that Tao Lele didn't reply, Xia Shiryao continued to speak. Gu Xingyi. He's really quite good to me now, so don't treat him with that attitude anymore. Oh Sister Shioyo, domineering husband protector oh. I'm jealous. The kind that can't be coaxed well. Taluolo pouted her lips and pulled a very long coda, poking fun at Xia Shiryao. Xia Shiryao's pretty face steeply flushed red, but she did not retort. The car quickly arrived at the hospital as the two chatted, Xia Shiryao and Tao Lele carried the fruits they bought on the way all the way to the hospital's inpatient department. Third floor of the inpatient unit, room 302. Xia Shiryao knocked on the door with apprehension in her heart, and the moment she saw Sister Yun, she nearly cried out. Originally a head of green silk Yun surprisingly gave birth to some white hair, tough face is now also full of vicissitudes, haggard, wearing a plain cloth clothes, washed to the white kind. This appearance was the same as the previous Xia Shiryao, and it could be seen that she was having a bad time as well. Upon seeing Xia Shiryao, Sister Yun completely froze and stared at her in a daze. Xia Shiryao didn't know what to say, the two of them stared at each other, speechless for a moment. It was Dorothy who was the first to run in and take Sister Yun's hand. Sister Yun, Sister Shiryao, and I have come to look for you, how is Auntie's health? It was then that Yun reacted, a little panicked, her two hands tangled together. Why didn't you tell me in advance when you came, look at me like this, Shioyo? Shioyo, come in and sit down. I just put my mom to sleep, she's okay, she can eat and drink, and she'll heal with another surgery. Speaking of her mother, only then did a hint of a smile appear on Yun's face, only the smile hid a hint of bitterness. She is at the end of her tether, she still owes 100,000 or so outside, her relatives and friends at home have all borrowed, and the next operation, what will she take to pay for it? Xia Shiryao walked into the ward and sat down, she lowered her head and bit her lip, like a child who did something wrong, not daring to look at Sister Yun again. Tao Lele patted Sister Yun's hand and her gaze went to Xia Shiryao. Sister Yun also looked at Xia Shiryao, looking carefully, and a moment later a smile of relief appeared on her face. She approached her and sat beside her, taking her hand. Shiryao, I'm happy that you came to see me, I'm even happier to see you like this now, it means that you're doing well, in the past, Sister Yun stopped you, it was for your own good, don't take it personally. Sister Yun. I'm sorry. Xia Shiryao couldn't hold herself together any longer and directly jumped into Sister Yun's arms, tears sliding down her face like raindrops. Sister Yun gently patted Xia Shiryao's back and said softly. No need to apologize, what kind of mother blames her child? I really do treat you like my daughter. Well, don't cry, you'll turn ugly if you do. Xia Shiryao was an orphan, but she had been taken care of by Sister Yun since she graduated from college. From the time she was unknown, to the time she became popular by participating in a singing competition, to the time she retired, at all times, Sister Yun was by her side. So when Yun said what kind of mom would blame her child? Xia Shiryao cried even more fiercely, Sister Yun was guarding her step by step, it was really like a mother caring for her own child. That's why it wasn't her who was hurt the most when she willfully retired from the circle, but Sister Yun. 
Sister Yin gently patted Xia Shuriya like this, until she was tired of crying and raised her already red and swollen eyes to look at herself, only then did Sister Yin smile gently at her. Xia Shuriyao pursed her lips. Sister Yun, I'm going to make a comeback, will you still come and be my manager? Hearing Xia Shuriyao say that, Sister Yun froze for a moment, then frowned her good-looking eyebrows. Let's not talk about the comeback, what about your child? Are you comfortable with that Gu Xingyi kid taking her? Compared to Tao Lu, Yun was more sensible, she clearly remembered that the kid looked less honest and didn't look like someone who would bring up a child. But Xia Shuriyao nodded her head. Gu Xingyi is Nai Nai's father, he'll take care of Nai Nai, I trust him. Sister Yun rubbed her temples, not knowing what had happened in it, but looking at Xia Shuriyao's look of determination. Well, even if he can take care of the kids, you have to realize that a comeback is not easy. Do you have a company you can sign with now? Even after signing, what kind of resources will the company give you? Sister Yun, look. This is the contract for Sound and Sea Entertainment. Xia Shuriya was busy taking the contract out of her bag and handing it to Sister Yun, fearing that if she was a little late she wouldn't believe her. When she saw the contract, Sister Yun froze, it was actually Sound Sea Entertainment, one of the three giants in China? Okay, let's see. Saying that, Sister Yun took the contract and carefully looked through it. Then the more she looked at it, the more shocked she became, and when she saw the back of it, her hands had begun to shake slightly. What kind of divine contract is this? Xia Shuriao kidnapped the owner of Sound and Sea Entertainment? This is a completely unequal contract. To the entertainment company, so many of these looked like overbearing clauses that Xia Shuriao had given to Sound Sea Entertainment. Like top of the line resources. Like unrestricted freedom. Like two year contracts. Yun snapped her head up. It's true. Really? Sister Yun, look. There's even a chapter from Sound and Sea Entertainment on it. How could it be fake? Xia Shuriao hurriedly explained. Sister Yun was completely dumbfounded, looking straight at Xia Shuriao, this contract, the articles inside she as an agent had never seen in her life. Outrageous. Sonic Sea Entertainment went crazy. Sister Yun. It's true. I'm going to report to Sound Sea Entertainment tomorrow. Seeing that Sister Yun was still a bit unconvinced, Xia Shuriya busily continued to explain, and only then did Sister Yun believe it, only that her face was still full of shock. It's this. Xia Shuriya, tell me honestly, how did you sign this contract? Seeing that Sister Yun finally believed in herself, Xia Shuriya was relieved and her face blushed slightly. It's Gu Xingyi who went to Magic City to help me bring it, he wrote a song for Sound and Sea Entertainment. Gu Xingyi. Sister Yun simply doubted her ears. Gu Xingyi negotiated a contract for Xia Shuriao? And writing songs? Isn't that a pipe dream? Away from the great spectrum of the world. Shiodio, never mind that Sister Yun doesn't believe him, he can write songs? Fine. Even if he can write songs. What kind of song would be worth such a contract? Shioyo. Don't let him fool you. Sister Yun. He really wrote a song. Seeing that Sister Yun didn't believe Gu Xingyi, Xia Shuriao hurriedly took out her cell phone and opened Douyin to tap Xingyao's account and handed it to Sister Yun. Sister Yun half-heartedly took the cell phone, even Tao Lele on the side also came over, she also didn't believe that man could still write songs. Yet the next second. Oh my god. Over 100 million likes. Dorothy exclaimed exaggeratedly, then suddenly scowled again with an apologetic smile. It's a hospital room, and yelling so much on your own will affect the patients. Sister Yun was also dumbfounded, what video over 100 million likes? Then she saw the name of the account, Star Yao. Followed by Wa In co-creator. Star Yao. Wa In. So it is. Sister Yun did not click on the video, because this video they have seen, Yun looked up blankly. Xingyao is Gu Xingyi? Dorothy exclaimed in return, but this time with a suppressed voice. Xingyao Ah. The hottest and most mysterious guy on the whole internet right now. Right. It seems like his last name is really Gu. The shocked looks of the two made Xia Shuriya blush again, 
and she was happy that Gu Xingyi could be recognized. She said with a flourish, that's right. Gu Xingyao. My daughter's big name. Jeez. Big brother is right around the corner. What was he like before? Was he just pretending to be a pig and eating a tiger? Damn it. Sister Yin also slowed down at this time, she raised her head and returned the cell phone to Xia Shiryao, her eyes somewhat complicated. Xia Shiryao was able to live a good life with a bright future, so of course she was happy. Just. Xioyo, with your qualifications, you can definitely find a better agent. I. I'll just forget about it. No. Sister Yun, you. Sister Cloud. Why? Don't you want me anymore? Tao Lele and Xia Shiryao spoke out at the same time, and Xia Shiryao even had an aggrieved look on her face. Yun sighed and looked into the hospital room. As you can see I'm in this situation, my mother needs to be taken care of and I really can't leave. You can hire a babysitter. Technology is so advanced nowadays. You can watch the situation remotely at any time. Tao Lele said directly, and Xia Shiryao also looked at Sister Yun with a hopeful expression. Sister Yun was in a difficult situation, or she didn't know that she could hire a nanny, but how could her current financial situation allow her to do so? And being like this, following Xia Shiryao would only drag her down. Xiaoyo, you don't need to persuade me anymore, I want to keep my mother, you guys go back. Sister Yun. Go back, Xiaoyo. Such a good opportunity, you must cherish it. Don't be so capricious in the future. Sister Yun rubbed Xia Shiryao's hair and ruthlessly twisted her head to stop looking at her. Xia Shiryao bit her lip, she didn't understand why Sister Yun wasn't willing to go with her. Coming over with hope and going back with disappointment, Xia Shiryao and Tao Luo Lele were silent on the way. Xia Shiryao sent Tao Lele back and drove home alone again. The door to the room opened, Gu Xingyi was playing a game with little Nai Nai, and he couldn't help but freeze when he saw Xia Shiryao. She's crying? What is it? Back? Did things go well? If you don't understand, ask, Gu Xingyi asked directly. Xia Shiryao deflated her mouth and sat down on the sofa, the moment she saw Gu Xingyi it was like she saw a dependence and she wanted to cry a little. Yun doesn't want to go with me. Why? Gu Xingyi scratched his head, from memory that stern woman should have favored Xia Shiryao very much, how could she be unwilling? Xia Shiryao told Gu Xingyi all about what she had seen and heard in the hospital today. She spoke accusingly, and Gu Xingyi listened silently. Until he listened to the entire process, Gu Xingyi nodded thoughtfully. I know, you. Just stupid. You stay home with Nina, I'm going out. Ha? Huh? Where are you going? Xia Shiryao deflated her mouth with a displeased look on her face. She didn't know if she wasn't happy that Gu Xingyi was calling her stupid, or if she wasn't happy that Gu Xingyi wasn't there for her at this time. I'm going to retrieve someone who is important to you. Idiot. Gu Xingyi first found a housekeeping company. Afterwards, he drove to the hospital that Xia Shiryao had mentioned, and instead of going directly to Sister Yun, he took the lead in finding the doctor. He learned the details of Sister Yun's mother at the doctor's place before he ascended to the inpatient section and came to the door of ward number 302. In front of the hospital room, Gu Xingyi organized his mood and tried to make a cold expression on his face as he gently knocked on the door of the room a few times. Footsteps came from inside, and the next moment the door of the room opened. Sister Yun, whose eyes were slightly red, appeared in front of Gu Xingyi. When she saw Gu Xingyi, Sister Yun couldn't help but stare, wondering what he was doing over. Sister Yun? Won't you let me in first? Gu Xingyi's voice was calm, and being a head taller than Sister Yun, he looked imposing. Sister Yun narrowed her brows, but still sidestepped and allowed Gu Xingyi to enter the room. Yun, is this your friend? Gu Xingyi had just entered the hospital room when he saw an old man with white hair and skinny, bone-thin cheeks, sitting prone on the bed and looking at himself. Before Yin could reply, she saw Gu Xingyi walk quickly to the hospital bed and hold her mother's hand. Auntie, my wife is a friend of Sister Yun's, my wife made a trip here earlier and you were sleeping so I didn't bother you. So you're Xia Yun's friends, young man, you've got a heart, it's a blessing for my Xia Yun to have friends like you. 
Sister Yun's mother patted Gu Xingyi's hand with a kind face, only her thin, bony body looked so heartbreaking. Auntie, look at what you're saying, we're lucky to have Sister Yun as a friend. My wife talks about Sister Yun's good qualities every day at home, and my ears are getting calloused. It's just a pity that my wife wanted to go with Sister Yun on this job, but she didn't want to go because she was worried about your health, and you don't know that my wife was sad to go home. Gu Xingyi shattered his words, but behind him, Sister Yun's face changed violently. This guy turned out to be hired by Xia Shuriao to be a lobbyist? What work? Yun, what's going on? Sister Yun's mother didn't know her exact job, and now that she heard Gu Xingyi say this, her florid white eyebrows immediately furrowed. Mom! Don't listen to him, there's nothing working, I have a good job. Sister Yun glared at Gu Xingyi and hurriedly explained to her own mother. Sister Yun's mother is nearly 70 years old, but she is not stupid, she knows that she must have let her daughter worry, which delayed the work. At that moment, she held Gu Xingyi's hands back with both hands and inquired, Young man, Xiaoyun let you guys take the trouble, this kid, is just stubborn, tell me, what kind of work? Gu Xingyi showed a difficult face, looked at Sister Yun, before saying, Auntie, you see my mouth, there is no gate, mainly this work requires travel, would have liked to hire a nanny for you to take care of you, Sister Yun cannot rest assured that she wants to personally look after you. Xiao Yun. You kid, why don't you talk to me about this kind of thing? Since work requires you to go on a business trip, go. Sister Yun's mother turned her head to look at her daughter when she heard Gu Xingyi's words. Mom. Sister Yun was anxious, and in her heart, she hated Gu Xingyi even more. She didn't want to stay here and take care of her mother, but the underlying reason was that she simply couldn't leave, and where would she get the money to hire a babysitter? Even the money for her next surgery was draining her right now. Sister Cloud. Let's go out and talk? Gu Xingyi's face remained calm, as if he didn't care at all about Sister Yun's angry glare, he shook Sister Yun's mother's hand and said cordially again, Auntie, don't be anxious, this is something that I'll just have a chat with Sister Yun. After saying that, Gu Xingyi got up and left the hospital room. Yun gritted her teeth, looked at her mother, and followed. Inside the corridor, Sister Yun glared up at Gu Xingyi. What the hell do you want? Just take me as the bad guy, I just don't want to upset Xia Shiryao. I know her, if you don't go with her, she'll be thinking about you all the time, and by then it'll be good to have 5 out of 10 points of enthusiasm. Right. I've paid for auntie's next operation, and I've contacted the nanny, so I'll give you the phone number for you to choose your own person. Gu Xingyi returned indifferently, the height difference between the two giving him a somewhat condescending air. Ha! Gu Xingyi. You're giving me a handout? Sister Yun laughed angrily. You're overthinking it. It's going to be paid back. In the future, it will be deducted from the salary Xia Yao pays you. You and Lele were brought there by Xia Yao this time, it has nothing to do with Sound Sea Entertainment, I don't care how much she pays you, it's my money anyway. You have to pay me back. Gu Xingyi shrugged with the look of a landlubber. Anyway, I've paid for both the surgery and the hiring of the nanny, and they won't give me a refund, so I don't care what you do next. After Gu Xingyi finished speaking, he didn't give Sister Yin time to react, turning around and striding towards the exit. Gu Xingyi. Don't talk to Xiaoyo. When he was about to reach the door, Sister Yin's voice came, and Gu Xingyi didn't turn his head back, just waved his hand. Sister Yin just watched as Gu Xingyi's figure disappeared out the door, her eyes complicated, before returning to the ward after half a day. Yun, that young man went back? Seeing her coming alone, Yun's mother patted the side of the bed and told Yun to sit down. Don't blame the lad, he's a nice guy, mom's seen enough people to see what kind of guy he is in his eyes. Mom also knows that you are filial, but daughter, there are many paths for people, if you choose the wrong one, you will regret it later. Isn't mom's body fine now? One more surgery and it will be completely cured, and the other doctor also said that the risk is not too big. So don't worry about mom's health, go ahead. If it's really because mom causes you to regret it later, mom's heart will be really sad. Sister Yun lowered her head, silently listening to her mother's instructions, and after a long period of silence, she finally nodded her head gently. On this side, Gu Xingyi had just returned home, when Xia Shiryao came over, her little face full of curiosity. Gu Xingyi purposely didn't look at her, but instead cheerfully picked up little Nai Nai. Nana, what do you want for dinner? 
Xia Shuria's expression was completely frozen in disbelief as she looked towards Gu Xingyi who walked past her. Daddy loves everything he makes. The little guy said very hilariously, not paying any attention to the fact that his mom was crumpling her little face at that moment. Good. Then daddy will do it now. Said Gu Xingyi as he kissed the little one on the cheek and headed for the kitchen. Gu Xingyi. I'm angry. Xia Shuriao deflated her mouth, her face full of aggression, this person even turned a blind eye to herself. I don't know how anxious she is waiting at home. Ha! Huh? What is it? Gu Xingyi turned around with an innocent expression that made Xia Shuriao even more angry, when she went out she was still calling people idiots with a gentle face, but when she came back she was playing dumb? The more she thought about it, the more angry she became, Xia Shuriao sat on her but on the sofa, hugging her chest and skimming her face to stop looking at him. A little tantrum to see you grow. Not bad. Gu Xingyi laughed and decided not to tease her anymore. Remember to bring your two loyal bodyguards with you when you go out tomorrow. With your temperament, if you don't bring them along, you'll be bullied to death when you go out. Xia Shuriao turned her head violently, light flashing in her eyes, the speed of this face change made Gu Xingyi marvel. Sister Yun agreed? What do you say? Okay, I'm going to cook. Please leave me alone. Gu Xingyi, how did you do it? ABA ABA. Xia Shuriao ultimately didn't ask how he did it, playing dumb as soon as he did. But that didn't stop her from looking at him with a light in her eyes, it seemed like there wasn't anything he couldn't do since he'd changed. Gu Xingyi frankly enjoyed Xia Shuriao's adoring gaze. He was a big dog now. Any problem that could be solved with money was not a problem, and the proceeds from co-creating with Wahini made his wallet bulge and swell to the brim. Let's just say that the matter of Sister Yun, after Xia Shuriao told him about it, he probably guessed the reason. People can't even eat. What dreams to follow with you? This also makes Gu Xingyi sigh, men and women look at things and deal with them in a really different way, women are mostly emotional, men are mostly rational. Early the next morning, Xia Shuriao climbed up. Gu Xingyi also rarely went out for a run today, and the two of them tacitly stayed in the kitchen, cooking breakfast together. Xia Shuriao's luggage had already been packed and placed in the living room, little Nai Nai was still sleeping, she wasn't going to wait for little Nai Nai to wake up before leaving, she was afraid that she wouldn't be able to part with it by then. Breakfast was quickly made, and Xia Shuriao quietly ate her breakfast. Gu Xingyi sat beside her, having a chat, they were just like a normal family, the wife was going out to work, the husband nagging and nagging. Go over there and remember to call often, otherwise Nai Nai will miss you, I've already talked to that side, you'll go over there today, and Mordor isn't far away, so come back when you're free. Remember to talk to me about anything out there, don't keep it to yourself like a fool. Xia Shuriao ate her porridge while listening to Gu Xingyi speak. She was suddenly a little frustrated inside and kind of didn't want to leave the house. Xia Shuriao ate this meal very, very slowly, until the kanji was at the bottom and her phone rang, she was still a bit dazed. It was only when Gu Xingyi reminded her that she reacted and picked up the phone. Hey! Sister Shioyo! I'm ready! Sister Yun is with me! When are you coming over? I'll be there later. You guys wait a little longer. Okay, then later, downstairs at my house, I won't see you there. As the phone hung up, Xia Shuriao raised her head and looked at Gu Xingyi, the look in her almond eyes causing Gu Xingyi's heart to tremble. Xia Shuriao looked really good, at least among the people Gu Xingyi had seen in his two lives, there were few existences that could match her, it was just her character that Gu Xingyi felt was too gentle. This is also related to her experience, right? Gu Xingyi, who grew up in an orphanage, is also clear that people who have had such an experience are either paranoid or have a pleasing personality. Gu Xingyi in his original life was like this, since he was a child, he would look at other people's faces and act, he knew the heartache of it, so he didn't want Xia Shuriao to be like this all the time. At the very least, it would be nice to be a little more confident. Gu Xingyi turned his head and looked towards his luggage, not daring to meet her eyes. Time to get going, don't keep people waiting. Well, I'm going to go check on Nene and then I'll go. Xia Shuriao retracted her gaze and said softly, she felt that looking at him like this was already the boldest thing she had ever done. Gu Xingyi gave a hum and walked with her to the bedroom. Little Nana was still asleep on all fours, completely unaware that her mom would soon be leaving her. 
Xia Shuriao kissed her intimately on her little face and buried her face deep in the little one's neck and rubbed it before she reluctantly got up and walked out of the bedroom with a step and three turns back. Gu Xingyi followed her, helped her take her luggage to the car, and watched her get into the driver's seat before closing the door and walking to the side. I'm leaving. Xia Shuriao twisted her head to look at him. Aha! Remember to come home often. Or the little one will definitely cry. Aha! As the car started, Xia Shuriao suddenly turned her head again with a serious expression. Gu Xingyi, thank you. Without waiting for Gu Xingyi to reply, the car drove off. Gu Xingyi smiled, hey. We're all family, so what's the thanks for? The car drove all the way to the center of the city, Tao Lele has long been looking forward to, standing downstairs waiting, her side, Sister Yin shook her head, this little girl worked for so long the character is still so impatient. Sister Shioyo is here. Xia Shuriao's car slowly drove up, Tao Lele hurriedly waved her hand until Xia Shuriao got down from the car, Tao Lele walked up and cheerfully called out. Sister Shioyo. Lele. Sister Yun, you've been waiting for a long time, haven't you? Xia Shuriao pulled Tao Lele's hand and looked at Sister Yun again, saying with some apologies. Not for a long time, it's mainly because Lele, the little girl, is too impatient. Yun had a smile on her face, she didn't think that the three of them would have the day to reunite and work together. Thinking of this, Yun remembered the man who looked like a gigolo, and now it was actually because of him that she was where she was today. Sister Cloud, thank you for coming. Xia Shuriao walked to Sister Yun again and took her hands, shaking them as if she was pampered. Joy and I don't know what we'd do without you. Okay, okay. You're a mom now. Still acting like a little kid. You should be thanking your man, no more talk, go get your bags. The working state of Sister Yun appeared to be still competent, only her words made Xia Shuriya make a big red face, she still didn't know how Gu Xingyi convinced Sister Yun. None of the three had a lot of luggage, just the essentials. The car was easily loaded with all the luggage, and as the three got in, Dorothy waved her hand. Let's go. The bright road ahead. Here we go. What a crazy girl. Sister Yun snickered, and Xia Shuriao's face was covered in smiles. The car went all the way to Magic City. Magic City, Sound and Sea Entertainment Building, Yang Changlin came to the office early in the morning, only she was always distracted at work today. It was not easy to get through to noon, counting the time, Yang Changlin went downstairs and came to the entrance of the building. The guy's wife is coming today. She wanted to see what kind of person the wife she spoiled so much was. After only a short wait, Yang Changlin saw that a car with a Jiang Chang license plate drove into the parking lot in front of the building. Yang Changlin's eyes narrowed slightly as he looked closely. Three people came down from the car, a chirpy, youthful girl with boundless energy, and another older one, with gray hair already on her head, looking at the other two the whole time with a doting smile on her face. Seeing the slightest thing, she knew that Xia Shuriao's character must be very good when she saw these two friends of hers. She turned her gaze to the girl walking in the center, her googly-eyed face was white and red, her almond eyes were like water, her long hair was draped over her shoulders, and she had a gentle smile on her face. The woman who was like water, looking at her made people's hearts ache, no wonder that Gai Gu Xingyi would be so. Yang Changlin gathered his emotions and quickly stepped forward. Hello, you are Xia Shuriao, right? I'm the Vice Minister of Human Resources of Soundsea Entertainment, Yang Changlin, on behalf of Soundsea Entertainment, I welcome you to join us. Yang Changlin smiled and extended his hand, his eyes looking straight at Xia Shuriao. Hello, I'm Xia Shuriao. Xia Shuriao's voice was soft and gentle, she said softly, she was also looking at this imperial sister, the aura on this imperial sister made her envious yet. The voice was unexpectedly good. The people were also unexpectedly clean and pure. Such a woman, how was she abducted by Gu Xingyi that then in the past? The imperial sister thought in her mind, and there was a hint of complexity in her eyes. It is also. Such a person would have the vision to pick up Gu Xingyi, who was useless at that time, right? And these two are? The imperial sister was the first to take the rare step of averting her gaze, and her sights turned to Dorothy and Sister Yun. Dorothy, my assistant, and this is Sister Yun, my agent. Xia Shuriao earnestly replied back. This imperial sister in front of her was very polite to her, 
But there was something strange about her reaction, Xia Shiryao tilted her head in some confusion, then as if she suddenly thought of something, her eyes dimmed a bit. It's a self-contained class. But that's good, it saves time. Yan Chenglin nodded his head with Tao Lele and Yun respectively before turning his face back again. Then let me show you around the place, after all, you'll be working here for the next two years, the sooner you familiarize yourselves with it the better, and after the tour I'll take you to the artist's apartment. Good. Thanks. Xia Shiryao nodded her head and thanked her. Several people followed Yang Changlin into the building, along the way, Tao Lele was simply shocked, this place was far too luxurious than the Tianmei Entertainment branch there in Jiangcheng. And anytime you see celebrities who are constantly on the hot seat. This would not be comparable to the Tianmei branch. You know, over in Jiangcheng, a second-tier singer, Lu Qian, was able to reign supreme. Yang Changlin took them up to the 11th floor in the elevator and enthusiastically introduced them, this floor is all recording studios with all kinds of professional equipment inside. Saying that, he pushed open an unused recording studio to show Xia Shiryao and the girls. The floors we use for singers are three main levels, the 11th floor is all recording studios, and below that we go to the 12th floor, where the singers' lounges are, and generally they stay in the lounges, whether they're working on a song or receiving announcements, and each of the rooms is an exclusive, personal room. Coming out of the recording studio, Yang Changlin brought Xia Shiryao all the way to the 12th floor again, during which there were many people who greeted Yang Changlin, all of them with a strange look of flattery on their faces. Xia Shiryao was quite curious, they clearly had jealousy in their eyes when they saw themselves. She didn't understand, wasn't Yang Changlin the vice minister of human resources? Why was everyone looking at her with such eyes? And what made Xia Shiryao even more strange was that she also saw a balding middle-aged man with the sign of the Minister of Human Resources, actively stopping to greet Yang Changlin, and even greeted himself. Xia Shiryao was somewhat flattered and returned, this minister called Zhang Chao was so good-tempered that he was even so polite to himself. You know when you're at the Tianmei branch, whatever leaders there are, they all look like they have their noses in the air when they see people. At this time, Yang Changlin stopped when she was at the end of the corridor, she pointed to the lounge in front of her and said to Xia Shiryao, this will be your exclusive lounge from now on, usually there's no announcements in the company, and you can stay here all the time to rest when you're not busy. Xia Shiryao looked up and saw that the door to this lounge room was tightly closed, with a combination lock planted on it, and her name was indeed written on the doorplate. Yang Changlin introduced Xia Shiryao while losing the password. These combination locks all have an initial code of six sixes, after that you just change the code, well come and see your lounge. The door to the room was opened and the group entered the room. Dorothy was the first to wow, the lounge was so big and lavishly decorated. The huge floor-to-ceiling windows provide a complete view of the bustling downtown of Magic City, the light grey curtains are tucked away on both sides and can be lowered at any time, and the fluffy, oversized sofa has no problem with three Dorothys sleeping on it. TV, refrigerator, air conditioning are all available, the main thing, surprisingly, there is a leisure area, there is a tea bar, there are tables, usually completely relax and entertain here. Other than Sister Yin who was a bit more calm, even Xia Shiryao was shocked, she had never seen such a luxurious lounge before. Dorothy was even happier and on the verge of fainting, remembering that when she was in Tammy, well, their dogs don't even stay. It's almost like there's no harm without comparison. If it weren't for the presence of outsiders, Dorothy would even want to flop onto the couch and roll around. Yang Changlin looked at the surprised looks of several people and smiled back. Not everyone has this treatment, the top resources, that lounge must also be according to the top. Hear that. Momentarily, Tao Lele felt that Gu Xingyi wasn't so detestable anymore. Until they came out from the lounge, Tao Lele was still immersed in happiness, when the door of the room next to them suddenly opened, and a graceful woman stepped on her high heels and walked out from inside, and she was followed by a small assistant wearing glasses. When the woman saw them come out of the side room, surprise flashed across her face, and then she greeted Yang Changlin. Sister Yang, you personally brought someone to see the room? Um, Lina, is this going out? Yang Changlin returned, his expression flat. Well, there's a meetup this afternoon and I have to go out, so you get busy, Sister Yang, I'll go first. After Lina finished speaking, she glanced at Xia Shiryao and the others and didn't greet them as she stepped on her high heels and elegantly left. Let's go too, it's noon, upstairs are all conference rooms, usually except for company meetings to go, other times basically useless, there I will not take you to visit. 
Let's go straight to the artist's apartment. You guys drop off your bags and then we'll go to dinner. I'll be the host. Yang Chenglin turned back to Xia Shiryao with another smile on his face. Xia Shiryao only felt that she was overzealous. Xia Shiryao's impression of this company today was quite good. It was just a little strange that some people were obviously much warmer to her. Sitting on the elevator, Xia Shiryao suddenly asked softly, Minister Yang, are you? Are you familiar with Gu Xingyi? After asking this, she clearly saw that the smile on Yang Chenglin's face was suddenly stunned for a moment. Is it really like this? Xia Shiryao's eyes slightly converged, and more difficult to understand flavors flooded in her heart. It's okay, I was also the one who received him when he came over, and I've always been the one to follow up on collaborations, so I'm a little more familiar with it. Yang Chenglin quickly said. Aha! Xia Shiryao just gave a soft reply back and stopped talking. A group of people went downstairs, Yang Changlin still drove her grey Mercedes in the front, Xia Shiryao slowly followed behind. As soon as Tao Lele got on the bus, she was mindlessly talking about how nice it was here, until Sister Yin passed her a wink, and it dawned on her that Sister Shioyo seemed to be in a somewhat bad mood? Obviously, I was quite happy before. Sister Shioyo, what's wrong with you? Dorothy asked curiously, picking at the front seat. Ha! Huh? I'm fine, Joy, go ahead. This is still called nothing? Tao Lele puzzled and turned her head to seek Sister Yin's help. Sister Yin smiled and didn't say anything, she could tell at a glance that someone was falling in jealousy. Nainai good boy, daddy will play a tiger for you, let's not cry anymore, okay? Gushingi at home is now ahead of too big, since the little Nainai woke up, noisy to find his mother, Gushingi good talk, the result of Nainai cried even worse. Yesterday, he had assured Xia Shiryao that he would take care of Nai Nai. As a result, Gu Xingyi now only wanted to say, I can't do it. Obviously when Xia Shiryao was at home before, little Nai Nai had been clinging to herself and hadn't cried, now what was going on? In the face of this situation, Gu Xingyi also wanted to cry, he thought he was a king, but now it turned out that he was a bronze. Gu Xingyi bared his teeth and played the tiger, Nai Nai's little pearls still falling down drop by drop. Daddy's bad, hiding mommy, I want mommy. Woo woo. Nana sat on the couch with both feet stomping, looking like she wouldn't rest until she saw her mom today. Gu Xingyi squatted in front of the sofa, scratching his head, what can be done about this? Xia Shiryao had only just left for half a day, so he couldn't just call her back now, could he? Then she'll laugh at herself. No, no, no. Gu Xingyi fell into a struggle, the tiger image on his face instantly collapsing. At this time the cell phone on the table rang, Gu Xingyi glanced at it with a diffuse gaze, and in the next second a light of surprise was abruptly released in his eyes. Here comes the savior. Want to cry? Gu Xingyi hurriedly picked up his cell phone, it was a WeChat from Xia Shiryao, only two simple words. Eh? Gu Xingyi sent the message in a hurry. In. That must be in. Aren't you busy? Xia Shiryao, who had already finished her lunch and was resting in her apartment, looked at the message on her cell phone with a flat expression that seemed to carry so much of a murderous aura. I had lunch with Minister Yun today. What? What the hell is this? If you're having dinner with Minister Yang, then just have dinner, do you still need to tell me? Gu Xingyi scratched his head and didn't care to think too much about it, hurriedly clicking on the video screen call. Xia Shiryao's cool and pretty face appeared on the screen, and Gu Xingyi let out a fawning laugh as he aimed his cell phone at little Nai Nai. Ahem. Nana misses you. Gu Xingyi. This is what you said about taking care of Nai Nai. Gu Xingyi pretended that he couldn't hear and had an innocent look on his face. I just saw the little guy crying his eyes out, and now that he finally saw his mom and his cell phone, he wiped his tears vigorously with his two little hands, aggravated. Mommy, are you being hidden by daddy? Don't you want Nina anymore? Nana be good, mommy is just going out to work and will be home soon, be good and don't cry. Xia Shiryao softly coaxed over there, the little guy actually really slowly stopped the tears, hands holding the phone, want to get closer to Xia Shiryao. Gu Xingyi only felt that her heart had suffered a 10,000 ton blast at the moment. I've been coaxing myself for a long time, making faces again and pretending to be a tiger. But not as effective as Xia Shiryao's words? 
Life is really lonely as snow. Xia Shiria coaxed a few more sentences, and little Nai Nai finally stopped crying completely, Gu Xingyi let out a long sigh of relief. Coaxing the little guy, Gu Xingyi faced the phone towards himself, his eyes fluttering like a thief, just not daring to look at Xia Shiria. Gu Xingyi, can you really bring up a child well? Xia Shiriao's questioning words came out from the cell phone. Gu Xingyi was instantly anxious. Who are you looking down on? Today was just an accident. If I had gone out, you'd have been just as bad at coaxing Nana. Gu Xingyi's face was full of defiance, Xia Shiriao gave him a deep look, doesn't this person have any points in his heart? That's not true. That's not what she called about. The man is changing the subject. Xia Shiriao's eyes slightly converged, pretending to be unconcerned as she asked. You know Minister Yang quite well? Not bad. Gu Xingyi casually replied back, not the slightest bit aware that he was already on the brink of death in a frantic tryst. Not bad. Xia Shiriao looked at Gu Xingyi with ghostly eyes and repeated. Gu Xingyi inexplicably felt a cool air coming, he wrapped his clothes, strange, the day was so hot, could it be that he had a cold? Well, it's okay, are you used to it over there? Not used to it. I have to go now. Xia Shiriao blankly glanced at him and decided not to pay any more attention to him. The video screen was abruptly hung up, and only then did Gu Xingyi feel, as an afterthought, that she was angry? Inexplicable. Gu Xingyi, who was lying down, put his cell phone down and looked at his daughter, who had stopped crying and had become adorable again, who was shrinking on the sofa, and laughed ha ha For the next two consecutive days, Xia Shiriao called home one phone call a day, which saved Gu Xingyi a lot of heartache, but he was surprised that the woman was talking to her daughter every time she called. As soon as she comes to herself, it's like she owes her eight million dollars, nothing good. Gu Xingyi could only comfort herself that there are always so many days in a month for women. Just bear with it and it will pass. Xia Shiriao was very idle these two days. Either in the apartment or in the lounge, the company didn't give her any notices, Sister Yun had been contacting outside lyricists, but unfortunately there was no luck either. This left Dorothy bemoaning the fact that she had nothing to do all day. As of this moment, for example, she was sprawled out on the couch, cuddling with a pillow and complaining. Sister Shiriao, what do you think of Sound Sea Entertainment? Not giving any activities, not even releasing a single comeback news, what's the difference between this and no comeback? Sister Yun was also filled with sadness, in the past two days she contacted quite a few lyricists and composers from the previous industry, but once they heard that it was Xia Shiriya who wanted to make a comeback, they all politely refused. After all, no one is stupid, a person who has been out of the circle for more than two years, who wants popularity but no popularity, who wants resources but no resources, write a song for her? That's not just a shot in the dark. Just be patient again, there's always a way. Xia Shiriao comforted Tao Lele, she had also been trying to compose a song in the past two days, only that she always lacked so much inspiration and had been stuck not being able to do it. It reminded her of Gu Xingyi, if it was him, surely he would be able to make a better song than this, right? Thinking of this, Xia Shiriao couldn't help but feel a little discouraged, she seemed to be inferior to him everywhere now. Should I? You go ask Gu Xingyi? Dorothy suddenly rolled over and sat up at that moment and snapped. Xia Shiriao was a bit hesitant, her intention of coming out was that she didn't want to rely on him that much. She considered it carefully for a moment before saying, let's wait two more days, and if that doesn't work, I'll call him. Okay. Dorothy hugged the pillow in her hands with a slightly dejected expression. She didn't understand that Gu Xingyi guy was Sister Shiriao's husband. Why can't Sister Shiriao just ask him for the song? What Xia Shiriao and the others didn't know was that at this moment, in the conference room of Soundsea Entertainment, Yang Xian and a group of leaders were having a meeting, and an invitation document was placed in front of them. Yang Xian pressed his hand and the noisy conference room immediately quieted down. As you can see, Star Song Exchange, the most famous star-making program in China, the singers who have made their mark on Star Song Exchange in the past are now basically in the top tier. Now that the column is about to start, we have two slots on our side, so let's discuss which two we should let go. After Yang Xian finished speaking, the conference room immediately whispered again, and within a short time, a man aged about 30, wearing gold-framed glasses and a gentlemanly manner took the lead in speaking. I think Chang Di can. 
sweet looking, good popularity, good singing, now located in the second tier of singers, if she can get a ranking in the Starsong Festival, there is a high chance of being promoted to the first tier. As soon as the man finished speaking, most of the people in the room began to nod in agreement. When Yang Xian saw this, he decided to come down. Then there's one for Chang Di, and one more spot, who do you think is better? As soon as the words left his mouth, he only saw Zhang Chao stand up and spoke, Chairman, I think Xia Shiryao can do it too. Xia Shiryao? Yang Xian suddenly remembered, isn't this the person recommended by that Gushingi kid? She has already come to the company? He was so busy these days that he forgot about it for a while. Zhang Chao had just finished speaking, only to see the svelte man speak again, Minister Zhang, I don't think Xia Shiryao can do it. Even a vegetarian is a bit better than her. Not to mention that she wants popularity but no popularity and no works, but let's just say that she retired from the industry in the first place because she got married, that doesn't give the audience a good impression. Zhang Chao, however, waved his hand without caring and argued with reason. That's exactly why we should pick her all the more. Since she's making a comeback in our company, we need to give her a stage. I've heard Xia Shiryao's previous songs and she sings very well. And Xia Shiryao's looks are not bad at all, since that's the case, why can't we pick her? The svelte man sniffed and frowned. Minister Zhang. You're in charge of manpower, I'm in charge of operations. Compared to you, I know more about what a singer needs most is popularity. It's not like we're a charity company. Just because she's in the company should we give her the stage? Minister Yoon. You're telling me about popularity? Then you don't know who recommended Xia Shiryao, do you? Dare I ask Minister Yin. How popular is Xing Yao? What if he's the one who writes songs for Xia Shiryao? In the face of Yin Ping's words, Zhang Chao still responded strongly, only his face at the moment was filled with smugness. You little bastard. Fight me. Eat for a few more years. Zhang Chao had never been able to get used to Wing Ping, who on weekdays, on the grounds that he was the minister of operations, had always acted as a bully in the company, and would even molest female singers, and quite a few of the young singers that he had recruited had spat at him. Simply Sven scum. Zhang Chao abhorred this. Star. Xing Yao? Even Yin Ping was somewhat dumbfounded when he heard Xing Yao's name. He dares to say that Starry Yao is not popular? He wouldn't dare. That music video created with Wayne has hundreds of millions of likes, and it's rumored that all of his fans have reached 50 million. Yin Ping held the gold-framed glasses on the bridge of his nose and looked at the smug Zheng Chao with gloomy eyes. Are you just sure that Xing Yao will write a song for Xia Shiri Yao? All right. Don't argue. That I can determine. Yang Xian pressed his hand, signaling them to stop. In that case, the candidates will be Chang Di and Xia Shiri Yao. Notify down. Seeing the chairman put words in his mouth, Yin Ping could only nod his head unwillingly, there was another candidate in his heart, but unfortunately it was finalized before he had the chance to say anything. The meeting dispersed, and Zhang Chao stroked his smooth head happily, this was the first time he had ever pressed Yin Ping in such a matter. Just be happy. Meanwhile, the same scene was playing out in Shangshu Entertainment, Tianmei Entertainment, and other small entertainment companies. Jiangqing Tianmei Entertainment Branch, Sister Yuan ran all the way, panting, to the lounge, where Lu Qian was fiddling with her red nails in front of the makeup table. Lu Qian, good news. This time it's a blessing in disguise. Lu Qian frowned as she painted one of her nails because of Hope's sudden yelling. What good news? With a grumbling tone, Lu Qian wiped the nail polish clean and reapplied it carefully. Hot face meets cold ass, Yuan's excitement is also doused, she looks at Lu Qian, but the more she looks, the more bored she gets. The two of them are now really looking at each other. But in the case that Lu Qian didn't fall, she still had to serve this ancestor. Star Song Exchange The company decided to put you on it. And it's hired a famous lyricist to write a song for you. This is a way for the company to make up for your loss last time. Stargazer? Lu Qian froze, and her nails were immediately painted again, but this time she didn't care, instead turning her head to look at Sister Yuan to reconfirm. Is that the Star Song Festival where you can be among the top-tier singers if you get a ranking? Yeah. 
It's hard to believe that there are two more stargazers. See Yat Singh. This time is your chance. You must grasp it well. I've gone to great lengths to help you get this chance. Seeing Lu Qian get serious, Yuan was slightly relieved, and even her address changed. Ah. Star Song Exchange. I'm gonna be on fire. Lu Qian then reacted, jumping up from her chair, overflowing with joy. She didn't hear Hope taking credit at all, only the news that she was going to be on fire. Shu Sin. There are still three days to go before it starts. Let's hold steady. This time it's the famous lyricist Wu Fan who wrote your song. You must sing well. Yuan persuaded Lu Qian not to get too excited. After all, Lu Qian can only share more money herself if she's on fire, and this time, Yuan hopes she'll get a good ranking. Lu Qian, on the other hand, was unimpressed and became even more agitated after hearing about Wu Fan. It's that Wu Fan who is known as the godfather of music. Isn't that stable? What's there to worry about? Me and him, that's a strong combination. Ha ha. Sister Yuan sighed, but on second thought, it's true, although Lu Qian's character is not good, but her singing skills are really online, and there is a song by the godfather of music, Wu Fan, so she will definitely be able to sprint to the top three this time. In Magic City, in the artist's apartment, Xia Shiryao received a call from the operations department informing her to prepare for the Star Song Festival in three days. After hanging up the phone, Xia Shiryao's entire body was confused. Just now they were still discussing what kind of method should be used to make a comeback, but I didn't expect the company to send a pillow here. Seeing Xia Shiryao's dumbfounded face after answering the phone, Tao Lele couldn't stop herself from asking curiously, Sister Shiryao, who is it? Company operations, inform me to participate in the Star Song Festival in three days. Stargazer? Star Song Exchange. Ah, uh -huh, really? Sister Shioyo, are you serious? Taluola was just stunned for a moment, and in the next second, she directly climbed up and grabbed Xia Shiryo's shoulders and swayed back and forth, excited to no end. Joy! I'm going to be shaken by you! Xia Shiryo peeled Tao Lele's fat hand away, her face full of disgust. Shioyo, did the company really let you participate in the Star Song Festival? Aha! Operations has just been notified down. Xia Shiryo nodded in confirmation, and Sister Yun couldn't hide the joy on her face, using the Star Song Exchange as a stage to announce her strong return, this was great. It's just that the priority now is to find a suitable lyricist. I'll get in touch with the lyricists I used to know, Shioyo, you try to write a song yourself again, and in the next three days, we must find a good song for the first shot of our comeback. Aha! Xia Shiryo nodded seriously. Dorothy raises her hand. I'll mix and match nutritious meals. Follow the previous way. As soon as possible, I'll nourish Sister Shioyo and mellow her out. The three of them divided the work clearly, Taluola began to pick the ingredients for today's lunch, Sister Yun picked up her cell phone and began to contact the lyricist, Xia Shiryo picked up the song manuscript paper and laid it flat on the table, looking at her brows in thought. And at that moment, our Gu Xingyi was teaching Little Nai Nai the second children's song. Little Nai Nai was very well behaved in the past two days, and although this could possibly be the reason why Xia Shiryu called back every day, Gu Xingyi felt that he deserved a great deal of credit as well. At least now, he was fully familiar with the process of coaxing a baby. Little Nai Nai clapped her little hands and accompanied Gu Xingyi, who wore a big grey wolf headdress and pretended to be ferocious, while her mouth sang the budding lyrics. Good little white rabbit, open the door. Open it quickly, I want to come in. Late afternoon. After dinner, after playing all day, Nina couldn't stop sleeping and her little head went down a little bit from time to time. With that, she still steeled herself and insisted on hearing Gu Xingyi tell her a bedtime story before she drifted off to sleep. Gu Xingyi smiled, tucked the quilt over the little one, kissed her forehead, and tiptoed to the living room.